six lemons quartered, and I put uh, five cans of beer, and I'm fixing to put the sixth one, because it calls for a six pack of beer, and that makes it a six pack. Oh, man. I've got to turn that fire up a little bit, because I want that thing boiling when I put those swimps in there, I guarantee. Let me see what this stove says right here. Hey. Got to get on there and look better than that, I'll guarantee. Uh, now I done looked good. That's on, yeah, there we go. We put it on medium low, and it's boiling. That's good. I like that. And I'll stir. Whenever you add anything, believe me, us Cajuns will tell you, they stir. Anytime you add anything, they stir. Believe me. And that's the way it, it, it makes it taste more better. Now, into this, I'm going to put, this is onion powder. I'm going to put a cup of onion powder in there to get it to boiling with it. Get going there, girls. And this is a half a cup of garlic powder. Let me stir that onion powder in there. Good acting like that. Don't be a politician with me. <laughs> put that good garlic powder in there. I'll tell you, when they invented that, they really did away with, with a single bed. They got, everybody got twin beds now when they got the garlic powder. <laughs> and that's for true. <laughs> All right, let's melt up down in there. I ain't good. Now I got to put some Worcestershire sauce in there. Always shake the bottle because it, it goes down to the bottom and that's where all the flavor is. You don't, you don't want to miss out on the flavor. And I think this says three-fourths cup. Three-fourths cup? That's what it says up in there, I hope. That's what I'm going to do. I don't have a measure like this, you know that. Come on now. Ah. I'm to take a sip of this. It's good for you. <laughs> May make you cough a little bit that first sip. <laughs> Now that's three fourths cup and a little more. <laughs> Put the lid back on this because I may need it for something else. No telling. <laughs> now I got to put, I got the hunt, I got the lemons in there, and I got the six pack of beer, the onion powder, and the garlic powder, Worcestershire sauce, and uh, it says five tablespoons, five teaspoons. No. Oh, I got to put some dried mint. Let's put that in there. Now, I use mint instead of bay leaf, and the reason I do, mint doesn't just kill the flavor. You don't taste just mint. It just, it kind of does something to help the flavor. And that's a teaspoon full of mint, dried mint. You can get that in any good store. If they don't have it, tell them to get, get some so it'll be a good store. <laughs> stir that in there. That's smelling good enough to eat just like it is. Sure is. <laughs> Don't that smell good? It says five tablespoons of salt. Now I'll just put the, uh, I'll put the, I, I use a teaspoon. Now that's one teaspoon, ladies and gentlemen. Bet your last dollar that is. That's one teaspoon. I'm gonna put ten teaspoons. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, <laughs> eight. Now you don't think that's a teaspoon. I'm gonna show you that this this is nine. I got somebody helping me count out there. <laughs> that's a tablespoon. I don't want I want a teaspoon. To show y'all that I do know how to measure a teaspoon full of salt. That's a teaspoon full. You don't believe me, do you? See that? Nothing to it like eating lettuce. <laughs> and I'll put one more teaspoon full of salt in there and then stir it. <laughs> and there the shrimps are. Let's 
stirred it in there. Now you go in there. That's beginning to look like some gravy. Some of that Yankee gravy, you know, not good black gravy like we have down in South Louisiana. Now I'm going to time these shrimp when they start boiling. The shrimp cook fast, believe me, they do. And uh, when they get real pink, they're usually done. And when they float after it, they're, they're really done. So I'm going to put these, this is five pounds of shrimp. They've been frozen, and we don't un, unthaw them. We thaw them out, and my hands are clean, believe me. All right, shrimps. Let's get to boiling. I'm going to put that fire a little hotter. That's the wrong one. Here it is. Yep. And they'll boil, and they'll taste so good. I've got a good sauce made for these. Whew. I guarantee that's for true. Come on, shrimp. Get going. You just need enough liquid to, to uh, cover them. You know, that's all you need. I don't want to splash me. I don't like to burn, though. <laughs> ah, shrimp, get in there. Get yourself cooking good so I can taste you soon. They cold. They real cold. <laughs> They've been froze. That's how come the real. <laughs> I've got a story I want to tell you all as soon as I get all these shrimp in here. I've been waiting to tell this story to you good people who have come here to watch me do this foolish man. Let me get my dish towel that I carry with me all the time in the kitchen. Got to have it. Now, what I'm going to do is stir one time. That's good enough. And I'm going to check this deal to see how it looks. Yeah. That's about as high as I want it to go, and it's going to boil. And just, it's fixing to boil right this minute. But I'll tell this story first. Years ago, in South Louisiana, there were two families living next door to each other. And each one of them had a boy children, one boy. And the older little boy loved each other. It was, it was an amazing thing how much they loved to be with each other all the time. And they would play and play and play and never have a fuss or an argument about anything. And by golly, on Sunday, they had to separate to go to church. One of them was a Catholic and the other one was a Methodist. So they separated two little boys and they actually would get sick on Sunday because they didn't get to be with each other. And one day, one of the father, kind of wise man, said, I'll tell you what let's do now, ladies. One Sunday, let both of them go to the Catholic Church, and the other Sunday, both of them go to the Methodist Church. That's why I say, I wonder why we didn't think about that. He didn't answer that question. So the first Sunday, they went to the Catholic Church, and the little Catholic boy was so nice, explaining to the little Methodist boy just what was taking place in there, you know? He explained everything that, that the priest did, and the altar boy, and all that stuff. And the next Sunday, they went to the Methodist Church. They went down, and the choir got up to sing, and the little Catholic boy had never seen that before. And he asked the Methodist boy, he said, what that is? And he explained to him what that was. And he explained everything that was happening. Then the last thing, the preacher came out there. And he looked out there and said, uh, I'm just going to talk to you just a small bit. The little Methodist boy said, that's a damn lie. <laughs> he explained to him just exactly what it was. <laughs> now these shrimp just get going all right there right now. And they're boiling. I'm going to set my clock. Maybe. I'm going to do this just for fun. Got to go down here. Come back. Now, go over here where I can see you. Now, in this part, I'm going to put this on here and cover it. And turn the fire down some. Because yep, I don't want it to boil over on me, though. I want to make a, a curve.
crab meat etouffee. Now, etouffee means smothered. You don't put any water in it, just you put a little wine, and all alcohol cooks right out. That's terrible, but that's true. And uh, in this pot right here, I'm gonna put a whole, let me see, I'm gonna, I, I keep my recipe here. When you got as many recipes as I have, you ain't no way to remember them all, I don't try. But right here it says a half a cup or one stick of margarine or butter. Now I use margarine, but it doesn't cost me as much money. Look at that. Tastes good. Mm -hmm. I want to put in this, as soon as I get this going, it'll be a good idea to turn the fire on. That helps. <laughs> I guarantee you, I got the fire going on high. That's too high. I'll just cut that down to a medium. Got that down on medium right now. And into this, I'm going to put four cups of chopped onion. Whoo, boy. Sounds like a lot. But when you make an etouffee, it's smothered. You've got to use a lot of onion. If you don't use a lot of onion, it ain't going to taste good. That's how simple that is. Nothing to that. Just put that in here right now. Yeah. Go in there, boy. You're melting pretty. I guarantee you all now. And this, you let it simmer for a long time. Right here. I don't put the cream meat in there until last, but I got, but we see if I got it now, there it is right over there. Into this, as soon as I can get that little corn mark. Now, there you go, you're melting right now. It's melting, I don't like to put onion and margarine that's not, it's not melted, no. So, here we go anyhow. That is just plain old ordinary onion that everybody sees. These happen to be the good onion. I like to make a sandwich out of good onion. I guarantee that's good. I made one last night. Now, into this, I'm going to put some bell pepper. Let's see how much bell pepper I'm going to put. One cup of chopped bell pepper. That's what that is right there. Chopped bell pepper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stir. Remember what I told you about it. Whenever you put anything in anything, you got to stir. Hey. Oh, the onions are beginning to look clear already. And now I got to put some green onion I got right here. A cup of chopped green onion. Hmm. Man, and they're good. They're good, they're good for you, too. Went for green onion, I believe I'd have been gone years ago. But I eat them, I love them. Get that stirred in there, good. Oh, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, now I got to put some garlic. Shop. That must be garlic. Yeah. <laughs> garlic. That's not too much. You don't want to put too much. That's one teaspoonful of garlic. Ain't nothing to that. Hardly no garlic at all. Get that scattered around in there. It's getting a little juice in there. Without, you never put garlic in until you get a little juice. If you put it in with it, it, uh, just nothing but oil, it, it clams up and don't put out no flavor. See? That's what it does. All right, here we go. Mm, mm, mm. Excuse me, I got to look at these shrimps. They're doing all right, but they got to boil better than that. Come on, shrimps. That'll do it. Now. When you're doing fine, into this, I got to put a little steak sauce, like a tablespoon full of good steak sauce. Well, let me put this parsley in there first. I better put that in there. This is chopped parsley. 
and it could, I love parsley. Good for you. Clean your breath up and all that stuff too, you know. That's sure really. Chlorophyll, that's what it is. Good stuff. Mm. All right. Put that down. I got to put a little cup of wine in there, I know. Two tablespoons full of, oh, this is pecan sauce. Oh, it smells good. Picante sauce. And that is another good seasoning. It really is. I like it myself. And I use it in a lot of things. Throw that in there, boys. How you going? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, doesn't that look pretty? I guarantee that pretty. And it smells good. It'll taste much more better than that, I'll tell you the truth. That's the truth. Now, into this, I got to put two cups of dry white wine. I use a Chablis that you can either cook with or drink. It don't make any difference. <laughs> but if you drink too much of it, you can't cook. Can't cook. <laughs> and you stir that good. I got to put some salt in here too, salt to taste. What you figure is how much you got in there, then you can put enough in there to know what it's gonna taste like. At least I can. But that's practice. I've been practicing that a long, long time. Oh man, you, mm -mm. That, that just smells so good. Now, I want to be sure I got everything in there and have I got a half a cup of stick of margarine and have a full cup of chopped onion, I got that. One cup of chopped green onion, I got that. One cup of chopped bell pepper, I got that. One and a half cup of chopped fresh parsley, I got that. Two cups of dry white wine, I put that on there just there. Two tablespoons full of steak sauce, I got that. One teaspoon full of minced garlic. Got all that in there. And I got to stir this and let it come into a boil and it's coming to a boil right now. Oh boy. Mm. Now let me see what I got over here. I got something that looks like crab meat. This was claw meat. I like it because it seems to have more flavor than the other, and it's easy to get out of the claw than it is the rest of the body, you know. I didn't put any salt in there yet. I better put that in here before I put that. Come here, salt. How much salt y'all think this ought to take? We got a bunch of stuff there. So I'm gonna put, that's one teaspoon. And I'm gonna put another teaspoon, kind of run it over a little bit, you know. Now, that ought to be enough salt on that. We got to stir it in there. Throw that in there. See, man. Ooh, wee. I gotta put a little hot pepper. I know I gotta put a little hot pepper in there. Let me see what it says. Pecan, nope, I got pecan sauce. That's hot enough. That's what, you don't have to worry about any more hot sauce. You got some in there already. When you put that pecan sauce, it's hot enough. All right? Let's go in there, crab meat. Now, before this crab meat went in there, I want you to know it was hand picked. You picked all the little shells out of it and things like that. <laughs> and it don't taste good. It'd just, it'd be just a shell that broke, but you got, you, you're not gonna worry about it being a tooth you got broke. And that ain't good, no. So we've got this good, clean crab meat in there. And what we're gonna do, get this to go in where I got it on the simmer. Looking over that little clock, see what it's got. But I think them shrimps is most dead, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I got to look at them and see. Take, take one out and taste it, maybe. See how that mixes up real nice? I'm gonna put this on a simmer, and it's got to simmer for quite a while. Uh, and then you serve this over rice. And it's good too, yeah. I guarantee it's good. I don't know who's talking back there, but that's 
It ain't helping him or me either one. Mm, mm, mm. Now, what I'm going to do is put this on simmer. Put the lid on it. We don't even lift the lid for quite a while. It all depends. I think that, uh, there we go. Now, let, me, let me simmer that down to simmer. I done did it right this moment. Now that's simmering. Let me check these swims. Ha! They are done. They are done. And what I'm gonna do is turn the fire off because I know they're done. I gotta take one out. Take, come on, here. come here, come here, come here, come here. I'm gonna turn the fire off because those shrimps are done all the way plum. No use in one with another thing with them. I can tell you, just let them soak. Hi, hi, hi. Got it out, isn't that nice? Now, you know something? I'm going to go over here and eat some of this. I wonder what's in here. Oh, I see. Etouffee. I wonder where the rice is. I don't need any rice, but I'm going to get me a little etouffee. Put in this nice bowl I got right here. We cooked this a little early to be sure I had some etouffee for me to eat. Come here, boy. Get enough so you'll be sure you know what you eat. All right. Got that. Put this right here. Then I'm going to go over there and eat it after I have a sip of water. Isn't that terrible water? Okay. Mmm. Ah, water. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is sit down here, and I just bought a little shrimp early so I'd be sure I had some that I could eat too. Mmm, good too. <laughs> now let me see about this eight two fifth. First, put this nice red napkin on me. I won't spill anything on my dangarees. Yeah, let's go. And just pour a little wine. Now, you're supposed to eat to drink white wine with fish, but I like red wine better, so I use a little red wine, Marlowe, just a sip. That's all I'm going to have. That even a good sip. That's what I'm going to try. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now that is good stuff. I'm telling you the truth. That's, that etouffee is so good and it's easy to fix. So this is easy cooking. Right there. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Let's have a shrimp to go with that. That's good. Sometimes I put sauce on it. They didn't need it. Have a little sip of that wine and wash that down. That ought to be good. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. I tell you. Mes chers, 
For more information and a complete line of fine Justin Wilson products, visit www.justinwilson.com or you may call 228-207-5379. Mesha, that's the Justin Wilson Fine Products, justinwilson.com. That is good. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me a guarantee. I'm going to taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew. Come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good. I guarantee it. Talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it. It's good. I believe in easy cooking. Believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me a guarantee. We've got some lamb we're going to fix for you today. A lamb and potato casserole and lamb patties. I'm first going to work on the uh, casserole, lamb and potato casserole. And it's going to be good. The potatoes have been mashed, the lamb has been fixed to mix with that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with it, too, and put it in a nice little casserole dish there and get with it. Listen to that bloom, bloom. Let that fool can't say flounder. <laughs> yeah, my goodness sakes alive. What I have here now is this, this, uh, this lamb. I, I bought it and cooked it for about 10 minutes so that it would be when in seasoned water. So we'll have a little more flavor in just raw lamb. And um, I'm going to mix that with mashed potatoes. Might just well get to mixing and quit talking about it. But I am, in this right now, come here, potatoes. In here, I'm going to put the lamb and mix it well. That's good enough anywhere I want to put it. I'll mix it real well. Got to. It'll be pretty. All right, lamb. Be nice. Don't bite. Let's just get this done right. And after I fix these lamb patties, this this lamb and uh, potato casserole, I'm gonna make some lamb patties and just fry the devil out of them and eat them as I go along. Too, I love lamb. I really love it. American lamb. Lamb that hasn't been frozen. And I have a friend who raises lambs out in, out in California. And when I go out there, we eat a whole damn lamb, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> he knows how I love lamb. It just mixed up. I see got to put all I got to put in here now. It's got three cups of lamb. It's been parboiled a little bit. Four cups of mashed potatoes. And they've been cooked and do a little tender. Seasoned with water, with minced garlic and salt and drained. And I'm going to put two tablespoonful of sharp cheddar cheese. I'm going to wait until I get that lamb in that little deal over there before I do that, because I'm going to sprinkle that on there. And then I'm going to cover the top of it with, with cheddar cheese, good yellow cheddar cheese. I got that mixed about as good as I'm going to get it, I think. Wearing myself out. Let me move this out of my way. And I'm going to take this over there and put it in there real pretty light. Cover it with cheese and put it in the oven where it's got to go. It's uh, 350 degrees, but just and you got to watch it. You don't want it to get too hot. You can't keep it from getting too hot, but you can take it out if it gets too hot. Okay. Well, let's get in there real nice. That's a nice looking casserole dish. Let's get that in there, spread it out. Help me mix it better too. Now you're going, looking better every minute. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes, sirree, yes, sirree. 
Keshari, yeah, man. That's looking good. See if I can't get all that in there right quick like. Not quick like, but easy like. Did it. Nearly all of it. Gonna get it all. Place you right there and spread you out good and put them cheese on top of you. What I'm gonna do, put this right here. I don't need it at this moment, but I do need to put you in there. Now you come over here where I got the cheese. Put that cheese on there. Isn't that pretty cheese? Good American cheddar cheese. I'm gonna cover the top with that after I sprinkle this uh, good uh, Parmesan cheese in there, and it'll sink down in it, don't worry. This is about uh, two tablespoons full of grated Parmesan cheese, grated real fine. Mm. Just a little spreading with my hand. Now we put this good cheese on top of that. Just spread it on it good, and you eat what's left over, you know? <laughs> I'm not gonna leave much over though, I'll tell you the truth. I'm pretty good at fixing this stuff where I'll come out even. Come on here, now you're going. And this is not sliced thin. We, we cut this cheese ourselves. We didn't uh, buy it sliced like this. We wanted to cut it like this, but it comes out good, you see that? This is gonna be pretty, 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 pretty. Ooh, yeah. Get on there, don't be acting like you don't want to do that, because I know you do. And they told me to stay out of that cheese. They wouldn't have enough. <laughs> and I love it. Let's get in there. We cover every, every, every corner we can with that cheese. I'm going to do it. Come here to me. You, you I'm talking to. Now we got it. Just need covering there. It needs some right there. I see a little hole taking itself out of me, and I'm gonna cover it good. Yeah. And that's all I'm gonna do. I don't care what anybody says. Now I'm gonna put this in the oven and let it bake until the cheese is melted real good. And it tastes so good, it really does. Put this over here and set it down while I open that hot oven. You know how that is. Oven hotter than 20 yards of where the devil has his mansion. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? All right, let's go in here like a nice little boy now. Now cook, damn you, cook. <laughs> now what I got to do, I'm gonna have to mix this, this patty material here with my hands, and they're clean. Believe me, they're clean. And I'll just wipe them one more time now. But these are clean. These are clean hands. Washed them yesterday. <laughs> and in this, get, I got my recipe here. I, I, I don't want to forget anything. When you, when you create cooking, as I try to do, and do, do quite frequently, as my mama used to tell me, don't try to remember them. Write them down. And I do this. I, I got a little bit better than two pounds of lamb in here. It's ground. I'm gonna put a half a cup of dried parsley in there. But first of all, I'm gonna see if this is it's just right for me to start putting stuff in there. And I gotta clean dish towel, wipe my hands as often as I would like to. This is a half a cup of dried parsley. That's a half a cup. It look like a cup to me, so I'm not gonna put any more right now until I Get this in there good. Now, all right, let's go. Let's get with stay on the stay on the table now. Talk to the to the pan. You know, dried parsley has a good flavor. It tastes just like fresh parsley. If you don't tell anybody, they never know the different. Lead. Let's get in there good. Now we're good. You see why I got to mix this with my hands? I don't know any mix that I know of can get this like I'm getting with my hand right now. I'll tell you that for true. It's making me think of the story. I'll tell you after a while, I'm busy now. Now, let's put a little more of that parsley in there. 
and, and knead it. This is what you call kneading. You knead it. I'm going to put a tablespoon full of onion powder in here in just a minute. Mm-hmm. If I can just get this mixed like I like it, hold still. I'll go this way if you want to go like that. Because I'm going to make you pat it right. If everybody in this place says no, they're wrong. I'm going to mix it right. I guarantee you. Onion powder. That looks like onion powder. That's garlic powder. Come here, onion powder. That's onion powder. I'm going to put it right in here right now. It says about a tablespoonful of onion powder. That's a tablespoonful, I can tell. Now we got the mixture in there real good. I'm making patties and I'm going to fry and I'm going to taste them and I'm going to eat one. Just sure that I'm an inch high. Bet your last dollar on that. I need one of those heavy crocs to, bring, to mix this so it stay on here with me. But I'm doing all right. I'm getting it mixed up and that's all I want to do. Now into this. Into this, I'm going to put a tablespoonful of white creme de menthe. Cream de menthe to most people. Ain't nothing in there, shucks. Here it is. Yeah, that's cream de menthe. A tablespoonful. Actually, I think it ought to have more with somebody argued with me, so I said, let's do it all. We'll just put it in like you say. All right. Oh, boy, you coming along fine. Now, into this, I put some garlic powder. One teaspoon, no more. It looks like a pretty good teaspoon, don't it? I'm going to put it in there anyhow with the one. Yeah, it'll taste the garlic good for you, and I love to eat it. If they say it's healthy, you look at the healthiest man in the world because I eat it every day of my life. We eat some garlic. You notice that, that uh, professional way I have of mashing this meat up? Getting that stuff in all over it. Come on here, garlic. Gotcha. Now, into this, I have some uh, mild picante sauce. We got to put that in there. Spread it around just enough. I think it's a tablespoonful, that's what it is, of picante sauce. Oh, that's smelling good. Even before I even start cooking it. Got to get it through it, and I'm getting it through and through, I guarantee. Hoo wee. Mm -hmm. I got one egg. I'm gonna mix that egg up real good with that little, little old spreading thing I got. But right now, Get it off my hands for just a little bit so I won't throw that thing out on the floor. Come here, eggs. And I just beat this till it's terrible. Beat it both ways. Get on that. Now that'll hold that together when we're frying. You know, that's why we put that egg in there. Actually, that's about the only reason to put the egg in there. But I got to mix egg and all. Whether you like to put your hand in the eggs or not, you got to do certain things you don't like every now and then in your life. Oh, you're looking good. Now, patties, get ready to go in that frying skillet over there. As soon as I put a little olive oil in it, Mm-hmm. If that egg don't hold out together, I'm gonna be one mad Cajun, I guarantee. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're gonna put you right over here. We're gonna move you from right here. We're gonna wipe your hands one more once until you get the way you gotta pick up that thing. This is a clean dish towel we put out here just for this purpose. And it does a good job. Now what I want to do is put this frying skillet right here. 
put a little olive oil in it. I use olive oil to cook with more than any other oil. But number one, it's supposed to be healthy. That's about two or three tablespoons. No, that's three. Three tablespoons full in there. It's supposed to be healthy. And I like to be healthy. Now it says salt and pepper to taste. I didn't put anything in here, so I'm gonna put a little pepper. It's cayenne pepper. And a little salt. I'm gonna turn that fire on and mix that one more once. See, this is the right one. Yep. What you know about that? I got the right fire. Whew. I'm gonna sit down here and be where I'm. I can see it. I'm gonna put it on a medium fire. Come on out here now. Just because my hand agrees, don't act silly like that. Now, what I'm gonna do is mix this one more once to get all that salt and pepper out of one place and all the way through this. And it's getting all the way through it too, I guarantee. Mm. Mm. Come on here. I see this remind me of that story I've been trying to think of today. And I know what the story is, but as soon as I get one frying, I'm going to tell you this story. This Cajun story is supposed to be true, and I don't doubt it. Why doubt it? Nobody believes it anyhow. Mm. Come on here now. Now he's doing fine. And I'm going to make a nice, pretty patty. Make a nice, pretty patty here. It's going to hold together. Betcha. It's better. And this is a patty, not a burger. Come on. And that oil is hot enough for me to put one in there, I'd bet money. Don't come apart now, you'll embarrass me if you do. I hear it frying. It's a little larger patty. All right, patties. Don't stick to the bottom of that thing. It's got oil in it. You're not supposed to stick. So nice, did they? Man, that's smelling good. Mm -hmm. And eat all it tastes good. I could eat it raw right now. It's smelling so good. Don't mm -hmm. smell that? Mm hmm. Now I got to dry my hands good enough to hold that spatula to turn them over. So I'm gonna turn them here pretty soon. I can tell, I can look at that and tell. Let the Lord that fire a little bit. And I did. I want to tell you that story. There was a, a Cajun scientist. He was always scientific in something, you know. And he, he wanted to find a big stone, big rock. Well, he lived down in the swamp in the, in the marsh and there ain't no big rocks down there. So he went up north, way up north, around Shreveport, <laughs> right near a little town called Shongaloo. And he went on top of a deep hill, and went on top up there, and he found a great big round stone, and that's what he was looking for. So he got that round stone, he took a, 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 a sludge hammer, and all kinds of stuff to get it loose from what it was stuck to. And he got it loose from it. And man, he pushed it to where it rolled down that hill. There was a little small town down there. That stone rolled through the blacksmith, the barbering shop, the beauty shop, the library. And then it went right through a bank Ran, finally ran into a church where they had a fire going in the fireplace. 
the natural. You know that's hot. And what he did then, he, he went down there and people were just screaming and hollering. He's in there around the fire. He said, don't worry, this is scientific research going on here. Don't worry about that. And he got that rock and he started rubbing it all over with his hand. And he hugged that rock. Come on, turn, turn, turn. There you go. He hugged that rock real good and finally just went all over it. He stood up. That's true. No more. The rolling stone don't gather no more. <laughs> oh, you're going pretty good there. I got to let this fry just a little. And I'm going to mix a couple more and put it here, though. I can't let this get by with that, because I need one myself. Like this one right here. Let's go with old Justin Flake to be sure you got one to tell the people whether they're good or not. I can tell you they're good. Right now, I can tell by the way they smell that they're good. This little piece here might just well go in my plate, too. I don't want to miss this thing. Not at my age. Uh-uh. Yes, sir. There I go. I'm going to cook, cook, cook. I usually cook these a, a medium, not too well done, because lamb is so tender and good that you don't want to just overcook it. Nine. Nine. Don't those look pretty? They are pretty. They are pretty now, I'll tell you right now. Ooh, wee. I've got to put another batch in there, though, if I can. And I think I can. I'm going to try. We've got to turn that fire down some more. That is hot fire. And that grease is hot in there, too. You hear? I know what I'm talking about. Scars me up. Mm-hmm. Patty. Not a burger, no. Patty. It's some of the state fairs up north in North of Shreveport, way up north. You go get a, a, a lamb burger. And they're delicious. And I love to make a meatloaf with lamb and ham. And it tastes good. It really looks good. Come on, boy, you're doing pretty good, I can tell you that. It's red now. Need a little more on that. Mm hmm. It would look done to me. I don't know about you, but I'll tell you in just a few seconds whether they've done enough or not. If they've not done enough, we'll turn the fire up a little bit. One more in here. Mm hmm. I'm going to sit down over there since I dry my hands good enough to pick up my fork at night. And I'm going to check this stuff out. Lamb Patty, I'm telling you right now. I know some girls named Patty. They're they, a lot prettier than these lamb patties, too. <laughs> I get one, too, I do. Now, put this right here. Go sit yourself down real quiet like, like a gentleman, Justin. And uh, let's check this lamb patty out. Looks good to me. Maybe I ought to turn those first, but I'm not going to do it. They cook it on slow fire, low fire. Stand still, chair. Just put my napkin like I'm supposed to do that, too, you know, be a gentleman. <laughs> going to do it, too. Stuff that down my belt so it won't drop on the floor. Now, this is the lamb and potato casserole. I think I'll just put that right on here where I can get at it. Come on, come on. You think you're going to stay in there? You're just wrong as hell. <laughs> now I've got you. I want to taste that in the patty about the same time. Mmm. That good Melican cheese. Let's see what the patty tastes like. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Ah. It maybe could cook a little bit more for most people, but it's fine for me. Mmm. 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 I mean, that is fine. Let me pour a little wine to go with that. 
red wine. What kind of wine you eat with this, what kind of wine you drink with that, the kind of wine you like is what you do with. That's the only thing I know to tell you about wine. I like a good red wine, or a cheap one too. <laughs> mm. That casserole is delicious, you hear? Mm. Mm hmm. y'all are. I'm glad for you to see me again on tea. I'm going to taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew. Come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good. I've got on tea. Talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it. It's good. I believe in easy cooking. Believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me. I guarantee, and we're gonna bake a chicken today. And I'm gonna have to tell a story I've told before because it fits this so well. I'm gonna get the chicken going first and then I'll tell the story. We're going to, first of all, salt and pepper the chicken with cayenne pepper and salt. We're gonna put in this raised deal in this little roaster we have here. And we're gonna put in there 350 degree. Baked chicken. I love baked chicken. So what I got to do right now is get this chicken salted and peppered where it'll taste good. And all I put around it, I don't put it on it, put it around it, is a, a glass half water and half white wine that you don't mind drinking if you don't have any more, any other kind. Uh, I, I personally like red wine better because I can see it easier, you know. That salt I'm putting in, I got to get salt inside too. Come on, raise it up there, baby. Nice, fat chicken. Now this is cayenne pepper. That looks like I've got a lot, but it's not all that much. I put it on my hands, you know I'm gonna get it off somehow. Put the coat, raise your alarm up there, baby. Now you got it. Turn this chicken over, and I'll put it in here and finish salt and pepper in the other side. A little salt there. Let you go down in here like you're supposed to. Ah, salt you good. It looks like a lot of salt, but it's not. Those are fine grains. I'd, measure, I'd rather measure it, but I can't and do this right. Cayenne pepper. Good for you. Believe me. Now I've got to wipe my hands the way I can put that, uh, pour that little juice around it and put it in the oven. I may tell that story first. Just, I never will forgot there was a fellow rode in a little town in South Louisiana in his automobile. He would rode down there and the speed limit was 25 miles per hour. Not 26, no, 25 miles per hour. And he's going 25 miles per hour, and he looked in front of his automobile, and there's a chicken running right in front of his car. And he looked again, he said, hmm, that chicken got three legs. I got to see this. And he looked around, didn't see no police, so he picked up the 35 miles per hour. Little old chicken did the same thing. Old three legs going with it, you know. He said, man, this is wonderful, but I got to see this. And he got out on the highway. Speed limit was 55 miles per hour, so the chicken, 55 miles per hour, old three legs going. He said, well, 
I know the district attorney out and get out of a ticket. I'm going to see this three-legged chicken. So he picked up all the way to the Florida acceleration, 75 miles per hour. That little chicken, all of a sudden, a little chicken turned down a dirt road. My friend passed it by, I already put the broke on, chee -chee 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 -chee. put it in high gear reverse, went down a little dirt road to it. At the end of that road it was a nice little Cajun house. The man and his wife sitting on the front porch, rocking themselves back and forth, back and forth. He stopped and got out of the car. He said, Look, I don't mean to bother you, no. But if either one of y'all happened to see a tree legged chicken come by here, huh? The man stood up and says, yes, we raised tree-legged chicken. My friend said, the hell do you do? He said, that's right. He says, well, can you tell me what they taste like? He says, I don't know. We never could catch one of the damn things. <laughs> now I'm going to put this in the oven, 350-degree oven going there. You can be lower this thing and just slip it in there gently. Oh, man, that's hot, I can tell. Come here, baby, let's go on one side of that oven, because I got something else I'm going to put in there with you after a while. Here we go. Come on up there now, and just cook up a storm. That's good. OK, now I'm going to move this out of my way. I'm going to put it right over here. For the time being. And I got to mash those taters. And I know how to do that. My mama taught me how. That's one of the things she let me start doing when I started learning to cook and didn't know I was learning when I was eight years old. All right, let's do some business. They may be, they've gotten a little cold, I think, that makes them a little harder to, to mash, but we'll mash them. Put a little weight on it every now and then. Mm-hmm. Let's get with the program now. You're looking good. These, these are potatoes were boiled in garlic. We boiled it with some garlic. Let me move this recipe out of the way. That's clean. I don't need you right now. I'll put you over there. We mashed, we mashed with mashed garlic, garlic flour. And we, it's the way we cooked them, so it would have a little taste of garlic. I can smell the garlic. I taste it just enough. Garlic's good for you. I've been seeing a lot of that on television, that garlic was good for you. I've been doing that. I've been eating it all my life. Garlic sandwiches, they're good. I guarantee they're good. Quit spilling that, man. That's too good to spill on that. We got to eat this. We're going to eat this. Now, what I'm going to do is put this over here where I've got a little um, casserole dish. And I'm going to put this in there. You think I ain't going to mash you? You're wrong. I am. I'd like to have a bigger bowl next time I have to do this, so I to pick up the stuff and put it back in there. Even though this is a clean counter, I don't like to do that, no. I just stay down there like that. This is a clean casserole dish. I'm going to put a little olive oil in there to uh, grease it so it won't stick to the bottom. I got to put a little cayenne pepper on that. I don't think it needs much. I taste it just right just then. This is about, oh, I'd say, not even a tablespoon full of olive oil. But we got to fix it like that so it won't stick to the bottom. I don't I hate things stick. Of course, I like the gratin a lot of things. There we go. Got the potatoes all boiled. And I'm going to put you all in there. But first of all, I got to be sure that my olive oil gets all over this thing. And it'll do it. I don't want to get any on the floor, so I don't. I won't. Do it. Now, that looks so good. Got it just right, man. I guarantee. Now, i got to get this in here without spilling it anywhere on the floor, and I'm not going to spill it. You watch over you stand. Put this mashed taters in there. There you go in there. Didn't mash you very good, but that'll be good. 
It'll be all right. It's messed enough. You can tell I've done this before. Did it yesterday, too. Get everything out of there that I need to get, and that's all of it. And then spread it around good on there and put some grated cheese on top of it. Come on here. Let's get to it now. Mm. Want to get all of it I can. That's all of it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this two cups of grated cheese. I'm not going to put that in there. I'm going to eat it. Good. <laughs> Spread this out nice so it'll look pretty. It's going to taste good, I know. to look good just like it is. But we're gonna make it pretty, even prettier when we put that pretty Amer American cheese on there. Get that like that, take that out. My hands are clean, just wash them. Come here, cheese. And that's two cups of grated cheese. Cheddar cheese. This is a good American cheddar cheese. We have to cover the top. And it's gonna taste good, I guarantee you that. All right, cheese, let's, let's be nice. Let's be sticking together like that. That's not nice, no. Hmm, got to tell a story in a minute. I feel one coming on, you know. Get this all ready. Get all over it, because I want to cover it. I want to be covered with this grated cheese. Two cups does the job. I don't know how in the world I did that when I cooked this dish the first time, but it came out just like it's coming out now, as it's supposed to. Just spread it out. It'll melt, but I like to spread it out the way it melts all over. Now I'm gonna put this over here. I'm gonna put this back over here. Out of my way. Put this in there. Try my hand a little bit. Now I'm gonna put this in this 350 degree oven until the cheese melts real good. It takes about 15 minutes for it to melt right and go, go, through, go through the potatoes and, and not all of it. Most of it stays on top and it's beautiful. I'm gonna put this in that oven too as soon as I open the oven. Spread out there, girls. Now you got it. Open them oven. Put this right alongside that chicken. Close that oven. And pick this up that I got fixed already. And put that over where I can uh, serve myself some of that, you know? Just a little, I'm not gonna take too much. Put it over here like this. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna go get that and see if I haven't got something else here that I want. And it's not too hot. Oh, chicken. <laughs> what do you know, a baked chicken I done found right there. <laughs> and what I got to do with that is cut a little bit of that off. And I'm gonna do that on the stove right here. I got a knife to cut it too. Right here in this drawer. Come here to me, baby. Yeah. 
think I'll put the plate in between those two things so they won't get mad, you know? Cut a little of that chicken for me. Move there. Now. Mm-hmm. Looks pretty, don't it? Well, I hate like the devil to do this to you, honey, but I got to. <laughs> Getting the part of the chicken that I like. Second joint. Or some of the meat off of it anyhow. And you think I'm gonna throw that skin away? I'm not. I'm gonna be unhealthy. I like the chicken. That's where all the flavor is in the chicken. Come here, baby. Come here. Let go. Oh, I lost my skin. That's terrible. I got to get that. That's hot. That's hot, man. Not too hot. Let's put that there. A little more of that. Let's get a little more of that, huh? All right. Should take the whole leg, but I'm not. I'm not going to be a hog. I just want a taste of it anyhow, you know? There we go. Cover this chicken back up. It's going to be warm. It's warm. Not hot, hot, but warm. Put that right there. And come here, baby. Let's get some of them cheese and put that on here. This is a very easy casserole to fix. It really is. What I'm going to do is put that right there, and then I'm going to get a little more of this because I like it much. Take a little more of that. Put it right there. And I'm going to tell you all a story. This is a true story that happened in World War Twice when I enlisted. And that's what I did. And went up to Camp Beauregard in near Alexandria, Louisiana. I was there with a bunch of Cajuns from down on Bar Lafouche. Some of them spoke no English at all. Some of them spoke pretty good. Uh, he spoke pretty good French, Cajun French. And uh, they put all of us out there. We were in civilian clothes, and most of them were scared to death, never been out of, away from the bayou. And this little Cajun was standing there, and here come up the top sergeant that asked you your name. And you told him your name. And he come to me and he said, what's your name? I said, Justin Wilson, sir. What's your middle name? I said, Justin E. Wilson, sir. He walked next to me, and that little Cajun there standing there. And he asked, he said, what is your name? He just looked at him. He didn't understand a word he said. He said, I ask you a question. What is your name? And he looked at, him, looked at me. I said, Kelly Norm, what's your name? He says, Broussard. He said, say, sir. He says, sir, Broussard, I guarantee you. <laughs> Made himself a knight right then and there. And you know, I tell these stories. I can't help but when, when I tell that one, it made me think of another one. There was a boy who was getting his lessons one night down there in French country. And uh, he was doing his, his arithmetic. And his daddy was sitting there. He said, Papa, he said, what it is, son? He said, I want to ask you a question. I want you to help me with this, with this math, this arithmetic I'm doing. Excuse me, I got hay fever. And, um, he said, what's the question? He says, can you, can you help me? I got 12, I got 12 problems here, and they want me to find the common denominator. His papa said, are they still looking for that thing? They were looking for that when I was going to school. <laughs> like, oh, okay. So I'm going to sit down here, and if I can think of a story or two, I may just tell you, but I got to taste this food. It looks good, and I want to taste it. And, uh, this, uh, this hay fever I got makes me mad, but there ain't nothing I can do about it except doing what I'm doing. I got everything in the stove that's supposed to be in there. I'm going to pour myself just a little. Not, I need my full swallow, a swiller of wine. That's a half a swallow. Oh, that's about right. Mm. Tastes good, I guarantee. But I want to taste that chicken. I love good chicken. I really do. 
And I uh, want to tell you all some more stories, but I'm going to taste this first, put my napkin on like a gentleman. Try to be one most of the time. Uh, there I go. Mm. That wine may be in the way of y'all seeing that. So I'll move it to the side. Now, this, this is white wine. It's supposed to go with chicken. But I prefer a Merlot or a Binot Noir or a, a Cabernet Sauvignon or, or red wine, and that's what I drink. Somebody asks you, what kind of chicken, what kind of wine are you going to have with that? What kind of wine you want, huh? That's what you can have. I'm going to just cut this chicken and eat that. Mm-hmm, 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 mm. -hmm, mm, -hmm, mm. <laughs> That's good, I guarantee. Mm. Oh, boy. I told you I was going to save this, and I am. I'm going to eat that skin. Because that's where the flavor is in chicken, and we have to throw it away because these people say it's not healthy. Those poor chicken, mm, that is good, I'll tell you right now. Mm-hmm. It must be fairly healthy because the chickens are wet their whole lifetime, don't they? <laughs> I guarantee you, now I've got to taste the good Potato, what we cook with garlic in it. Somebody you stay, can't find your pocket. So sure can't, now I got it. I want to taste this. See how that turned out. Mmm, mmm, mmm. C'est bon, I'm guaranteed. Ah, a little sip of wine. That make it taste even more better, you know. I got to tell y'all a football story because football season is right here upon us, you know it. And I love the game of football. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, I coached it one year and I done told you all I'm gonna tell you about that. I ain't gonna say nothing else. <laughs> In football, I love to go to the games. I'm a big fan of several, several of football teams. Of course, I went to LUS five years and I'd still be a freshman if I went back. And I'm a natural. <laughs> I'm a Tiger fan for the LSU Tigers. I'm, on, I'm like one of them. And I like some of the Mississippi teams. I like Ole Miss and I like uh, Mississippi State football team. They, could, they got good football team, except when they play, play LUS. I got to be for LUS. And I always was curious as the devil how these coaches got these good football players like they did all over the country. And I was visiting with a coach from a college in Mississippi, and I asked him, I would like to know how you get all these good football players. And I know it takes a lot of time for you all to, to get these boys to the, to the university where you can uh, to evaluate them and all that stuff and con them into signing. I know what you're doing. Excuse me. Not polite to talk with something in your mouth, but I'm not polite. <laughs> but I would like you to read it too. Always oh, says we go out in the country and we look. We look all over. We look all over. We go in the, in the country where the farmers are out there and have big boys, fine looking boys. And we just finally, when we see one looks pretty good who's plowing a mule with a big plow, a turning plow. That one's pretty good size. We, we finally stop them and talk to those boys like that. And we saw several of them like that on this particular trip I'm thinking about. And finally, we were riding along about another two miles, and then we saw a great big boy plowing a, a mule with a big plow, a middle buster. That's one of the biggest you can get a mule, a mule can plow. And we stopped, and we asked him, we don't want to find out something from you. Are you interested in football? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Would you like to go to, to this college where I'm coaching? Oh, I don't know about that. Well, he said, what we want you to do is give us some directions. What direction is that? Can you tell me where he named the town, where uh, that town is, huh? He picked up that, that plow with one hand and pointed down the road. He say, you go in that direction. 
and turn to the right and you're gonna make it. We booked him right now. We took him to college. <laughs> One thing we had to be sure they could do when we had some direction, they'd point with a plow. And he did that. And I'm gonna take another bite or two of this because it's good and that ain't all. I hadn't had much breakfast. Mmm, come on, let's turn you over and cut this cheese. You can do it. Cheese and potatoes, that's awful good stuff. Mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. You see how ambiguous? I cover my right hand, even, even my left. Is that what it is, ambiguous? No. I don't know what it is, but that's what I am. Right or left hand don't make something different with me. I just go ahead and eat. I mean, chicken. Mmm, mmm. That is good stuff. And I'm proud of that. I got to tell y'all one more quick story. An old man had a camp down in Hell of Island there, where I used to live in, in Livingston Parish with the Cajuns down there. And um, a bunch of young fellows used his camp quite a bit. It was just a one-room camp, a small thing. And they appreciated what he did. And finally, one of them said, we'd like to paint you. Oh, he said, you know, we don't need painting it. It's all right. He said, no. We would like to paint it white on the inside. It would be very pretty. And that ain't all. It'll make it look much larger, I guarantee what I'm doing. Oh, he said, well, go ahead on. I could use a little more room, I guarantee. <laughs> and they painted white for him. Meshach. <laughs> For more information and a complete line of fine Justin Wilson products, visit www.justinwilson.com or you may call 228-207-5379. Mesha, that's the Justin Wilson fine products, justinwilson.com. That is good. y'all are. I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. I'm going to taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew. Come here, boy. Mm. You know how it looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee. Talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it. It's good. I believe in easy cooking. Believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. And today, I'm gonna make a venison stew. That's deer meat stew. And I never will forget the first time I went deer hunting in my life. It was in North Louisiana, and I was living with the district attorney, kind of his bodyguard and, and uh, a companion, because he was an old man and needed a lot of help. And I was his chauffeur. And, uh, I went on a game preserve where you weren't supposed to go, but I didn't figure he'd put me in jail. He would have if he had known it. And I got out there in the woods, and I was with the marshal of the town, this little town. And he said, now, don't get the buck egg. I said, I ain't gonna get no buck egg, man. Don't worry about me. I'm from South Louisiana. I'm not gonna get any buck egg. Well, I want you to know the most beautiful deer you ever saw in your life came up there with a big rack of horn. And I got shaking so much, I had to lie down and put that 30 30 rifle I had to aim at that deer. And I aimed at his shoulder, you know. And I fired one time, I hit him right between the eyes. And I said, man, I didn't have the book egg. He said, I was afraid you were going to shoot me. The marshal said, he hid behind a tree while I was doing it. <laughs> now, this is a rule that I spent two hours making early this morning to getting it just right, the way I could put all this stuff in that got to go. 
but I'm not going to cook that first. What I'm going to cook first is, is this pepper mushroom rice. And it is delicious. You're going to find it out when you taste it. That two cup of rice. Put that in there like that. Put this out of the way because I need that spoon. And into that rice, I'm going to put uh, a two cup of long grain rice. Now, what I put in there. I got the more, let me put some salt in there. I'm gonna put a teaspoon and a half. I'm gonna put two teaspoons in there. Now I put a teaspoon of, of salt in every, to, to every cup of rice that I cook. And that's a teaspoon, you don't believe it, but it is. <laughs> but I'm gonna show you, I'll do that again. That's a teaspoon. Sit down there. Come here to me, you little old teaspoon. You let us prove to these people. I know what I'm doing here. That's a teaspoon, and if it ain't a teaspoon, I'll eat the, eat the damn pot and all. All right, now let's go in there and be a teaspoon, please. There it is, teaspoon. Mm-hmm. And I stir that in there. And then I'm gonna put about a ta two tablespoons full of finely chopped onion and stir it in there. You don't put any fire under that yet, no. Then I'm gonna put about uh, two tablespoons of finely chopped bell pepper, sweet pepper. Get in there. Just don't mess my hands clean, I washed them yesterday. <laughs> now into this, let me stir you in there too. Get you in there right. This is delicious rice, believe me. Into that, I'm gonna put uh, about, oh, I think this is a teaspoon of chopped, finely chopped garlic, and it's chopped finely. A very lovely lady does that for me. Doris Mon Leon gives me that to about a quarter. And I know that's a lot of work here. I've done it, so I know it's work. Now into this, I'm gonna put some sliced mushrooms. These are just regular mushrooms that you can get in any store that's got mushrooms. Going out of there, got to get you right. Now, I've got that. And I'm gonna put all that, get all that mixed up together. I'm gonna put some olive oil in this too, when I get the water. Now I'm gonna put some water in there. And uh, people say, how much water? I say, how much rice you got? We don't know. Well, what I know, and I know it works every time, I put, water in here to cover that rice to this, to my index finger, that's what they call it, the index finger right there, that first joint. And it always comes out right. And you boil all the water, most of the water out of it. I don't want to get too much. That, that just, just to go to the rice, go on. Not quite, a little bit more. See, that's wet right to there. That's all the water I want to put in it. And I put the fire on that and turn it up. Come on, let's stir you in there. Got the salt, got everything except the olive oil. Now I'm gonna put the olive oil and I'm gonna check one more time. Just exactly right, oh man. You're getting better at that as you get older. That's me, you know, as you stand. Now you're supposed to put in here, and this recipe says two tablespoons full. It may be a, a, a fraction more. I doubt it, though. Put a fraction more in there. Put it on there like this. Imagine that tablespoon all the time, you know. <laughs> That's two tablespoons. Or close, close enough. Suits me, and I'm the one to believe about this thing right now. And you stir. Now I put the fire under that. And I never get used to these stoves, but that's the right one. And I'm gonna put that on a medium and boil most of the water out of it. I'm not gonna put that in there and put it over here. And stir one more once right now. And I'll stir, I'll stir my rice every now and then. Get that going. Now you're going all right. Move the salt, put it over here. I mean, need some more. Plant it on it. Get this kind of, oh, we got to move this recipe. I keep my recipes around so I can uh, 
be sure I don't make mistakes. But when you write a, a lot of recipes in creative cooking, you can't, you don't try to, rem I don't try to remember all of them. Put that over there. Now this is venison stew. As I said earlier, I took a while making this dog roux. You hear me? In fact, my stirring hand is kind of tired I'm doing it, but I think I'll be all right though. I'll be okay. Into this, but I got a little water in there. Got, it says here, I made this room with about three, three fourths cup of olive oil and a cup and a half of all purpose flour. That means, don't, that don't mean that self rising flour. That means right that don't self rise. <laughs> now I'm gonna put some chopped onion in there. And let me move this out of the way. I may spill that water. I better put some water in here while I'm thinking about it. I got that water in there some, but I'll put some more maybe. Into this room, I'm gonna put a cup of chopped onion. And I'm gonna stir it. I'm gonna raise the fire a little bit too. Got every bit of that that time. That's nice. Get in there. Don't you dare. Stir these on your in there because I got to cook them until they, until they are, are um, put this on a medium low fire. Low, yeah, that's good. Now into this now, I got to put some bell pepper. Stir that in there. I got to have the most you know, don't do you. That's about uh, half a cup of chopped bell pepper. Oh man. Oh, they're sweet. They're sweet, sweet, sweet. Stir it in there. That roux looks pretty good, even if I did make it myself. Hmm. Smells good, too. And then I've got to put some chopped parsley in there. I'll ch I chop the stems and, and the leaves of uh, parsley because both of them have flavor, real good flavor. And this calls for a, a 10 cup of water, maybe a little bit more. And in this uh, venison stew, I put iced potatoes too, God damn. But into this, I got to keep going on this, I got to put some celery. That looks like, no, that's green onion. Let me see. That ain't celery, no, that's green onion. I can't. Oh, and I love them. I need them like stick candy. I like them so much. Man, hey, you, come on. You're doing good there now, as you stand. Let's get to going. Let that cook just a least little bit while I put in here some of the stuff I'm gonna have to use. Believe it or not, I'm gonna put a cup of white Chablis, Chablis wine, wine that I would, would drink, be glad to, if it wasn't working. <laughs> put that in there and put this lid right back where it was. I'm gonna put that fire on under that on a low fire, put that on low, stir this a little bit more. I want those onions. All I want the onions to do is get clear so I can say they're most done. Put that in there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to put in this to make it go all right, a little water. I'm going to put some more water in there too. Put a little water. Hear that sizzle? I mean. Now the reason I use cold water, and the reason I do when I when I make a roux, I put cold water, and the roux comes out smooth. I put hot water, it never does. So I quit putting hot water. Use nothing but cold water when I make a roux. You're doing good there, man. Mm hmm. Stir the rice. Some people say don't have to stir the rice. They don't know what they're talking about. When you got all this in it, you better stir it. Oh, and this tastes so good. So very good. Whew. Go 
way. You're doing good there, right? You know, I got to stir this up. Don't, it'll burn. And you burn the roux, you got to start all over. That's bad. But it's true. Mm-hmm. I got to put a little cayenne pepper in that water. I got to salt it to taste, too. My taste. <laughs> a little cayenne pepper. Not much. That's less than a, than a quarter of a teaspoon full of cayenne pepper. And it'll taste good. And I'm going to stir it, too, so. A lot of stirring going on here, huh? <laughs> Put this lid. Come in. Put it over here out of my way for just the time being. But I'm gonna put some more water in there. Oh, and I got stuff right looking so good. Don't want all them mushrooms to be in one place, no. Then I'm gonna put that heat diffuser under it. Put that lid on top of it. After most all the water is cooked out of it. Now I got three pounds of venison. That's strap, black strap. Somebody give me that. I didn't kill that deer. And I got three cup of potato. And I got some in right here. This is, is mint, dried mint. That's a teaspoon full of dried mint. And I use mint rather than, let me fix that far, than any, any other than bay leaf because it doesn't just haul off there and take up all of the taste. This right here. I got to put this roux in there because this, these onions are getting over clear. I can see through them, that's clear. And what I'm gonna do is turn this fire off. I wanna be sure I got a fire under that other water. I don't have one, I'm fixing to have. Got a good fire under there. Turn that fire up some, down some. This is on low, I'm gonna cut this one. I got that up where I want. I'm gonna cut this one off because I'm going to throw my rice right now. You're looking good, rice. Don't you do anything to me, you do good. Now I'm gonna put this in there, all of this roux, and stir it as I put it in there. Get this in there good. Go ahead. Turn the fire up a little bit. The way this, this uh, root is already just smooth, just smooth as velvet. Look at that. I try to get all of it that I can, too. Then I'll put the venison in there and the tater. Mmm-hmm. You're doing all right there, I guarantee you, Rue. Put this little spoon down here and use a bigger spoon and get this all out of there in a hurry. That old clear onion look right at me and see, we depreciate that. <laughs> oh, man. Try to get as much of it as you can. I can get all of it if I took my time, but I haven't got that kind of time. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. I want to be sure that root takes up that water, which it's doing. Doing good. Just because you want to stick to the bottom, you think you're going to get away from me, you're not going to do it. I'm going to get every bit of you and put you in that pot where you belong. Gotcha. That's good enough. I don't care what anybody says. And I've got to get rid of this thing here. I'll just put it right over here because I'm fixing to do something with this lid, like putting it on that butter rice. Hey, boy. Get together here now. 
If it's hot, you don't dare look at it any quicker than that. Got it cooking just right. Now you see all of that good roux has resolved itself with the rest of that water in there like it's supposed to. Oh boy. Now, let me tell you something. I like good deer meat. The secret of cooking deer meat is not to marinate it, but to be damn sure you take all the fat away from it. You get all the fat off of that. If you, if you eat alligator, you gotta take all the fat off of that too. And boy, I'll tell you, all right, deer meat, venison. Gonna put that in there now. And I'm gonna use my hand in there, like I told you, they clean you. Yeah. Washed them yesterday. And I keep them clean like that because I do a lot of cooking. I love to cook. My mama taught me how, and I'm eight years old, and I've been cooking ever since. I hoboed and cooked in the hobo jungle. And nobody ever whipped me because I cooked a bad dish. I knew a better not cook a bad dish. All right, let's us just go in there, all of you. Got it. And I'm going to wipe my hands on my good dish towel I carry right there and stir. Don't forget to stir. Now, all the water's going out of my rice. And it is bubbly, bubbly in the little holes. And I don't even have to stir that rice again. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the fire down real low, put it on a simmer, simmer. Put that on simmer, 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 simmer. Come on down there. Now you're going, now you're getting to it. Now you got it. Now I'll put this on the meat down. Just like that. Put the lid on it. And let it stay that way for just exactly 30 minutes, that's all. Just 30 minutes. Now let me stir it again. Don't those people know we're having fun here, calling on that phone line? <laughs> I can tell you, I'm not going to go to the phone. I'm going to make this venison stew right now. Come here, potatoes. These Irish potatoes been peeled and chopped. Go in there. I, you know that's hot? <laughs> yeah, we got it. And stir. Now, we, we put about 10 cups of cold water is what we did here. And it works out all right. I think I'm gonna put a little more water, just a little, to be sure I got everything covered. I don't like anything floating around and looking at me like that. So I'm gonna put about another two cups of water. One cup. Two cups, gotcha. And stir. And I put some cayenne pepper, so I'm not gonna put any Louisiana hot sauce in there. But that just as smooth as velvet. A little more water. That wasn't quite a cup, that last one. But that makes it a cup. That's a little more than 10 cups of water. It depends on how much venison you got and how much potato you got. I'm gonna put the lid back on that and turn the fire down and let it cook up a storm. It'd be all right with me. Whoo, boy. Hey, baby. Got everything going just like it should. Pots on there right a little. Nobody looking right. Let me walk. let me dry my hands. One thing I didn't put in there was salt. That's why I keep that salt box out where I can see it. I got a lot of meat. Got four pounds of meat, I think it is. Three pounds of bonus venison, and I got about the same amount of oh, that pour it in that hand. That hand don't know how to measure. This hand does. <laughs> One teaspoon, two teaspoon, teaspoon and a quarter, and a little more just for lining up, you know. <laughs> now I stir that one more once. Mm -hmm. You know I'm gonna taste that for salt. All right, you stand. Let's taste. This is the tasting spoon. See. No, 
don't need another damn thing except to cook a while to be sure you cook the meat and let me put that fire where I want it. It's uh, better put that on medium low so it won't cook too fast. Cut it just right. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sit down over here and try to remember a story I wanna tell you. I haven't told this in a long time. So if I mess it up, you'll laugh anyhow, will you? <laughs> oh, I got something served for me over here. Don't that nice. First of all, before I do anything else, I'm gonna put my rice in my venison stew. Every bit of it. You need that rice without putting it anywhere except in your stomach. And, uh, and pour, pour just a little bit of wine, a red wine. Oh, now that's, that's nearly a whole swallow, not just a swill, half a swallow, you know. And I put a napkin on here. I want to tell you about this Cajun where they struck oil on this place down near Abbeville, Louisiana. And man, he, he, it just got to him. He got the big head real bad. He wanted to just do this and do that, and he said he, he's gonna fly an airplane. To one of his friends, and his friend said, man, you don't know nothing about it. He said, I'm gonna go get a lesson, man. I'm not gonna try to fly that airplane without getting a lesson. So he went and he got, got certified pilot for an airplane, and he told his friend, he said, I'm gonna make a nonstop flip to LaGuardia Airport in New York City. His friend said, you better, Go where you can stop and get some gas on there. He said, I'll stop and get gas, but it's going to be a nonstop flip. So he said, so he left. He left New Orleans. He stopped in Birmingham, got fooled up again. He left there and stopped in Washington, D.C., got fooled up again. And he left there and he went to LaGuardia Field and it was so foggy, you could not see your hand on your face unless you rub it real hard, you know? <laughs> And he's flying around there, and he looked at his fuel, was getting low, and he went on the radio, he said, this is the Abbeville Ace. I'm calling LaGuardia Field. My gasoline is getting real low, and will you please give me some instructions on how to get in there, huh? He didn't get no answer. And he flew around a little bit more, and his gasoline was much more lower than it was, and he called it, hey, this is the Abbeville Ace, LaGuardia Field. Will you please give me some destruction? I don't got enough gas to go very much far, no. I guarantee, please give me some destruction. Nobody answered. And he fly around a little more, and all the gasoline gone. And he picked up that radio and said, look, I'm, I'm down to a thousand feet, and I got no more gas. My engine don't run some more. The propeller doesn't stop. Will you please give me some destruction, huh? Abbeville Radio come on said, this is LaGuardia Field. We're gonna give you some instruction right now. We say, well, go ahead and, and, and give them to me. They say, the best thing you can do is say, now lay me down to sleep. Take <laughs> a little sip of this wine. Mm -hmm. Now, come here to me, rice and venison stew. Mm -hmm. That is good, yeah. I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me. I guarantee. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew. Come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good. I guarantee you. Talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it. It's good. I believe in easy cooking. Believe me, I do. How y'all are? You know, I haven't done a Cajun yell in a long time. Hey, that's a good Cajun yell. I guarantee that today. We're going to have sausage succotash, and we'll make a potato salad without potatoes. I'll show you how it's done. And it's good, too, I guarantee. But I'm going to start off with sausage, sausage succotash. You know, it's hard for occasion to say those two words at the same time. <laughs> That's for true. Now, I have here some sausage and some corn and some butter beans and tomato. And onion, can't make anything good without onion, that's for true. And the first thing I want to do is put some olive oil 
in this pan here. And this, this is a fish fry, pan, skillet, whatever you want to call it. Put that in there. This recipe says a half a cup of olive oil. And I'm not gonna, well, they got one poured for me. Isn't that nice of them? <laughs> Don't think it's quite enough. That's why I got the bottle here just in case, you know. In fact, it takes a little bit more than a half a cup. I want to cover the bottle of that pot very good. Got it? Now into this, I'm gonna put a, about a, a cup of chopped onion, and I'm gonna turn the fire on underneath this too. And I got to always look at this fire to see which one I got. I never have learned which one is which, you know? <laughs> Put that there, right there out of my way. But I want to turn this fire on, and I think it's this one right here. Nope, I was wrong again. I put that on about a, a, a medium low flame. I don't want it to cook too fast. And I'm going to stir it a little bit to be sure that this onion get clear all in one time, you know? And to that, I'm going to add about a half a cup of bell pepper, sweet pepper. Whenever you add anything, you got to stir. My hands are clean, wash them. I figured I might have to do that. And I'm going to stir. Turn it all around to where it's going to get all of that. You've got to kind of get those belt pepper a little done. Where they, they're not going to be clear, you know that, but they're going to get done. And then I turn to this uh, about uh, a cup of green onion. Whoo, yeah. Onion, come out of there. I think you can get that. going. And stir. Now this sausage I have here doesn't have any sodium glutamate in it. And I, I don't ever buy a smoke sausage that has that in it because some people it, it doesn't agree with. It, it, it agreed with me, but I just didn't want to take any chances on anybody not having. This right here is Rotel. That is spicy tomatoes, and it's uh, very good. Put it in there and stir. That's right. Stir that up real good while we're going. I got a story I'm gonna tell y'all. After a while, I got to get this food going good though. Ooh wee, that's smelling good already, you know it? <laughs> These are peeled tomatoes. I think I'll, I'm gonna put them in there now. Put them in there right now. A can of peeled tomatoes. People say, I don't like peeled tomatoes. Uh, canned tomatoes, they ought to eat these. These are good, you see that? And they chop real easy with this spoon. And I'll stir them a little bit after I'll chop them a little bit. Then chop them some more. Yeah. It's a chopping good time had by everybody. I guarantee. Now I'm gonna put some whole grain corn. You can scrape it off the cob if you want to, you can get it in a can. It tastes about the same in this uh, sucker tash, though, I'll tell you that. Oh, now I need every, every grain of corn I need, it. need it now, got it? Put that there like that, stir. You can put that spoon down, Justin, you know better than that. And that's gonna smell good, mmm, gonna taste good, Ooh, and I'm gonna eat some of it, I'll just tell you that for true. <laughs> oh, man. Now, these are lima beans. In a good succotash, lima beans always has a place. It needs to have a place. Fix it real good. Oh boy. Mm. That smells so good already. Huh? Then I want to put a cup of water in there, just a cup of water. That's nothing but water, that's not wine, no. And stir. When we get hot in a few minutes, you ought to be able to smell this real good, I guarantee. 
into that, we're going to put a little garlic, two teaspoonful of chopped fine garlic. Get on in there. Every, every bit of it is chopped. I don't think I left any in there. And you put that, stir it good all over, get it all over, you don't all in one place. Take, take a nice big bite and do nothing but garlic. As much as I like it, I don't like to do that. No. I make garlic sandwiches, though. That's awful good. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm. Looking good. Smelling good. Now I got to put the sausage on that. Now this is a pound and a half of smoked sausage that we sliced in kind of chunk slices, you know, to make a good sucker tag. Uh, go in there like that. Mm -hmm. Stir it all in there good. Got enough juice. Don't have to worry about it burning. Oh, I can taste this already. Oh, that smells so good, I'll tell you the truth. Ooh, yeah. I sure, boy. Don't that look good? I want to taste of it. It tastes better than it looks. Now I'm going to put this lid on that. And I'm going to have to turn that fire down a little bit because, believe me when I tell you, that fire gets hot. Come here, chair. I'd sit down and see what I'm doing. There you go. I'm going to turn that down to, to low on this stove. It works real good. And I'm going to tell you a story as soon as I kind of get all this stuff cleaned out of my way because I'm going to tell that story and then I'm going to make you that potato salad without potatoes. I know you don't believe me, but it's going to happen. Come here, lady. Now, I'm just going to set this over here by my walking cane because I need the space. And that's what I want to tell you that story about. This is way back there when the space people were just really getting started and they were going to shoot the men to the moon. And this old Cajun lady was worried about them yet. Who? She told me. We called her grandma. She said, I just, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I've been praying. I said, what you been praying? She said, those men going to the moon. Oh, I said, they're going to make it. She said, yeah, but I'm praying that that moon is plumb full when they go there so they can hit, they can hit, aim at it a lot better and be sure they hit it, I guarantee. <laughs> and she meant it too. <laughs> Potato salad without potatoes. Here's my without potatoes. Right, Chia? Ain't nothing in the world but saltine crackers. That's what it is. A full pound of them. The whole box. All these. See, they look on this thing. I've been crushing on this, waiting to do this for you all to see that I do crushing myself. See? Crush. Look, that sounds good. Oh, man. Now, let's see if I can get this thing open. I always have a hard time opening these little things. But I generally get them open, I can tell you that. My hands are not greasy and my hands are clean. Look at that. Got it. <laughs> Man, come on now. We got a lot of things to go in here. These are saltine crackers crushed up in the little packages. I'll put this over there with the rest of these things. Go on. Don't you fall on the floor. And there are a few that you got to kind of, you don't want it too big, you want it just about right. Now, now this is a lot of people. I've, I've done this all over the country. Buffalo, New York, Omaha, Nebraska, several other places all over the East, Boston. And people never did recognize what it was. That's what, what's funny to me. I guess uh, one lady, recognize it, and I think she had been making it. But I've, I've done this a lot of times. They just don't believe it's not potatoes, but it's not potatoes. And what I'm going to put in here is a cup of chopped celery. Where you going, celery? There's celery. What that is, celery. Put that in there. And stir. Always mix it good because 
You get this all going, and here you got it. Get too long on them, but to mix all together. The upper celery, and then a couple of chopped onion. Come here, onion. Now, to me, potato salad isn't potato salad without onion. And this is close to potato salad. Not, but it's right awful close. And it is. my mother taught me this. It, uh, one day she had to make potato salad and didn't have it, so she used saltine crackers. Nobody recognized the fact that it wasn't potatoes, so busy talking with each other and all that stuff, you know. And the end of this, a cup of sweet relish. There it is. Spread it around a little bit. Want to get every bit of that because that's awful good. Got to stir it in there good too. There you go. Let's stir in there good and make the crackers get like they're getting juice yet they're not, but they, they think they are anyhow. Oh man. That, that start making it smell better. Oh boy. Now into that I'm gonna put a couple of chopped dill pickles. They think they're gonna stay in that cup, but I ain't gonna let them know. Stirring that good. Mm. Oh man. That is smelling more like potato salad all the time. And I know it doesn't have one potato in it. This is a hard-boiled egg that I'm gonna put on there. Six big hard-boiled eggs. We'll get all of it. Let's get mixed up. Yeah. You know, this will work it. I guarantee it will. If you do it right. Yeah, you're looking good there, baby. I guarantee. Now I'm going to put some black olives. I like to put that olives, black olives in this. Here we go. Right around, it. they're chopped. We chopped these real good. I didn't think I'm gonna leave you in there because you got chopped, you got to go where you're supposed to go. There you go. Spread around. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, that's looking good. That's looking good just right. And a cup of chopped green olive stuff with pimentos. Come on, police. Might just as well get out of there. I'm not gonna let you stay in there. No. Good night. Stir that around good. Oh, boy. You know, the secret to anything is every time you add something, when you're cooking, that is, every time you add something, you got to stir. In fact, I've been called Stirring Wilson in hobo camps and all kind of places. And this is green onions. I'm gonna put on this right now. Oh, that would help anything, didn't it? Stir them around. Get them stirring good. Mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. Oh man, it's looking pretty all the time. Now, what I got to do? I'm gonna make a sauce to go in this. And in order to do that, I got to move this back a little, move these out of my way, move this over here, and move my recipe where I can be sure I don't leave anything out of that sauce. And I got this nice bowl right here with a whisk in it for me to just beat hell out of it, you know? <laughs> that is mayonnaise in that jar right there. And I'm gonna put it in this little deal for me to whip up real good. Come here to me, you pretty man in this jaw. It's not a jaw, that's a bowl. Sure is. I want to get all of that man in there. That's how come I got this little spatula. 
to be sure I get it all. You got to move over there, boy. Now, you don't measure this. You put a bunch of it and say, I hope that's enough. And you keep it overnight, you got to add some more mayonnaise. You'll have to add more mayonnaise to it. Put that in there like that. And I'm gonna just, just beat the daylights out of this as soon as I can get to it. And I'm fixing to get to it. I got some on my finger. Got to take care of that later. Now, in order to do this right, it's the only way I know to get that off of there. It doesn't hurt a thing, but I'm gonna wipe my finger off. I'm not gonna put it in my mouth like I would do if y'all weren't watching me. <laughs> I got a dish towel right here for that. Now into this, I'm going to put some horseradish sauce, which is delicious. and helps the flavor of most anything, including this. And I'm gonna beat that with a little olive oil and bring it right back to the consistency that it is right now. Consistency, you know that's a good word? <laughs> Just learned it, I hope it's the right word. So I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna whip this with a little olive oil. I got to put a little olive oil in there. Get that uh, mayonnaise off of it, Justin. Now I got it, hope. It says on this recipe about uh, doesn't say how much me in there, and I'm gonna put it in the mouth I want to in there anyhow. About two or three tablespoons, two tablespoons of make it. And beat this real good. Put that right there. Go ahead and get it if I need it. You see how that'll just beat up real good, just like you're making mayonnaise, or mayonnaise, mayonnaise, people argue about that all the time. Mayonnaise, mayonnaise. Let me see if I'm missing anything here. Nope, nope, I'm not. Six hard boiled eggs, which is sauce. Got it right there. I'm gonna put it in here and just beat it in here, too. Oh, man. Let's get with this, boy. Got to have the right motion. That should take a little more olive oil. I'm gonna put a little more in there, just a sliver. Teaspoonful, something like that, you know, that's a sliver. Teaspoon, Justin Wilson, teaspoon. Easy cooking, though. Now, a little Worcestershire sauce, tablespoonful. Gonna mix that real good in there, too. That's the first time which sauce ever been whipped, and I'm whipping it. I guarantee you that I'm whipping it. And stirring, and whipping, getting it all off the side. I don't want to lose any of that. Too good to lose. Mm. And I think that's about all I got to put in there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour this and then mix it real good. And I'm going to taste it, I can tell you that right now. Ooh, boy. Get out of the way over there. Can't help but get a little of this on your hand. That's why I have this dish towel wrapped on my leg there so I can You stay right there and let me get this spatula. Because I need every bit of this, believe it or not. Every bit of it. I want out there. Be nice. Now, how you going? I thought you were going to get away from me, but it didn't let you do it? No. Whew. That's about all I'm going to be able to get from that and I'm gonna mix it real good. Oh, mm, can't help but do that. Mm. <laughs> mm, another side. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's just mix this up real good. It's gonna taste good. It's 
Smells good already. Got to put a little salt in this, I would imagine. It's just salt to taste. And notice I haven't put any Louisiana hot sauce or anything like that in this. But we're gonna mix you up. And good. I know I've got a little gig in Buffalo, New York. I made this, and she said, I don't like potatoes. I said, this doesn't have any potatoes in the ladies, a little ladies. <laughs> she said, no potatoes. I said, no. Well, I'll taste it. I had a little bitty thing, and she tasted it. I didn't say a word, didn't say a word. Eat every bit was in the little container. And then she left, walked around, went all over the store I was in, and came back. Didn't say a word, just reason got one of those. Ate every bit of it. I kept wondering what in the world, whether she likes it or not, I didn't want to hurt her feelings. But I still wanted to know. She didn't say a word, just walked off, came back. In about, oh, I guess, five or 10 minutes, 10 or five minutes more, no more than that. And uh, she reached and got another one, ate it. You know, now, this feels like it's boiling just right. And this is coming along fine, mixing good, nice and juicy. I hate a dry potato salad, don't you? I mean, got this going good here now. Mm, mm, mm. Come on now, baby. Doing good. You know, I, when I'm cooking by myself and nobody around, I just sing up a storm, and that's where comes the, the right the music background of my shows, and that's where it all comes from. Now that looks good enough to eat, doesn't it? You don't know, like that? Hmm, I don't know what to tell you. But what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna leave this here just like that. Wipe my hand real good, and I'm gonna head that way and taste some of this, and you all all gonna get a taste too, I guarantee. But that is good stuff. Move that out of the way. Go on over here and sit down, do stand. You gonna do it? Walk around the back of that chair. Mm-hmm. Well. There's potato salad without potatoes. There's some succotash. And I'm gonna see just exactly how it tastes in just one minute. But it's, uh, mm, that looks so good. I hate to disturb it, but I'm gonna have to. You know how it is. Be a gentleman, put that napkin on your belt so it won't fall on the floor. Got you. Now, put your chair up a little close, right. And pour a little. A little red wine. I don't, I don't, I drink very little white wine. When somebody says, what do you have to eat, and we're gonna have to eat tonight, and you tell them chicken, they say, oh, white wine. I say, oh, wine. But I prefer red wine, and that's what I eat. Now this is succotash right here. I got to taste it, I'm just dying to taste it. There's a good piece of saucy sausage. Come here, come up home. Mmm. 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 Ah. That is good. That's stuck there. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee. Talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. How y'all are? 
I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. And this morning, we're gonna cook some of my favorite dishes that uh, I invented myself because I didn't have anything else to cook, so I had to cook it, like chili rice and chicken a la Creole. I didn't invent that, but I did chili rice. And I think that uh, you'll like it. In fact, I guarantee you will. Now, I've got some stories to tell you, but first of all, I've got to get this chili rice on so I can get it did quick enough for us to eat. This is a small pot, and what I got right here is two cups of rice. Now, this is easy cooking, so you got, got a lot of help. Somebody cut the rice up for me, that's good. Into this rice, I'm gonna haul off and put a tablespoonful of onion powder. There's a tablespoonful of onion powder. I hope it is. That's what it is. <laughs> I, can, I can tell. And also, two teaspoonful of garlic powder. That's right, that's what it is. <laughs> and I got two teaspoonful of salt, and I generally measure those myself, because people don't believe I know how. So I'm gonna put two teaspoonful of salt. And I guarantee that's a teaspoonful. I take it that for true. One. Two, and just a little more. <laughs> then we put a tablespoonful of chili powder. Now this is chili rice, this is chili powder. It chili to make you sneeze if you don't look up. And then, of course, I got to stir it up. Stir it all together. We got everything in there I'm supposed to have, except the olive oil. And I put that in after I got the water in there. Get that out of my way. And after I put the water in there, I'll stir it some more, then I'll put the olive oil. And then I'll start cooking it. Let me put the water in right now. Give me a picture. That picture now doesn't have a hole to hold it, you know that? And I cook my rice, cook this rice, just like I do any other rice. I measure it very carefully the way I have the rice. And by golly, we had just enough in there. <laughs> you see, you see what I did? What I did there now, I just put to that first joint, and everybody's first joint in the finger is just alike. Check your neighbor there. See if it <laughs> That's in your index finger, I think they call it. Oh, I'm glad I got this little dish towel. And then I put, I got the salt, I put the olive oil. And I'm supposed to measure that very carefully, but I don't do that. It's got two tablespoons. I can measure two tablespoons by looking at that. That's two tablespoons. <laughs> <laughs> Guarantee it is. <laughs> Put that back out of my way and stir this some more. And I'm gonna move my pot over to this other side. No, I'm not, I'm gonna move this pot over there. Make that chicken a la Creole in that. Oh man, that's gonna be good, yeah. Guarantee. Stir it, get everything off the bottom. And we put this fire and bring this to a quick boil. I think this is the right one. Yeah, that's it. I got that on high. I'll let it stay there for a little bit and cook. That's hot. If you think high ain't hot, oh, I guarantee. And I got everything in there. And all I'm doing now, I want you to know that this is easy to fix. This is easy cooking. I put all the ingredients except the olive oil in there. You notice that. Onion powder, garlic powder, long grain rice, salt and chili powder, and olive oil. Now that's easy cooking. It really is. I think you're going to enjoy that. And I've got this little clock. After I boil most of the water out of there, I, uh, in fact, you just see a little bubble in the holes in the rice like that. You see a little bubble in there, you got enough water out. You put a heat diffuser under it. That's what I have to put on there. This is a heat diffuser, so it won't, uh, won't scorch them rice too. I don't like to scorch them rice, though, not me. It don't taste good when it's scorched like that. 
And uh, then, uh, then I uh, put the lid on it, and I, I, I clock it 25 minutes. And if anybody comes and raises the lid on there, chop their arm off and shoot them. <laughs> when I'm cooking in my kitchen, I tell everybody, don't go messing around in my kitchen. But I stir this rice several times to be sure I've got everything just right. And it looks just right to me right now. It's going to be a beautiful brown when I get it cooked. And you all will sample a little bit of it, I hope. In fact, I'm going to make you do that. I'll hold the gun on and say, you got to taste this, you know. But I like it. It's good. Now, what I'm going to do is just leave it here out of the way and change my recipe, because i got to start on this uh, chicken a la Creole. That'll take a little longer than this other one. That's a nice spoon. I'm going to need that on the chicken a la Creole to put it over here like that. Now, I want to tell you a story. I haven't told this story in a long, long time. It has nothing to do with this. It's a story I want to tell. I got a friend would hunt duck all the time. During the duck season, a lot of time not in season, he goes and hunts the duck. He don't never took anybody with him. When they say, we're going to take you with him, no, you can't go with me. I don't took anybody with me. He say, you got your dog? I say, I always take Fido with me. And he spelled it P-H-I-D-E-A-U-X, Fido. <laughs> he said, I always take him to retrieve those duck if I got no shot him. Please take him. No, can't do it. But one day, a man would loan him some money to build a beautiful house, what he got. He said, I would like to go with you to hunt some duck. He said, I don't took somebody with me to hunt some duck, no. He said, how you like this house, what I loaned you the money for, Hank? Oh, I love this house. He said, how about taking you to hunt some duck, Hank? Well, you don't got to hit that kid in the face with a wet mop. He knows something going on. He said, OK. And it was cold weather. He said, pick me up tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. o'clock in the morning. We'll go in the blind and hunt the duck. He said, I'll be here at 4. And next morning at 4 o'clock, he's right there. The man come out there and get in. He said, where's Fido? He said, we don't need him. He said, look, I ain't going to wait out in marsh and hunt them duck. It's too damn cold. Call the dog and let us go. <laughs> come Fido. Fido brought himself, got in the back of the truck. And one time they got in that P-Rogue boat. Now, anybody that's ever been in the P-Rogue know a P-Rogue ain't even safe for one people, let alone two people and a big dog like Fido. <laughs> he said, well, let's go and get in the blind. So they went and got in the blind. Fido sat just as quiet and nice as he possibly could. And my friend says, man, it looks like we're going to see some duck today. I guarantee the banking people say, I hope so. Well, he got in the blind all set and everything, and here come some duck. <laughs> <laughs> Give him that feed call, set him right down in front. And that banking people raised up with his shoot gun with two duck out there, bloom, bloom, got both of them at the same time. He said, sent the dog for the duck. He said, them duck ain't going nowhere. He said, sent the dog for the duck. Fido, go get them duck. Trip, 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 right on top of the water. He walk out there, pick up them duck, trip, 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 right back on top of the water and put them down. That bank of people didn't say the word. In a few minutes, here come two more duck, big millard, and a bunch all by themselves. And he called <laughs> Give him that feed call and he sit right down there. He raised up with his twice barrel carabine, bloom, bloom, kill them duck, dead, dead. The bank of people say, sent the dog for the duck. He said, don't worry about them duck. I know they ain't going nowhere. They dead, dead. He said, sent the dog, let's got some argue. Let them got some argue about that. He said, Fido, go get them duck. Fido, tip, 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 right on top of the wall. Pick them duck up, tip, 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 right back on top of the wall, put the duck down. That banking people didn't say a word. He said, I didn't say something at first because I believe my eyes were playing a trick on me. But if you see that dog walk out there on top of the water, pick up them duck, walk back on top of the water and put them duck down, huh? He said, yeah, and that embarrassed me more than I never told you. I never could talk that damn dog how to swim. <laughs> Now, you notice I got a good high ball on this, and what I got to do is kind of cut it down a little bit so that it'll put it on a medium, so it'll still cook, and cook all the water out of there, 
They turn the color, turn it a nice brown there. Now, ain't that nice? I <laughs> guarantee it is. Now, over here, I got another pot. And I'm going to change place with that. Put that there, because they got to go on there. And then here, I'm going to make a, a chicken a la Creole. And we got all kind of stuff got to go in there, pretty stuff. And I'm going to put it in there. Let me kind of clean up this a little bit and get it out of my way so I can get this other stuff a little closer to me. Yeah. Now, what I've done to show you how easy cooking is, I've used dried vegetables and everything except I got the, this is wet hot sauce. This is good wet steak sauce. And all of these are tom tomatoes. We, we'll tell you about them and we put them in there. But this is a, this makes for about six, seven, it depends on who's hungry. But it comes out real good. I got a, a quarter cup of dried onion. Right here. I'm gonna do that with that. No, I'm not either. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna put it in this pot right there, just like this. Don't drop it in there. At least I thought I was. <laughs> Going through, you did a little spoon. That, oh, they, they don't took up all the water. That's good stuff. Put it in there. And get it all out of there, too. Don't be messing around and leaving it in good dry on. They taste just like regular. You never know the difference when you taste this. You may have to use you again, I can tell. And then I put in there, according to this recipe I got here, a tablespoonful of dried green onion. You see that? Those are dried green onion. Put them in there too. And those haven't got any fire under there, so they don't have enough water to have fire yet. And I'm gonna put some chicken stock in there. And then when I put some more dry parsley, this was dry parsley. Put that water on there. It makes it go good. Here let's go. Put all this in here just like and get all that parsley out because parsley helps flavor things. I don't, I don't use a lot of celery to cook because all you taste is celery a lot of times, so I don't use a lot of that. Now, and then, corner this thing here, I put a teaspoon, a teaspoonful of garlic powder. That's one teaspoonful of garlic powder. We'll put that on there. We didn't put water with that, we didn't have to. And then I put in here dried mint. I'm gonna wait a little bit to put that dried mint. What I'm gonna do is put some other stuff in here so I can stir her up. And what I'm gonna put in there right now is some rotel. No, I'm not, I'm gonna put white wine first, just a little wine, that's to take the bitterness out of tomatoes. Tomatoes have a bitterness in them. Onion have bitterness in it. I'm gonna put a little water. Look, that's a, a cup of white, white Chablis wine. It's good enough to drink. If it ain't good enough to drink, don't cook with it. You hear? Me? <laughs> Just remember that. Go ahead and cook there, boy. I'll have to stir my rice one more once. Yeah, it's going good. Yes, it is. Take it off the bottom. I have to lower that fire some more while I'm thinking about it. Lower the fire a little bit more. Then I'm gonna put it on simmer when I put this heat diffuser under there. Now this is a medium, this is a, a, a low, medium low fire. It's good, still cooking. I'm gonna go ahead and fix this uh, chicken a la creole. Now what I'm gonna put on that is some chicken stock. When we boil, chicken, and I'm going to turn that fire on, too, right this minute. Let's go here, boy, if you can find the right thing. Got it. Fire lights right away. Put it on high and stir. You got to stir this a little bit. Man, you're looking good there. Now I'm going to put some Rotel. They ain't nothing in the world but seasoned spiced tomatoes. That's all they are, but they're good. I like them very much. 
Rotel. If you think that ain't hot, you're wrong. It is hot. Put it on there like that. And then I put some eat or can whole tomatoes. But we, we spiced them up real good, see, so that we wouldn't uh, we would put them in there. We would, it would be easier to eat really like that. We go put that in there. This is uh, just good old whole tomatoes. You could use fresh tomatoes if you wanted, wanted to, put them in a blender or something like that, but that, that's too hard. This is easy cooking I'm trying my best to do today, and I'm going to do it. Look at that. Good. Now I'm going to put a, oh, three tablespoons full of steak sauce. Creole ketchup, it used to be called, but it's now steak sauce. Whenever you put anything in there, always stir. Just stir a little bit. How many tablespoons? Two tablespoons. That's what my recipe called for. I can't remember three tablespoons for a steak sauce, yeah. One, two, three. One of them tablespoons wasn't quite full. Just add a little bit more to it. Got it going. All right. And then it says in the recipe to put some hot sauce, a little down of hot sauce, or some cayenne pepper, whichever one or two. The two I'm going to put about less than a, less than a teaspoon full in because I know that the rotel is in there. So what I'm going to do is put about that's a half a teaspoon. I'd bet money on it. I guarantee. <laughs> Now I got to stir. There we go. Hmm. When that spoon gets hot now, I guarantee you do it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Let me tell you something, not ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be good, I guarantee. You. I got the cup of tomatoes in there, everything. And the only thing I don't have in there are two things. I haven't got the dried mint in there, and I don't got the chicken in there. But I'm going to put it in there. Don't worry, none. I guarantee I'm going to do that. Got the onion, the green onion, the good uh, parsley, and the garlic powder with uh, two cups of, of chicken stock. That's what they did. Plus the water that you use to get the, uh, the dried vegetables to not be dry some more, you know. Now, I got all that right there. And what I'm gonna did is put that chicken with that right this minute if I can get to it. Get out of my way and give me that dish towel. That's the handiest thing in the world a dish towel is. I couldn't cook what I want. Come here, old, old chicken. Now what we did, we boiled this chicken. These are nothing but second joints. They call it the, the tie in all these big shoot places. And uh, we didn't cook that. I'm going to put a lid on that in just a second. This chicken let me, was cooked in seasoned water. Tastes good, too. You're going to need another thing. So we're going to put that in there and put the dried mint. Now, you notice I'm using dried mint. I used to use bay leaf all the time. I love bay leaf. But bay leaf is a, a known taste killer. You put too much bay leaf, ain't nothing you can do about it. It's going to stay there. It's gonna, all you're going to taste is bay leaf. So I don't use it anymore. I use mint, and it's easier to handle. And it doesn't kill the, doesn't take over the flavor. And people wonder what they're tasting is mint. That's what they tasted. I don't know not to tell them that, but that's what it is. And I got to bring this to a boil. And it's going to come to a boil in a minute. Now, put the chicken to it. See how pretty that shit looks like white meat? It's tired. Come off a of white chicken. <laughs> This is a full cup of this, four cups of, of white ties. 
I just tie tie. I never will forget. I was in 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 Shreveport, Texas, once with a man. We went to a chicken place and had some chicken. He was from Markville, Louisiana, in, in the boat place. Pure bleed, pure bleed Cajun. And the little waitress came over and says, "Can I do anything for you?" He said, "Yes, ma'am." He, he said, "I would like to have two ties and a wing." She looked at me kind of funny. She said, what do you say? He said, I would like to have two ties in a wing. And she looked at me and said, what did he say? I said, he said he wanted two ties in a wing. I thought she going to hit us both. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she should have. Now, this I got to put a lid on this rice. It's a chili rice. You can see it it's all over there. Let's just heat defuse it down first. Put the lid and turn the fire down to a simmer. And you let that simmer. It ain't down to a simmer yet, but it got to get on there. Now it is. I'm going to let that simmer for 25 minutes, is what it's going to do. Now, what I got to do is get my food over there where I can taste this to be sure it's worth eating. Now, I'm going to put a lid on this pot, too. But I got to turn that fire down after I put the lid on it. I want to get a little of this rice. Got it right here. Come here, right? That's not too hot for me to handle. What I want to do is get my plate and bring it over here. That'd be a lot easier, but I may spill that. I don't want to do that. And get my chicken a la Creole. I fixed up when nobody was looking. It still tastes the same, though, I guarantee. And go over here and put this on my plate. Hmm. 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 But first, I'm going to put a little on. Um, that chili rice in there. It's hot, yeah. Come here, chili rice. Gotcha. And I'm gonna use this spoon to get some chili rice on that. Just a little. All I want is a little. And the same spoon, I'll go get some of this chili, some of this chicken a la Creole, and just put it on my the rice. Because I didn't cook it in white rice, I had chili rice, and it's good enough. Now, sit yourself down and taste that juice. Damn, I'm going to do just exactly that. And pour myself just a little taste of wine. You know how it is? A little taste of wine. Now, you're supposed to use that white wine, but it's chicken, but I'll, I prefer red wine. So that's what I'm gonna drink right now. Yeah, let's go. Got to taste that. See if it's any good. Mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm. I guarantee that's good. Mm -hmm. No napping, but I got my dish towel. <laughs> and a little taste of wine is to you, bless your heart.
may share. For more information and a complete line of fine Justin Wilson products, visit www.justinwilson.com or you may call 228-207-5379. Mes chers, that's the Justin Wilson Fine Products, justinwilson.com. That is good. Sauter and wine. That needs just a little bit of salt. You got to admit that pretty ass. Oh, wait a minute. You know I forgot the most important thing? Yes. Oh, it's looking good. I guarantee that's a fine one. Oh, boy. Hello oh, there, I'm Justin Wilson, and I love to make casserole dishes. This is where the imagination can get a good workout. What if you've got unexpected company and they expect to have something for dinner? That's when you look in the pantry and the refrigerator and maybe even in the garden to find a few things to throw together. The most wonderful dishes in the world are created like this. Just use a fresh vegetable, some grated cheese, a little onion, and maybe a can of soup or tomato sauce, and a few seasonings, and whoo boy, you've got a magnificent original casserole dish. When I made this show you're about to see for Mississippi Educational Television 25 years ago, I cooked eggplant casserole and Brussels sprouts casserole. I don't know which I like best, because they are both so good, whoo, I guarantee. How y'all are? You know, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm so glad for you to see me, I guarantee. And I thought of a story when I was walking on there. I haven't told it in a long time, and I would like to hear it again myself. So before I start cooking, I'd like to tell you this story. I live near Denham Springs, Louisiana, and Denham Springs is dry. I mean, you know, legally, how you call it. And across the Hamid River, East Baton Rouge Pass, it's wet everywhere you want to get, I guarantee. <laughs> and they had a barroom saloon. This is a true story over there, cocktail saloon. And a little, cute little female girl, lady, women, barmaid, worked over there. And she, I guarantee, she was the smartest aleck would ever live anywhere before. I guarantee you that, too. <laughs> she had all kind of answers. If you got a question, she got, in fact, she'd furnish you a question if you didn't have one. That's how smart she was. <laughs> And at one cage that worked in construction, he came in there every day to get one little drink of that good Cajun whiskey made up in Tennessee, how you call it, Jacques Daniel. <laughs> and Chase it would, would just one shoot a little, little beer, like a pearl pop with foam on top. And uh, he'd get them one shoot, and she'd just give him a working over. Even I felt sorry for him. But one day he came in there and he drug a 20 foot log chain with him. Clinkity, 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 blah. blah. And she said, I know he wanted me to ask him how come he drugged him chain, but I ain't gonna did it. <laughs> and she just gave him a hard time some more, and he had his one drink and picked up them log chain, clink, 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 and drug it back outside some more. He got out there with that every day, 10 days. Clink, 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 blap with them log chain. Every day she'd talk with herself, say, I ain't gonna ask him, though, just ain't gonna did it. Woo! Ten days it went on. On the eleventh day, she can't stood it some more. He come <laughs> clinkity clankity clankity clank with them chain blap. He said, "Give me." She said, "Shut your mouth." <laughs> How come you drug them damn log chain here like that, huh? He said, "I look like hell trying to push it in here." I guarantee. <laughs> now we're going to cook eggplant. I don't mean no. Uh, chicken. That's where the eggs come from. This is the eggplant I'm talking about right here. This is a purple eggplant, and they're all kinds. They even grow a green one, but you know, funny thing about it, you, they don't taste as good because you don't think they ought to be that color. You can do all kinds of things with eggplant. I do all kinds of things with them. I, I cube them up and cook them like hush puppies, or I slice them real thin, and then cover them with all kinds of little goody stuff and let that get cold and slice it like candy. And, ooh, it's really so good. But today, we're not going to do any of that. I've got some eggplant over here that I got to go 
get out of that sink because I've had it soaking in a little salt water to take the bitter out of it. This is eggplant that's been soaking, soaking here in salt water. And I'm gonna take it out of this salt water, put it in this colander, and rinse all that salt water off of it. And uh, cause as I go along, I'll try to tell you what I'm gonna do. Got to, whoo, look at that. Man, that's pretty. Now see, that water has turned black nearly. It's brown, that's uh, taking the bitter out of the eggplant. What I'm gonna do is just rinse this salt out of this. And then I'll have to salt it some more when I cook it. Pour this water out. Get it like that. Put some fresh water in. Rinse it a little bit to be sure I get all of the salt water out of there. Now, got this going my way right now, I'll tell you for true. <laughs> Put this back on this like that. Don't want to waste any of that good eggplant, no. I'm getting all of the salt off of it. Just rinsing it, that's all I'm doing. Nothing to it, just like eating lettuce. Now I'm gonna drain it again. And I'm gonna take it over to the stove. In this thing because I don't want to get everything wet. Who knew? And over here, I got a pot. Underneath here, I got all my stuff that goes in there. And this is such a good one, it's gonna take two of these trays to get it all up here. Yay, look at that. Now, put this here so that I won't get everything all over the floor. This is clean, clean it myself. <laughs> oh, steady. That nearly fills that pot, doesn't it? That's four quarts. This is a four quart pot. Four quarts of eggplant is what that is. Let me put this back at the sink and get it out of my way. Now I'm gonna haul off there and put a couple of, this better be, yeah, sauterne wine on there. Oh, I should say so. And then, two cups of water. Now sometimes I put a little more water, but uh, I don't think it'll be necessary today. Now, I'm gonna put that on medium high and cover it with this lid and cook it till it's kind of tender. Now right here I got a frying pan skillet and we're going to put this in here a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Maybe, maybe a little more. It all depends on how big the skillet. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna saute some onions and bell pepper. Supposed to be two tablespoons full of olive oil, but I like olive oil, so I use a little more. Ain't nothing wrong with that, I guarantee. Put this on high. These lovely ladies who are helping me got this all chopped up for me, isn't that great? Hmm, I guarantee it is. That represents two cups of onions, which it is. Just two cups of onion, we're gonna put that in there and saute that. This is a cup of sweet pepper, bell pepper, some people call it. I call it bell pepper, being from South Louisiana. And a cup of Good old parsley. We're gonna saute this until they're clear, what we call clear. 
Man, that's fine. I'll tell you right now, I never forget, we used to put a cooking show on and we'd put onion, we'd fry a little bacon and put some onions in a skillet and then put some fans back over to blow toward the audience. You talk about, <laughs> man. Everybody go in there and come out there so hungry, they wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. I use a great deal of parsley in cooking. A great many people don't realize that parsley is a, is a very fine seasoning. It really is. And we're gonna saute this a little bit until we are. We've got all kind of goodies we're gonna mix with this. Let me check this and see how she's doing. Yep, she's doing all right. Put a little hot of fire, get her going. Saute, that's a good Cajun word coming from France, all the way plum, you know. <laughs> and the reason we're cooking those eggplants like that is because we want them to get soft enough so we can mash them up. That's what we have to do. We've got to mash those. I'm preheating my ovens over there for the eggplants. It's 350 degrees. It's going to be preheated at uh, 350 degrees. And we're going to put this eggplant in there just as quickly as we can. And it'll take it about 45 minutes to an hour to cook. I would suggest that you make it an hour. Don't, don't mess around with them 45 minutes. That's the best thing to do. Now, this is doing real good here. Let's see what this is doing right here. Not doing as good as I'd like for it to, but it'll do. We'll get it all fixed right. Now, uh, what I can do while this is sauteing, I can uh, work on another casserole and come back to this one and finish it up. I don't know, that's looking right there right now. Hold steady, don't go away. Man, that smells good. <laughs> Just think I'll have a sandwich made out of this right now. Yeah, some of them good garlic bread I got over there, you know. I'll just tell you, this, this looks real good. I'm gonna let it adjust that. She's cooking. She's cooking. See how nice those eggplants come out after they're soaking? They're cubed up pretty small so that you, they will cook quicker. That's what I'm planning on with this. And it's doing it. It's doing all right. This is sauteing real good. Hmm. Fine. Yeah, those bell pepper getting clear. You see by clear, if, I, if the camera can catch this, See that bell pepper right there getting clear? It sure is. And them onion getting clear too. In other words, you think you can see through them, but you can't, they're translucent. That's what, the, what they are, they ain't quite plumb clear, but close enough, I guarantee. But right now, I'm gonna let this go ahead and cook, and I'm going to get my other casserole ready. I think I've got everything right here for it. My Bruxelles, a Brussels sprout, you would call it. Brussels sprout, that's right. Let me move this over closer. Like that, like this. Now, there we go. I got a casserole here, and I'm gonna spray it with pan. Get these Brussels sprout going. While that's sauteing, cooking a little bit over there. Ooh. Spray that with Pam. And then I got to do something that uh, I think everybody ought to do. When you make a casserole, you want to be sure that the sides of your casserole have a little oil on them. So what I do, I just put my hand out in there and rub it on there. That's the only thing to do. <laughs> and I'm sure I got them sides. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm going to them sink there and wrench my hand just at least a little bit. Get that off of them. Yeah, now. I've been sneaking up on you here a little bit, been uh, cooking these Brussels sprouts. Till they're tender. You see there? 
See how pretty those are? Oh, yeah. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna drain those in a colander here. Put it right here where everybody can see that. Now, let them drain just a little, little bit. Then put them over here to where I can put them in here. I'm gonna put a layer. Just put one layer of these little bitty cabbages. That's all they are, little bitty cabbages. You can look at them and tell. Put one little layer of cabbages. This is pretty, it really is. And then we're gonna put a layer of the mother of twin beds, onion. <laughs> it was called the invention of it. Put a layer of this, like that. Whoo, that smells good, yeah. Mm. And then I'm gonna, yeah, I guarantee that's fine. Open up your sciences a little bit. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, I'm gonna put a little salt and pepper. This is cayenne pepper. Now, down where I live, we grow our own. But this is a little bit of cayenne, and it's not... I don't use black pepper except on garlic bread because I found that this is uh, more digestible. In fact, black pepper doesn't, is not digestible, and, and red pepper is. I don't want to put too much because I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. I'm trying to keep them from eating it. But this is uh, a little salt. Spring a little salt on that. Just a little. Now, I use three kinds of cheeses. This is Swiss cheese. Sprinkle a little out. I want to be sure we got enough for each layer. This is Romana. You can use Parmesan if you wish. It's all right. And what it is, about a cup of each. A cup of each kind of cheese is what I have. Good old rat cheese, American cheese is what this is. Oh, this is fine. I guarantee that's good. Now, another layer of them little bitty cabbages is what I got to put on there. Spread out there now. There you go. Put them on the side like that. Yeah, hey. I don't know how we measure that. I think I got uh, a Brussels sprout. I, I think that that's about, um, oh, two pound of Brussels sprout, what I got there. Now, get some more of this beautiful onion that people love to eat and hate to smell. It'll come out just right. I don't know how it does this, I really don't. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Because I never measured anything that good at home, that's for true, I just get after it. <laughs> Look at that, come out just right. Then we're gonna put a little more red pepper. Look good too, that red pepper. Put it down there. Come on, red pepper. Now, a little salt, a little more salt. Not much, just sprinkle a little on there. Cheeses, got to put them cheese on there. Getting with it. Now, got that going there, I guarantee that's pretty. Now to make it look real pretty, you know, we put this cheese last. This good old American rat cheese. And this is going into an oven what's been preheated for 375 degrees, not 350, you know, and you got to cook this about an hour or, you know, the best thing to do is just every once in a while go punch and see if your onions is tender because they take longer to cook than anything else. Right here. Mm-hmm. There we go. 
Now, let me check my eggplant and see how she's doing. Oh, wait a minute. You know I forgot the most important thing. Come back here. Hold steady. Great balls of fire. What you got to do is pour a cup of wine over the whole doggone mess. <laughs> Yay. Ha. Never let it be said that old Justin forget that cup of wine. Mm -mm. Now, let me see how my eggplant is doing. It's doing, but not good enough. We're going to try it. Yay. I'll tell you the truth. I'm glad I don't have to clean up all this right this minute. What I'm going to do, this eggplant is not cooked quite enough. But we're going to drain it and mash it the best we can, which I think will be good enough. Turn it off. Turn it off. And get my colander. We've got to keep this juice. You've got to keep this juice that you uh, cooked this eggplant in because that's got the wine in it. And you've got to use a little of that juice. And I'll leave a little in there, so just see if I can't mash that a little. Yeah, it mash pretty good. I can use something else here better. Use this dough cutter. Yeah. We mash that up pretty good. I'm gonna have to add a little more of that juice back in here, too. You don't want a casserole to be dry, no. And this was not going to be dry. I'm gonna put a little of that juice back in it. That's good. And we're gonna put all our stuff we got going here, saute, we put all that in there. And then we put A teaspoon full of uh, garlic powder. <laughs> There's not much. A teaspoon full of onion powder. There's not much. Whew, you kid. Now we got that. Then we take a teaspoon full of celery salt. That's right, and a teaspoon full of butter-flavored salt. Right there like that. Put that all in there, put a little more of that. <laughs> Look good. Then we put a little bit of this hot sauce, about a teaspoon full. That's about right. A teaspoon full of Worcestershire. Two teaspoons full of Worcestershire. We'll measure that very carefully. <laughs> Two teaspoons full of Worcestershire and one tablespoon full of soy sauce. That's not even a tablespoon. That's doing all right, though. That's good. Now, what we do, got all that going there. That's good. I think about everything in there. I got two eggs. Mmm. I'm gonna beat those eggs, but before I do, I'm gonna stir this. Stir this up. And then you fold your eggs in. You don't, you don't stir them, you fold them in there. Which is just like this. And then we put this in a casserole after we put our shrimp and our tuna, a cup of shrimp and a cup of tuna is all that is. And you fold that in there, too. You put this in a casserole. And it comes out 
looking like I'm gonna show you right now. I'm gonna put it in the casserole a little later, but I've got some fixed already over here. Whew, you talk about fine. Mmm, a little wine. A little eggplant casserole. Whoo, you kid. Isn't that pretty? A little bit of this good old, how you call, Bruxelles sprout casserole, if I don't spill it. Which I may do, it's all right. My casserole. <laughs> and, uh, whoo, boy, that smells good. Ah, mm, mm, I'm telling you right now, that's fine. I tell you for true, that is real good. And we have here a little garlic bread to go with this. It's in it real good stuff, too. This casserole comes out real good. You cook it just about, oh, I would say, an hour. That's better. And I want to taste it to see whether I'm telling you the truth or not. I ain't about to tell you a word of lie. Hold steady. That's mine. I guarantee that's mine. I'll tell you for true. Mm, mm. Man, man, man. That's one of those little bitty cabbages right there. Bruce L. Sprout. You ever see them grow? They grow in little clusters. They really do. They're fine. Now, take a knife and cut this um, onion up. See if it was done or not. It is. It's done. But it took it a little better than an hour, I've got to be honest with you. It takes a little better than an hour. It really does. Now, that's fine. That is really good. Oh, boy. Now remember all those ingredients I put in that, that eggplant. Don't forget the tuna. Don't forget the shrimp. A lot of people ask me, say, you mean tell me you cook, make tuna casseroles all the time? We've got things down in South Louisiana that don't have other places. today I guarantee I'm glad for you to see me and today we're gonna have a shrimp and macaroni casserole I'm gonna fix that and we're gonna haul off there and then make a brown rice pudding I have made one of those in a long time and I'm gonna pass a good time doing it again I guarantee and the first thing we're gonna do is a shrimp and macaroni casserole I want to tell you everything that's in this a pound and a half of macaroni four teaspoons full of salt that I used to boil the shrimps, you know? A tablespoon full of onion powder I used to boil the shrimps. A teaspoon full of garlic powder I used that to boil the shrimps. Two tablespoons full of olive oil. That's just to make it go down easy, you know? <laughs> A quarter teaspoon full of cayenne pepper. Two pounds of shrimp. It, it had a hull on them, and we, then we peeled them after we, we boiled them real good and two tablespoons full of Louisiana hot sauce. Now, I'm gonna mix all those ingredients together here right now, right in this little bowl I got here. This is the macaroni, come out there. Don't act like you're gonna do that. My hands are clean, wipe it. <laughs> oh, that made a good sound. I got a spoon specially fixed for mixing here. Let's get mixed up, because they ain't gonna go any good looking like that, I'll tell you for true. 
about to run out of casserole dishes or making casseroles. And you know, I love a casserole. It, it's delicious, it really is. Oh, man. Now, I'll tell a story if I ever think of one. <laughs> I'll think of one, I'll bet you. <laughs> Get the motion, you know, you got it made then. Now, into this, I'm gonna mix with the shrimps. Come here. The devil tried to hide, but I got him. Get in there. Now, and this is a pound, two pounds of shrimp, peeled and de-veined. <laughs> that's, that's wasting shrimp to me, I'll tell you the truth. Put that in there just like that. Now, I got to mix you all up together so you look pretty when I put you in that casserole. And we bake that casserole 350 degrees for one hour. That's just to get everything together. I'm not through and put something else in here. Don't you worry none. Into this, I'm gonna put one 16 ounce bottle of mild picante sauce. Mm. Oh boy, it's gonna be good. This smells good and it's just raw as hell. I mean, it ain't cooked good yet. It's, it's raw as hell. All right, into this, I'm gonna put this 16 ounces of picante sauce. Let's get in there, isn't that pretty? And I mean, I got to get it all in there if I'm gonna get 16 ounces. Put that in here like that. Put this over here like that so it won't be in my way when I move this to put this in this casserole. I'm on, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grease that casserole with a little olive oil as soon as I get this mixed the way I want it to look. Mmm, mm, now that does smell good, real good. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I love shrimps and I love macaroni, pasta and I eat pasta too much sometimes. Then I don't eat for a while, you know how it is. I've lost 285,000 pounds in my lifetime. <laughs> Not dieting, just quitting eating, that's the only thing to do. Now that looks good, I don't care. Now as you stand, let's order the casserole. What do you say to that? We can do that, come here, go here, olive oil. I've got all the seasoning in this that I need to have. I got to put that oven on at 350 degrees. Now I'm gonna put about a tablespoon full of olive oil in there, maybe a tablespoon full and a half, I doubt, seriously, but it looks like about a tablespoon full. And I'm gonna roll it around in there like I know what I'm doing. Come here to me. That's a heavy casserole. Now I'm gonna put this in there. Oh, mix it. Yeah. Quit now, y'all ain't divorced, stay together. <laughs> All right. Get over here close, baby. You get over close too. Now I'm gonna put this in here. If it don't all go in there, I won't put it all in there too, yeah? I'll eat it just like it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be good in the way you wanna try it. All right, now let's go in. It's gonna all go in there, I think, I hope. I don't know, can't ever tell about that kind of thing. Got a good story to tell you after a while, but I ain't ready to do it. It hadn't all come back to me. Then be dropping that shrimps and they'll have to take stove apart to get you to eat you. No. Ambiguous, either hand don't make any difference. Yeah, come on, let's get in there. But I got to make some, some brown rice pudding. And get that in the oven alongside of you as soon as I can, which is right quick, that's for true. Better start hurrying. I'm hurrying. You don't look like you're hurrying to me. Well, you don't know about hurrying. All kind of hurrying. You know I'm gonna get that all in there? I don't know how I'm doing it, but I'm gonna get it all in there. 
Ain't that nice? Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want every one of you to get in there so I won't be lying. Got it. Now spread it out real nice, and I leave the top off of that, supposed to. I think I can. I think I'll put the top back on. No, I'm not. I got to put that oven on 350. I thought I did that earlier, and I did. Put this thing down like this. Come on, baby, let's go in the oven just like y'all. Don't that look pretty? <laughs> It is pretty. Get in that 350 oven, baby, and cook up a storm. Now, that's supposed to cook for about an hour. And I'll let it cook an hour. I'm not going to uh, interfere with it. I'll tell you that for true. Now, right here, we'll put that there so I can put that there. And I got to move this recipe and put it under the one I'm fixing to get with right now. Brown rice pudding. And what I got to do now, I have combined, I'm going to combine wine, honey, vanilla, and cinnamon. I'm gonna move this, or swap places where you probably just move it out of the way. And you come over here where I can get with you. This is the part that I'm gonna put in here. It said combine the wine, honey, vanilla, and cinnamon in a medium-sized saucepan. Now that's the saucepan. It looks like a pot to me, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> Heat slowly over low fire. And put the wine in. It says combine the wine. Now that is good Chablis. When I first started this series 28 years ago, I used Sauterne. It was a nice, nice wine. And uh, you can't even buy sauterne now. They do sauterine, they tell some people call it, but it's sauterne to me. The wine and the honey. Honey, 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 honey. <laughs> oh, you got to stay like that because I'm gonna get every video out of there that I can. Honey, I love honey. I never will forget to, and I was told by a man Bees won't sting if you'll hold your breath. I got blue in the face and they still stung the hell out of me. <laughs> and that's the last time I tried to rob a beehive, whether it was mine or anybody else. Hmm. <laughs> ah, good honey. Vanilla. I got another spoon where I can get all this vanilla out. That's a teaspoonful of vanilla. It barely is, you know. Vanilla extract. Got you. Okay. Now I got some cinnamon. I got to put a fire on it as much as I hate to do it to it, but I'm going to. Let's see if I can get the right one. Nope. I never do get the right one. There I go and put that on low. Put the cinnamon in there like this. I like cinnamon. If it's fixed right, some cinnamon can get awful hot, you know, and burn your throat if you don't look out. Now I got to stir, and I got to get that honey off my hand, too. That's how come I always carry a little dish towel where you're supposed to hang a hammer. And I'm not gonna do any comb to work. Got most of it off. I stir this to make it to make it go just right. Mm -hmm. I treat it so tender, you notice that? <laughs> I got to eat slowly over low fire till the honey resolves itself, you know. Just about to do it. Hadn't quite done it, but it's doing it. See there. Get that just like I like it, right there. Now I can add two cup, two cup of, of raisin, you know. 
right there like that. All right, raise hand. Just get, get rid of each other. We've got to separate them. Hate to do you that, but we got to. Hand stir it. And that's a low fire. But on a good stove like this, a low fire ain't low enough sometimes. You got to put it on a simmer. I'm not going to do that. Just let this cook just like that. It's doing good, so why mess with it? Huh. I got four eggs, four extra large eggs there. Then I got to beat the hell out of in just a minute. And while this is cooking, I'm going to just beat the daylights out of it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Four eggs. Let's get them started good. <clears throat> Now they beat, they beat pretty good. Now, I've already buttered this casserole pan, pot, whatever you want to call it. And I'm gonna put this all in there in just a minute. What are you doing in there? Got him. <laughs> I got a preheated oven. 325 degrees, but I got it on 350 right now. I'm gonna cut it back when I put this in there. You do that until it's brown. It's already brown rice, but it's not brown enough. Okay, now we got to let this go ahead. You, you're cooking just right. Don't act smart, do what you're doing right. Gun is resolved, the raisins are separated from each other. And yes, they are. And what I got to do, I pour the honey and wine mixture over the rice and combine. That's it, combine in a butter nine by 12, that's what that is, nine by 12 baking pan, then pour in the pudding mixture. Well, you better come over here, partner, if I'm gonna pour you in here because I need to have you. There I go, put you right here in the way. I want to do this exactly like I wrote it years ago, but I haven't cooked this in 30 years, that's true. Put that behind, yeah. Then for, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna combine the rice. And I can cut them egg there. Beat the egg in, in real well and combine with the rice in a large mixing bowl. That ain't large enough. But I'm gonna use it anyhow. It's eight cups. Eight cups of cooked brown rice. Look, you can get in there. We're gonna see right now. If it's not, I got another bowl backing me up right over there, see? Okay, come here, rice. Eight cups. Yes, sir. My hands are clean. Let me cook it anyhow, but I like for my hands to be clean. Got to combine it with the egg like this. Mm-hmm. Come on, on every grain of rice. And I cook that just like I do my, any rice I'm cooking. Now I got to combine this with that egg. Three, four eggs, four great big eggs. Big enough to be a double okra, but there wasn't not a double okra in there. I love double yolk eggs, I call them double okra. Mm, mm. Now we're going, man, you got this thing just about where you want it. And I got to turn that fire off, is what I got to do. Ooh. And put you in this little old casserole dish I got here. That's what it says to do. Combine them two and put them in there and then pour the pudding mixture over that. Well, that ain't bad to do. Justin Wilson's easy cooking. If it ever was easy, this is it. Only thing to it, you got to chop all this stuff up and get it ready. And you get it ready, though, it's easy cooking. <laughs> easy as it can be. Now, eggs and rice, you look like you're mixed up enough to me. I'm gonna put you in this deal right this minute. 
I don't want to put any of it on the table, just on you. I'm going to do that, too. Mm -hmm. Come out of that. Come out of that. Now it's going just right. Mm -hmm. I spilled three grains of rice. Isn't that terrible? I'm going to put them right in here. Get in there. Two. Quit dripping off in there. That makes five. <laughs> Got it. Look at that, man. I can't stood that. I'm going to put you right back in there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now what I got to do is pour this over this. As much of it as I can. Get this right like, real nice like, you know. I'll wipe you up later. All right, here we go. Boy, that smells good. I guarantee that smells good. <laughs> Got to get this way out and pour this mixture of it. And put it in that oven. And let it bake for a while. All right, Judson. Spread these little old. Now nah, you're looking right. Spread the raisins nice like I'm doing it. So everybody can get a raisin and don't get left out. I'll get mad at him if somebody leaves me out in here. Mmm. Put that look good. I want you to know it's gonna taste good. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now, boy, I spilled some on there. Isn't that terrible? Oh, boy. All right, let's just go in the oven where you belong. But first of all, I'm going to wipe this off. I don't want it to go in the oven. No siree. Nothing there. That'll burn. Smell up the house. Oven, open yourself up, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Get down there. I said, get down there now. Don't that look good? That is good. I want you to know. And you're gonna taste it. I hope some of y'all. Put this on 325 now. I'm gonna go over here and sit down. I'm gonna clean it up later, don't worry. <laughs> sit down and I'll taste this stuff to see if it's worth eating. Always taste. When I cook, I got to taste. That's for truth. Let me move this out of my way. Simplest way to move it, put something in it, you know. Aye, aye, aye. I got some brown rice pudding and I got some shrimp and pasta casserole. And I'm gonna tell you all the story before I take the first bite of this. Let's go in there. That looks good enough to eat. Yes, it does. Now just put the dessert right in here, because you know it's kids like to eat our dessert first. <laughs> <laughs> eat the ice cream before it melts, you know. And now what I want to do, I want to tell you a story about an old Cajun who lived in the country way in the country, in the marsh. He hadn't been to town but three or two times in his life, I don't reckon. And he was married. And uh, I'm gonna take a sip of this water. Some of that macaroni got stuck there. And he and his wife lived alone. There in his, and he, he hunted and fished for a living. And she'd take it to the nearest settler and send it on to town. But they never went to town. They didn't have any reason to go to town. They had everything they needed. They raised everything they needed, caught everything they needed, or killed everything they needed. And they were happy. And one day, one of these traveling tink, tinker salesmen came by there with his wagon and his mule. And uh, the man that owned the place went out and said, well, I don't need a thing. I don't think I need a thing. His wife is going, going to 
helped deliver a baby that was being born by at a neighbor's house. And he, he said, the tinker says, where's your wife? He says, she's gone. Well, he said, come on out here and I'll show you a few things you most probably never saw before and the things you will enjoy seeing. He said, can't you see an old man? Come on out here, I want to show you some things. And he showed him all kind of stuff. He'd pull off that wagon, show him this and show him that, and just really get the old fella interested in something. And he pulled out a mirror. And that old man had never seen a mirror in his life. I guarantee. So he showed him the mirror. Then he looked at that mirror and he said, I'll be damned. That's a picture of my old pappy. Car, dog. I guarantee I got to have this picture. And the tinker man kept hearing him talk about that picture of his pappy. He said, uh, would you like to buy that picture? Oh, yes, I'd love to. How much it is, old tinker man? I said, $10, $10. I got to go and see if I can find some money in the house. So he went where he knew his wife would hide the money in the sugar bowl. And he took $10 out of that. Went back out there, excuse my nose, that athletic run every now and then. <laughs> and uh, I took, he took that $10 out there and he paid the man. You know, he said, man, I'm glad to get this. Well, the tinker said, thank you, certainly. I'm glad you got it. And he left, because he knew he better leave. He left, and the man didn't want his wife to see what he spent her $10 on. So he went into the barn, and in the hayloft there, he hid his picture underneath some hay. And he, he left it there. The next day, he went out there. She came home that night. The next day, he'd go out there, and he'd look at it every now and then, talk about his old pappy. He kept it up for about a week, sneaking out there and pulling that picture out from underneath the hay and taking a look at his old pappy. And his wife got kind of suspicious, you know? So she went out there and found out what he was doing. She saw where he reached underneath that hay. So she reached underneath there when he left and pulled that mirror out and looked at it and says, well, that's the old hussy you've been messing around with. <laughs> Let me taste this. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, this is good, yeah. Shrimp and macaroni. Let me eat a little bit of that good. I might have to get a spoon for this. Ooh, oh, yeah. I'm going to make some more of this, and I ain't going to wait no more 30 years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> A swiller, that's a half a swallow. <laughs>
tea and that garlic bread. Whew, it goes with most everything, I, and I double guarantee that, too. Hmm. I cooked both of those breads on a show for Mississippi Educational TV more than 20 years ago. Won't you join me in looking back at the show and breads, huh? How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. Now, you know, us Cajuns in South Louisiana, we cook all kinds of things. There ain't no question about that. Nutria and everything like that. Mush rat, alligator tail, anything in the world we cook. A lot of main dishes. But whenever we cook that, we got to also, too, have something to go with that, like bread, garlic bread, hush puppy, cornbread, rolls, things like that. We always like to cook something good. You know, whenever I mention bread, I can't help but talk about that little seven-year-old boy who never said a word. He's seven-year-old, and he had never spoke one time. And his mama worried like the devil about him. They sent him to all kind of doctor, and they check his ear. He can hear all right, but he don't said something, not a word. Not one single solitary word. And one morning, they were eating breakfast, and he's seven year old. And he looked up and he said, this doggone toast, toast is burned like the devil, I guarantee you. Well, man, his mama did a hand sprung. His papa grabbed the little boy and most squeezed the life out of him. They're so proud he can talk. And after about five or four minutes of that hand sprung and all that kind of stuff, the mama said, son, we're so glad you can talk. How come you didn't said something before? He's here up to now, everything's been okay. <laughs> well, up to now, everything's been okay, but we're gonna make some garlic bread for you right now. And it's real easy to make. But we make it. Oh, wait, let me get me a knife here where I can slice that bread. I think I found one here that I can do that with you. Yeah. Now, you notice here that I got a garlic press and some garlic. This is a clove of garlic. That's a clove. I got a garlic press here. I put that on there like that. <coughs> press it on. I don't want to lose any of that because it's all good. Put it back in there like that and put another clove. You put as much garlic as you would like, this is all according to taste, you know, it doesn't make any difference. Just so you put what you like in there. I don't want to took too much time pressing. I just wanted to be sure I could show you how to press garlic. And, and when you clean your garlic press, you be sure that you get all of it out of there. It usually leaves a little film. And when you clean that, you get that film out. Because if you don't, your garlic gonna taste bitter the next time you press some in there. And that's enough of that. And I got some already here. I might just well put that on now. Like that. Ooh, boy. This is, uh, you walk by your neighbor's house, they can tell you had garlic bread, I'll guarantee. Now, you notice that I'm just mixing that up. I'm getting that mix up like that. In here, I've got about a cup of, uh, Romano cheese, grated Romano cheese. I want to get that garlic over there because that's too good to chunk away. I'm going to put some of this Romano cheese. You put as much as you like. Now, I like cheese. I'm not going to put this full cup in there, but I'm going to put most of it in there and mix it up real carefully with my butter and garlic that I already have in here. I want to keep it spreadable. That's the main thing. And you notice, too, that I had my garlic, my, my butter, that is, out here. I didn't melt it. I don't like to melt my butter because I like to spread it on my bread. So I don't know how much I'm putting, and I, I think it tastes better when it melts on the bread in the oven. I guarantee I do. Now, black pepper. Now, I don't use a great deal of black pepper in my cooking, but I always put black pepper in my garlic bread. Now, I use peppercorns because I think that the pepper's a little fresher, and you get bigger chunks of it than you do ground red pepper, and it gives it a good flavor. Now, you put this according to taste, too. Some people like a lot of black pepper. Some people don't like much. I just like enough to flavor. 
And that's what I'm putting in there right now, enough to flavor that. And lay that down, because I know I'm gonna knock it off if I don't. You can see the black pepper in there a little bit. Now I got to haul off there and slice this bread lengthwise. Now I slice it lengthwise because I'm gonna spread it on that, and then we break bread. We like to break bread down in our country. It's a sign of friendship. Ooh, boy, that went easy. Now I'm gonna spread that on the bread. And it looks like I've got too much, but I don't have. It'll come out about even. It's a little bit left over, just spread it. Tick, put it on there, a lot of it there, because it's gonna taste good, I can guarantee. Ooh-wee, that opened your sciences up real good, you know that? <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, oh, boy. I think I'll take a bite of that now. I would, but I better not did it right this second. Well, it look good. Hmm. I tell you, that's broken up by many a courtship, though. <laughs> 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 Guarantee. <laughs> Well, I'll be glad when I get this did because I'm gonna eat some of that, I'll tell you for sure. Mm. I put a lot of this because I want it to soak in the bread because it tastes so good when it's soaked in there like that. It's kind of thin right there. Might just as well, ooh wee. Mmm, that smells good. Mm. Now I put this back on here like this. You notice I didn't cut this bread. Some people choo, 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 cut it that way so it broke easy. But I don't, I don't want it to broke easy. I want to have conversation with them people that broken that bread with me. <laughs> we close it real good and tight. And we're gonna put it on the oven. Now that oven, about 350, I think I got that on now. Yeah, 350. Ah, now, we'll leave it in there about 15 or 20 minutes, and it's real good eating when we take it out of there, I guarantee <laughs> Oh, you kid. Got my sciences open real bad. Now, I'm gonna start on and make you some hush puppies. And some of these days, I'm gonna get a bigger tray, I'll tell you that for sure. Get all this where I can get at it. You know, I was, not long ago, I was at the, the first Southern Hush Puppy Olympics. Hush Puppy Olympics. <laughs> in Lufkin, Texas. And I'll tell you for sure, ladies and gentlemen, you never saw something like that before again in your life. <laughs> These people brought their recipes, secret recipes. They had not given to anybody, were not about to give anybody. One man came up there with a box, and I said, what you got on that? He said, my recipe. I said, what's in the box? He said, rattlesnake, he gonna look after that. <laughs> and I look up and I hear a syringe going full blast. It's a police car escorting a big black limousine with some people in black hats, black suits, one behind there, shotgun guards all around it. Look like the Godfather's all coming in there, you know? And I say, what's going on? And get out of that car and they got a great big lock box with a chain on it and a combination lock. They got a banker to open that for them. That's their secret recipe. <laughs> One man um, brought his dog to taste his recipe and the dog wouldn't eat it. <laughs> that tickled me to death. And the mayor of Lufkin, a good friend of mine named Garrison, he brought a taster with him too. And I thought it looked around for his dog, but it was a 
half-grown lion cub, a lady was holding her arms for him to give his hush puppy to for him, that lion to try out. And I had my picture took with him because I, I wanted to have that did. Now, that's a cup of yellow cornmeal. A uh, half a cup of flour. Get this over a little closer with me where I won't have to stretch myself. We're going to haul off there now and put a teaspoonful of baking powder. Don't want to put too much. Mine is so light already, I have to put the lid on the pot to keep them from flying out when they're frying. And about a teaspoonful of salt. Now, remember this about salt. Salt is, is salt according to people's taste, actually. Now, uh, if I was making this for just me, I'd put more than a teaspoonful of salt. I want to see if I still measure right. Yeah, that is. And uh, we got a little soda here. I'm going to use buttermilk. And when you use buttermilk, you better use soda because I'm going to put about a half a teaspoonful of soda. If I was home, I'd just put three pinches in there. It would amount to the same thing, a half a teaspoon. Now, in, the, in, in my cookbook, it does not have garlic powder. But this is a secret I'm going to give to you, this garlic powder, about a half a teaspoonful of garlic powder, instant garlic powder. And then another little secret that we, don't, we didn't put in the cookbook. Forgot it. Be truthful, will you? We put some onion salt on that, about a half a teaspoon of that. We put that on there, and then another little secret. You stir all your dry ingredients together real good to where it all looks like yellow cornmeal. Now, people ask me, say, how come you use yellow cornmeal? I like yellow cornmeal. <laughs> That's how come I use yellow cornmeal. And it, it seemed to come out more better. That's how come. I'll guarantee. And he mixed that real good. Be sure and did that because uh, you can mix this up dry and just put it in your refrigerator and leave it and then put your wet ingredients, your eggs and your buttermilk in there when you get ready to make it. You don't make it in, but don't wet it. And your, your shallot. Got to put some shallot on that, green onion. Oh, boy. Now, you notice I make a little hole now to put my egg. Now I'm gonna beat this egg pretty good. Speaking of egg, I got a friend named Travis Lobel that got an egg farm. And several years ago, he was diversifying himself and he had some lamb. He had some lamb that, that their mama rejected, wouldn't took them, so they brought them to the house and they had a couple of puppy dogs, cattle dogs. Oh boy. And they put those little lamb with those dogs, and those, those lamb never did think they were lamb. They thought they were dogs. They ate dog food with them, and then people would come through the yard on bicycle, and those little dogs would chase them, broop, 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 and the lamb right along with them, chasing them bicycle just because they thought they were puppy dogs. And uh, pretty soon, automobiles come by, and they chase the automobiles. <laughs> And I tell you, I asked old Travis what happened to that lamb one day. He said he had to get rid of him. I said, how come? He said he started killing the sheep. <laughs> you know, as I put that egg, one egg that I beat, I beat the daylight out of them eggs. Be real hard. And I start to blend it in with my cornmeal. Now I've got a cup of, corn, of uh, buttermilk in this pitcher. And I don't put it all in there at once because I may not need it. It depends on the moon and everything else, I reckon. <laughs> or what consistency you like to drop you hush puppy into you uh, deep fat. But about three quarters of a cup to a cup it'll take, I know that. And you mix that real good. Put that on there real good. Now I use buttermilk because it makes a better hush puppy. And when I'm at home, I'll tell you this too. And I can get them, I use duck eggs instead of hen eggs to make my hush puppies because they seem to make better hush puppies. I don't know how come them old duck did it, but they do. <laughs> I guarantee, and that's just about to get right. That's still just a little too stiff. I take about four or three drops of them buttermilks, put them on there real careful. 
Now, look at that. Don't that fine. Now, I'll get this mix up. I got some green onions, some shallot. I'm gonna put that on there. And stir that in real good, too. Hmm. That got my scientists open up, too, them green onion, huh? Tell you for sure. Now, you see how pretty that is? That's just about right. Not too loose, not too tight. You don't want it too stiff, because if you do, now, I use a teaspoon to drop my hush puppy mix into the uh, deep fat. And this deep fat fryer, I've got this deep fat about halfway up. Now, this hush puppy, you know where the name comes from? Years ago, the old hunters used to come in from the hunt and they'd have the dog and they'd brag about what they had missed and what they had shot, you know. And they were busy trying to get rested and cook up a storm and have a few beer or drink or something, ale. And the dogs would get hungry, and they would smell all that food cooking, and they'd start burp, 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 raising the sand out there. And they say, look, we got did something about that. So they mixed up some cornmeal and like this and made some hush puppy. And they'd chunk them out there, and them dogs say, hush puppy. <laughs> and that's where the name come from, hush puppy. <laughs> that's true, I guarantee. Now, we're going to put these on there. And I use my finger to brush this out with. Ooh, we. Somebody asked me, say, how many uh, will this uh, make? And I make small batches of hush buppers at a time. Uh, let me tell you that. If you uh, make too much, it doesn't come out right. I don't know exactly why. I think that it rises too much and your baking powder gets weak or something. But this is about the size batch that I make. And out at the hush puppy Olympics, I made five different batches and cooked five different batches. So they come out the same all the time, and they do. They come out the same. And somebody asked me, say, how many does a, does a batch like that make? I say, how long is a piece of string? <laughs> Depends on the size of your doggone hush puppies. <laughs> how long it, how many are you gonna sit there? How long does it take till they're done? That's how long it takes. <laughs> Look at that, ooh, that's pretty, yeah. I guarantee, ooh, boy. Man. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, when I think about this bread, I mentioned you were going to have some kind of bread. Uh, there was a Yankee from way up north, around Shreveport, you know? <laughs> and he would drove a truck, and he'd come by a big truck stop that say, we got meat for any kind of sandwich that you want. We got it right here. You brought yourself in, and we got the meat for the sandwich. If we don't got the meat for the sandwich, what you order, we give you a brand new $10 bill. <laughs> Man, this Yankee went in there smart aleck, you know. He went in there and he say, to this cute little female girl, lady waitress, women that come by there say, she said, what can I did for you? He said, give me an elephant, yeah, a sandwich. She said, what you said? He said, give me an elephant, yeah, a sandwich. She said, just a minute. And she went back in the back, and she came back in about four or three minutes. She said, I'm sorry, but I can't serve you that elephant ear sandwich today. He said, well, give me my $10, and I'm gonna be gone. You ain't got the meat to serve that. Ho, oh, ho, she said, yeah, we got the meat all right, but we done run out of them great big buns what we served that on. <laughs> Look at them hush puppy cook. Ooh-wee. Man. Got to cook all day. that pretty? I think so. I guarantee. And good, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm. That came out just even. Put that over there. Ain't that cute? Man. Now, you got to turn these every now and this is where the fun comes in. Try to get them to stay over. <laughs> Come on there, you. That really works. Sometimes. And I've seen the time when I just called it everything it was and then some other things too. 
because it would not work. Hmm. Does not take hush puppies long to cook, and you cook them in about 350 to 375 because you want the center done. There's nothing worse, I don't think, in a hush puppy, except maybe raw fish. You, write, you bite into fish that's fried so pretty brown on the outside, and it's raw in the middle, whoo! Well, the next worst thing, I think, is to get a hush puppy that's raw in the middle. So you cook them slow, and you come out pretty and brown and done, just like that right now. And that's done, too, I guarantee. And I'll tell you right now, that look good. I'll tell you one more little bit there on this one here, and it'll be done. Oh, got the turn one. He didn't turn for me. There he is. <laughs> one more there, acting up. Now. Got to take this out. That's pretty. I'm going to turn these fires off. <coughs> Put this right here and take a look at my garlic bread. Whoo, that's hot, yeah. Now, that's what we got. Ah. Take it out of this. Oh, that's pretty, yeah. And put it on my bread tray. Look at that. Oh, you kid. That's beautiful, I guarantee. We're gonna take this over here. Hmm. Put that there like that. Get this way, I can get at it because I may want to taste one of that. I guarantee. <laughs> we now we gonna broke them bread. I guarantee. It toasted so nice and hot. <laughs> I guarantee. Uh, this is a little Beaujolais wine. Beaujolais. It's a. Uh, it's a dinner wine, and it's not sweet. People ask me all the time, say, how do I choose my wine? What do I do? Well, I say, you know, wine is kind of like the woman you marry. You don't marry somebody you don't like, no. You choose a wine that you like. And if you like it, drink it. It doesn't make any difference. And I got a story I want to tell you when I'm doing this. I want to taste this first. Mmm, mm, that's fine. Mm, I guarantee. I got a friend at the state police in Louisiana. And on the long holiday weekends, the state police in Louisiana, they work 12 hours on, 12 hours off, all days off, I can't everybody got to work. And this friend with me, he worked on last Labor Day weekend, 12 hours, Friday night, and they give him a brand new petroleum car, put a brand new red light on that, and a brand new syringe, brand new radar, brand new radio, everything brand new. And he got off at eight o'clock on Saturday morning, and he stopped at a combination restaurant barroom saloon, and he going there to get himself a cup of coffee, and one of his friends in there, and he ordered this from his cute little female girl, lady waitress, women say, give me a cup of coffee. His friend said, oh, man, don't drink that. Drink a beer with me. He said, I can't. I'm in uniform. He said, take it all. He said, OK, I'll be right back. So he went home and he left them petroleum car and he took off his uniform and he came back and he drank beer with his friend till about 11, 30 in the morning. He said, look, I got to go get myself some rest because I got to go out again tonight at 8 o'clock. He said, you go home too? He said, OK. So he went home and he slept till 6, 30. His wife woke him up and gave him breakfast, dinner, and supper all at the same time. And uh, he went out and got on that interstate, and about 10 o'clock at night, he's on a straight stretch. He said, I'm gonna catch some of them devil speed now, I guarantee. Hoo-hoo, boy, I'm gonna get them. 
So he's pull on his shoulder and he fix himself real good there, get his radar just right, and he look on the rearview mirror, here come one zoom down the highway, and he look on the radar 97 mile an hour. And he noticed them headlights getting more bright in his automobile, and he look on his mirror some more. He say, that fool on the shoulder with me, he gonna hit me. <laughs> and he rolled down in front and cover his head real good, and bloom, he hit him, knock him about four, 300 feet, and he heard that other car, blickety, 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 turning over, he said, he must all be dead in there. When the car came to a dead still, he got out and he run back there. And when he get there, the steam rolled everywhere, and the car laying on its side, and that door pushed itself open, and there's his friend, what he drank beer with that morning, he looked at that policeman cop. He said, how in the world did you get here this quick? This wreck just happened. <laughs> I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee. I talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. And today, we're gonna cook a pork loin and pork backbone with turnips. Man, you talk about good. Do you even think about that? It makes me want to start eating it right now without putting anything on it, but I got to put something on it. What I'm gonna put on here is some garlic powder, some salt, and cayenne pepper, and then I'm gonna pour just about a half a cup of wine and a half a cup of water around there, water around there. First of all, go to a little garlic powder, just a little. We kind of, we sprinkle it on there very lightly, you know. Let's get on there right. And we're gonna bake this. We start it off at 350, put it in the oven with an oven at 350 degrees, preheated oven. And then, I got to pat that on there. You, know? yeah, you ain't gonna do like that. That's that side. Then I put salt. Just sprinkle salt on it. Not too much, but enough. And we'll pat that too. Now we'll put some cayenne red pepper on that. It looks like a lot, but it's not. Just enough, really and truly. Now I got to pat that on there. And I got to turn these over and do the same thing again on the other side, see that? With the fat side up, that's the way I like to cook them anyhow, with the fat side up. You know what? I got to rinse my hand. Thank goodness I got that little pot of water handy. <laughs> with that red pepper can get awful hot on your hands, particularly if you reach up to your eyes. Mm. Now, put that right there. Do the same thing some more. Garlic powder, just lightly, you know. And that good fine garlic powder. Salt. See, I'm not gonna pat this on this side. I know how much I'm putting on there. Worry not about that. Cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper's good for you. You know, black pepper, nothing but wood. Did you know that? Nothing but wood, but I like the taste of it. I don't cook with it, though. It doesn't cook good. Now, into here now, not on it, but on that side, 
And down here on this side, we pour the mixture of water. I got to dry my hand and get that, be sure I don't have that red pepper on there. Put that over here out of my way. And put the lid on this. And that's all it goes on. This is what you call easy cooking. I'm gonna put this in this oven. It's preheated at 350 degrees, and then I'm gonna lower it to 325 or 320, whatever I want, depending on how long I want it to cook. And it cooks quickly, cooks easy. Here, let's go. All right, now, partner's going that oven without any, without any arguing or anything like that. And it generally minds me pretty good. Get in there and go to cooking. And in just a little while, I'll lower that. I got to put this out of my way because it's in my way. And what I'm gonna do is just put it over here. Put you over there. There you got it. I don't think I'll need this either. Put these over there. If I need you, I know where you are. I can find you. No worry not. Now I'm going to fix backbone and turnips. A wonderful dish, believe me. I know a man that I could call him right now, no matter where he was, what he's doing. He'd quit his job to come eat backbone and turnips. I got in here now. I've got about uh, let's see in this pot. I got to get all that in there, and I'm going to. I'm gonna put two tablespoons full of olive oil in there to be sure nothing burns. That's how you do it. Two tablespoons full. I got my recipe right here. I'll keep it so I'll, I'll be doggone. You got to act like that. Now you got you. See, I'm ambidextrous, ambiguous. Got it. It said two tablespoons, didn't it? Sure did. Exactly two tablespoons. Be willing to bet. Got to put a fire under that now. Got to be sure I get the right one. Let's see. Never do get the right fire. I want to put that on a medium fire, like that. Get on there so you even. Now you even. Now into this, I'm gonna put. Three cups of, of chopped onion. Good, sweet onion. I love onion. Make an onion sandwich every time I get a chance. And two cups of chopped green onion. Like them onion. Let me put this out of my way so that I can stir this properly. There you go in there. Sing a song. Mm. Then I put about a cup of bell pepper, not quite a cup. I don't think it's a, it's a cup and a half, it's a. It look like a cup and a half, all right. Huh? Let's get out of there now. Let's don't mess with my hands are clean. Except for a little red pepper. Then I put some celery. A cup of celery, chopped celery. And I stir. You hear that pot, don't you? I hear it. I guarantee I hear it. Stay still there. Now you stay still. But so that's the very thing, dangerous thing I did. I very rarely do it. I generally have a pot holder. And I got one handy right here, right now, in case I need it. But I, you could catch that damn dish towel on, on fire very easily with these fires, you know that. Now I'll put a full cup of, I think that's a cup and a half of chop. It's a cup of parsley. Just, that's a good cup, though, I'll guarantee. Oh, yeah. And I stir. Come here, boy. Oh, 
Let's throw it to you, but I, I, can't, I can't do two things at once. I can walk and chew gum, but I got to always be sure I got all this stuff in you. Now, that I put in there with the parsley. I'm going to put uh, two tables, two teaspoons. Now, those are big teaspoons. Mm-hmm, that's garlic. Two teaspoons full of garlic powder. Stir, man. Don't mess it around. Stir that garlic powder into that real good. Now, it looks like a lot of trouble, but it's not, because this cooks a long time, and it can, it can make a meal by itself. And the backbones I love. Now, into that, I got to put some peanut butter melted in two cups of boiling water. That's what this is. See that right there? That's peanut butter melted in boiling water, and it tastes good. I love peanut butter in there. Oh, man. Whew. Let's stir that in there as you stand, because that's going to help improve the taste of anything, I guarantee. Can y'all smell this? I can. Now into this, I got to put, I'm going to put a cup of, well, no, I'm not, we'll put a cup and a half of Sun Sweet Lighter Bake, and it's delicious stuff. It's sweet and nice, but not too sweet. It, this won't be like a, a jelly roll. It's gonna be good pork meat cooked with all these delicious vegetables. And with this sun sweet lighter bake, it helps make a good gravy. I'll tell you that for true. And I got to stir that in there too. Man, this thing gonna be done before I'm ready to eat it, you know what? Better hurry up then. Oh, wee. See that thing nearly caught on fire? It wasn't, thought it was. Now into that, I'm gonna put a cup of dry white wine. People worry about me forgetting about my wine. I don't ever worry about that. I'll get it in there every time I cook. I cook with wine for just one reason, believe it or not, two reasons. I think it enhances the flavor, but better than that, it takes all the bitterness out of onion, bell pepper, sweet onion, anything like that. It takes the bitterness out of it, and that helps. Anything I can't stand is bitter, bitter food. Oh, man. Y'all looking good and smelling good. <laughs> now, I'll taste it. I got a tasting spoon here. I'll taste it in a little bit. Now, into that, I'm going to put some mushrooms, sliced mushrooms. Chopped mushrooms, rather. They sliced it and they chopped them a little bit. About, uh, well, I would say there's two cups of chopped mushrooms here. And I, I use all kinds of mushrooms, but I particularly I like to use the shiitake mushroom, but these are not shiitake. These are regular mushrooms where any store would have them. In the store where I got this stuff, they had them, and there they are in there right now. Stir that in there, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I got to put some, all I'm going to do is put some hot sauce, just a little. I'm not going to put much. This recipe called for two tablespoons of little and hot sauce. I'm not going to put that much in there. I'm just going to put uh, about a tablespoon, just about. I shook it first. You notice that? Exactly a tablespoon. <laughs> it's good, yeah. Stirring man, got to stir that. That's smelling good to me. <laughs> now into this, I'm gonna put some chopped. First of all, I'll put a little salt. I got to put some salt in there. It says about. Uh, a tablespoonful of salt, or as much as you like. Now, a tablespoon is going to be 
just about enough of this. Of course, there's a lot of meat there and a lot of honey. So I may put a tablespoonful and a Justin Wilson measure of a tablespoon. Now that's a tablespoon. And that's the rest of Justin Wilson measure right there. <laughs> But then it always comes out. I don't know why, but it does. It comes out good. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Now the turnips come in. We're going to put the turnips in there. Six cups of peeled and chopped turnips. Aren't they pretty? You know, turnips are so good. A soup isn't worth a damn a vegetable soup unless you got turnips in it. As I say, my hands are clean. I want to get every bit of that in there. Got it. Put this over here and put the rest of these little old things in it, like, like this one. Get in there. And this one. Come here to me, you backbone. Ooh, I love backbone. That is the country way of making a pork chop, you know. That's all it is. Stir those turnips in there. She's nice and thick. You don't need rice with it. All you do is you eat it by itself. With, 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 I may have a little pork or loin with it, but I sit down there to eat now. E I I. Come here, you beautiful pork lawn. Isn't that beautiful pork lawn? It really is. Let's get in there like a little gentleman. And you did too, bless your heart. Stir it in there. Now, I'm gonna bring you to a burl or a boil, whatever you want to call that. And then I'm going to put it on a low fire and cook it about two hours. I think that's about the best, best way to put that. And it tastes better when you cook it slow. That's true. Let me see. There's two pages to this uh, recipe. Wait a minute. Two hours. I remember that much about it, didn't I? Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring that to a boil, but I got to cut this oven down on that, on those uh, pork loin I got in there. I'm gonna cut that down to about 325 or 320. Actually, 300 is what I'm gonna put it on. And let that cook, and it'll cook just as pretty and nice as anything you ever saw. Got to bring this to a boil, then cut that fire down a little bit. It's about to boil right now. Go and boil, baby. You see a white spot never boil. I'm watching hell out of that and it's boiling right now. Mmm. Mmm. You know, my mother used to make this backbone and toast, but she didn't have a lot of the things that I put in there today because they didn't have them around at that time. They are. Uh, like, for instance, this, uh, this Sun Sweet Light Baker. That's wonderful. It really is. And it helps, it helps the flavor, too. And you need a little juice in there, and I put a little juice in. Come on, boy, that baby wing for me. I'd appreciate it. You know, on the fire right, maybe it'll work. It does. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Come on, baby. That's on medium low, I'm gonna put it up on medium, bring that thing to a boil, I'm gonna put it on simmer, 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 let it simmer, simmer, simmer all it wants to. It'll boil in just a minute, and I'm gonna sit back down over there and eat and tell you all a few stories. Because I got three or two I want to tell you, the old ones that I've told before, but I haven't heard them in a long time myself, and I'll get to where I want to hear them again, you know? Cajun stories, and I'm half Cajun and proud of it, very proud of that. My mama was Louisiana French Cajun, wonderful cook, a creative cook that I inherited her creativity, I think, and that's why I create different dishes that most people wouldn't even dream of, and I wonder where they come from with me, too. Now, that's beginning to boil. So I'm going to put the lid on that and lower that fire to a simmer, simmer, simmer. 
and let that rascal cook and cook and cook until it gets tired of cooking. Come on down there, fire. Come on down. Be nice. Not too far. There you go, simmering around. My stomach's growling. All I hear that it tastes, it smells that, and it's, it's doggone good stuff. Before I take a bite of anything, I'm going to tell you a story, a Cajun story. That I'm... Very few people know this about me, but I'm a safety engineer by profession. I'm a professional member of the American Society of Safety Engineers and have been for too many years. And this happened because I, I used to train men and women to become safety engineers and safety what They got all kind of funny names for them now, but they're still to me just safety people. And I, a big oil company in South Louisiana brought two Cajuns to me and said, look, we want you to train these men to be good safety people. So I'll do my best. Do you know how I train them, huh? They say, no, but we always know that you never have seen one come out that was bad. I said, yeah, one or two, but they didn't stay in safety. I got them out of it. They got to be with me for six months, five days a week, five working days a week for six months. They got to go everywhere with me. You got to pay all the expenses of me and them. Whether I'm making a talk, or if I'm cooking somewhere, or if I'm talking about safety to someone, or, or setting up a safety program, these two men got to go all the time. He said, that's what they said, that's all right. Now, let me tell you something about Cajun people. They'll bet you on anything in this world. I've got to, got to remind you that that, that that comes into this story after a while. They, they just, they can't help but bet on anything, I guarantee. Well, these two men, I said, look, I want you to go to Chicago to the National Safety Conference. When you get up there, I want you to go to every class that you possibly can and learn all you possibly can about safety. And when you brought yourself back down here, you can talk with me and I'll talk with you and maybe you can tell me some stuff I don't know and maybe you'll tell me some stuff that I can help you with. But don't miss those meetings. You go to those. Okay, you stand. That's my name in front. So they went to Chicago and they went to all the meetings. They didn't miss any meeting. They went to every damn one of them. But on the last night, they had a big banquet at 8 o'clock in the big boarding house where they were staying at a big hotel. And they met in the lobby at 7 o'clock. And one of them said, do you know this fellow was going to make this spoke tonight, huh? I said, no, I don't know him. He said, no, I don't know him. He said, I wonder if she was standing on He said, I don't care if she was standing on him or not. I don't know him. And I'm so tired. I've got so much in my head I'm trying to remember so I can talk to you standing about it. I don't know what they did. Let's don't go. The other one said, OK, let's don't go. Let's go up to one of our rooms, drink a few beers, and watch television. So they went upstairs, and they were watching television. And the television come on there, and there was a good-looking female girl, lady women, sitting on a ledge on the 22th floor of one of them tall buildings in Chicago. And you could hear the television people talk with them, because your television people, they're sneaky. They talk to you, and you can talk to them, too, you know? Somebody on television say, don't, please don't jump. She said, I'm going to jump. Please don't jump. Think about you, Papa. I ain't got no Papa. Me, I'm going to jump. One of them Cajuns said, I bet you $50 she don't jump. She said, you got to bet, my friend. Please don't jump. Think about you, Mama. I ain't got no Mama. I'm going to jump. Think about you cheering. I ain't got no cheering. I'm going to jump. Toom, she jumped. And Katie said, here's your $50. See, I can't took that. How come the reason you can't took that, huh? Because you bet, and I bet with you. Nope, can't took it. How come you can't took it? Well, you know, I was watching the 6 o'clock news, and I saw the same thing, and I knew she was going to jump. <laughs> that other case, see, I was watching it too, and I didn't think she'd do it the second time. <laughs> Let me pour myself a little wine. A little red wine goes good with pork, goes good with anything. Somebody said, what kind of wine should I have with this? What kind of wine you got? That's all the kind. That's what you have to do. We'll take a little sip to see if this is going to taste good or not. Tastes good enough. Let me put a little bit of this pork backbone on my plate. Oh, that look good. Hoo-hoo-hoo-wee. I believe it's going to taste good, too. 
I'm going to see about it right now. Y'all don't mind, I'm sure. Just take a little taste of this good, tender pork loin. Let's see about this backbone and turnip. I love backbone and turnip. That all good, I guarantee. So good, I got to take another little taste of soap. You know how it is. Ooh wee. Mm, 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 mm. Oh man, oh man. Mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. Oh boy. Mm. Mm. Wipe your mouth, Justin, all right? Take a sip. Sip of wine, all right? Sip of wine. Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, boy. Ah. Oh, man, come here, backbone. See if you taste as good as that rose. Tastes even better. If possible, it does, I guarantee. <laughs>
Well, you think you're going to get out of it? You wrong. You're going to get all of that in there. We need every bit of that. That's how come we measure it so carefully. And then we're going to haul off there and put a cup of dry white wine. This takes the bitterness out of that smoke because it has a bitterness to it. Now, this is a Chablis, and it's very drinkable. I've drunk four or five drinks of it <laughs> in my lifetime. Stir. I'm going to put a tablespoon full of Worcestershire sauce in there to be sure that we let it know that's Worcestershire. All right, now get in there and then keep going. Stir. Whenever you add anything, you got to stir if you're going to cook something easy and make it easy cooking. Two teaspoons full of Louisiana hot sauce. We can do that very, very easy. That was a tablespoon full of Worcestershire sauce. Two teaspoons. <laughs> That's not even a whole teaspoon. <laughs> That two teaspoons in there now, though, I can tell, see? At the top of the bottle. And I shuck it, too. And I stir, always stir, just a least little bit. Now, I got two or three, I got three bunches of mustard. I love mustard. I love any drink greens. I really do. I like kale. Uh, if I could have gotten some kale, I would have done this instead of the mustard. But I have the mustard, so we're going to cook with that right now. But what I've got to put in there is just a little, a little dried mint, a teaspoon. And this is a teaspoon for what I'd bet money on it. Sure is. A teaspoon full of dried mint. And it's just about to come to a boil. Now, you, you notice I haven't put any salt in there, but I've got to put a little salt in there. I don't care what anybody says, but you don't have to until you go to eat it. But it says it's three bunches of mustard, washed real well, and tough stem remove all that stuff. And I'm going to, right now, put it in there and stir it into it. It's good mustard, cold, too, in an ice box, in the frigidator. You think that pot ain't gonna hold it? I bet you it does. Now I ain't going to just that. Let's get it all in there. Every little old bit of it. Water and oil. Got it. Put this in here. Get it out of my way. Get in there now. I'm going to put this over here out of my way for the time being. Come here to me, you. Let's go in there. Stir this down into that real good because it's going to cook good. In fact, I'll have to turn this fire down very quickly, pretty soon, I bet you. Oh, man. Whew. You know, I thought of some old Cajun stories I may have told before, but not lately. And I haven't heard them in a long time, and I'm planning on telling three or two of them today. As soon as I get this going good and, and see about my jambalaya, get it started, I may just tell you a story or two, I guarantee. That ought to be enough water to hold that, and I'm going to put this on there. And I'm going to turn that fire down. Anything I can't stand is for something to boil over on me when I'm uh, cooking a little bit. Come here to me, chair. I'm going to put this on low, that medium low, all the way on low, and that'll be just fine. Now, what I'm going to do is put this... I, I'll keep my recipes where I can see them because, believe me, when you cook as many dishes as I cook, there's no two ways about it. You got to look at the recipe so so you won't get it wrong. Oh, see, now into this I'm going to put a little olive oil, a couple of tablespoons full of olive oil to brown that nice pork 
to make a pork jambalaya. To me, that's the best jambalaya. There's no two ways about it. Every one I eat, I say, this is the best I ever tasted. It says here, two tablespoons full. That's about right. Put that lid back on there good. I don't want to spill my olive oil, no. 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 Let me turn that fire on. Got the right one that time, yeah. All the fires are going real good. I'm going to put this on a medium, and I'm going to put that pork in there and just brown the hell out of it. <laughs> this is cut special for jambalaya. Let's get in there, boys. And it'll brown. Take a little time, maybe, but it'll brown. Let's get down in there real good. And see what kind of fire I got. And I may have to put that on a medium. That's what it's on. Got the burner. Now, while that's starting, I got to tell y'all one story. I haven't told in a long time. It happened years ago. Because, you know, I'm a safety engineer. I wear both a belt and suspenders. I don't take chances. <laughs> I've done a lot of safety work all over the world. And I'll tell you right now, I heard that they had a big meeting in Chicago called the National Safety Congress. Not like the one in Washington, D.C., but all about safety. Well, when I first started, I wanted to learn all I could because I needed to, I needed to learn all I could. And uh, so I went up there, went to a big boarding house called the Conrad Hilton. <laughs> Walked in there, and there was a, a club behind the, the desk, you know. He said, what can I do for you, partner, huh? I said, not a damn thing, partner. I got a reserve here. He said, you do? What's your name? I said, front name or behind name? He said, both of them. I said, you stand real song. He don't understood that. He said, how you spell that? I'm so glad he asked, because I just learned how. <laughs> I spell it for him. He said, let me see. He said, I don't see. I said, wait, let's stop. You ain't no speed reader. I'll help you look in red now. He turned one finger. I said, whoop, there's my name. He said, but you got to wrote your name on the register. I said, put them out here. He put a little card out there, and I'm putting my name real careful, because some people can read reading, but they can't read writing. You know how that is. <laughs> and just when I get to print my name good, right across it walked the biggest damn bed bug I never saw before again in my life. And I back up four or three steps, and I look at that cluck right on the eye. I said, I want to show you something. I've been bit by the flea in Shreveport, Louisiana, led by the spider in Houston, Texas, and chased by the policemen in New Orleans, Louisiana. <laughs> but that's the very first time I ever had a bed bug look up my room number in my life, I guarantee you. <laughs> I've got to lower that fire a little bit whether I want to or not. So I put it on medium low. Yeah, just part of that. And it's frying just right. All I want to do is brown it just a little bit, not too much, to be sure I get all the taste of it in that jambalaya. Mm-hmm. It's got, it's got pretty good. I'm going to take it out there and put it in that bowl, put the other stuff in this bowl, in here, and see how much of it I can have to leave out so I won't run over the thing. I better don't have to leave any out. I'd bet money on that. Oh, man, y'all looking good, boys. Mm. Put that back on medium. Oh. Man. You browning pretty good, brown enough for me. I won't eat you until you cook more, though, I can tell you that. I like rare meat, but not rare pork. Taking that out of there. Then I'm gonna put some onion in that, all, all kind of goodies. And it all tastes good. That's the good part about it, yeah. Whew. Yes, sir. I to take this out like this because I ain't gonna pick that whole heavy thing up and drop some on the floor. I'd have to get down there and pick it up. Put it back in that part with nobody looking. That ain't nice. <laughs> Oh, you're doing good, huh? <laughs> and 
it landed on my recipe, and it's clean, I guarantee. Now I'm gonna have to hold this up and dump it in there. Don't send yourself on that fire, those you stand. Worry not, man, I'm not gonna do that. And I got to keep my oil in the bottom because I'm gonna put them on your in there and I want them to kind of get clear looking before I put anything else on it. Cause I'll put some bell pepper too, little things like that. Now that's pretty meat. That is beautiful jambalaya meat, I guarantee. Now get back on that way you belong and you just go right over here for a minute or two. Now, into this, I'm gonna put three cup of onion, chopped. Yes, sir. A half a cup of bell pepper, chopped. Now I got to stir that in there like I'm supposed to. Stir that around. All right, onion, get the smell of, ooh, we that's gonna be good, y'all, smell it already. <laughs> Into that, I'm gonna put some parsley, a cup, one cup of chopped parsley. Get in there. Got it. And stir that in. That parsley looks good, it smells good, it's good for you, I told you that for two. Mm -hmm. Now you go in there as you stand. Into that, I'm gonna put, not right this moment, I'm gonna put some chopped garlic, but not right this moment. What I'm gonna put in there right now is a cup of dry white wine. That's right. The reason I'm not gonna put the garlic, you got to have a little, little liquid in that garlic. If you don't, it'll just take all the flavor. And I love the flavor of garlic. I'm using the line by the tin. Now I got a little liquid in there. I'm gonna put that garlic in it. See that little liquid? Let's see, that is exactly, exactly two ta one tablespoon full of chopped garlic. That was a big tablespoon, I'll tell you. Got you in there. Just get it all, get it all. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. Stir it around. Stir it around there. Get it all in there. So every little bite will tell you to taste the garlic. And you're supposed to. Mm hmm Now, into this, I'm gonna put some dried mint. You know, I don't use bay leaf anymore at all. I use dried mint practically all the time. In fact, all the time when I'm cooking because it doesn't hog the flavor like mint does. If I put that much mint in there, you only could taste would be mint. That's true. I mean, uh, bay leaf. You put that much bay leaf, all you taste is bay leaf. Down tea. Whew. Now into that, I'm going to put a half a cup of steak sauce. I'm going to put my picante sauce first, though. That's a half a cup. It's good stuff, too. Get that, get that up. Now you go. And stir it in there good. Hmm. Smelling good already. Now I'm going to put a half a cup of steak sauce, good steak sauce. Actually, it's Creole ketchup. That's what all steak sauce was at one time, I was told. I'm not going to swear to that, because it would be, I may commit perjury, and I don't want to do that, no. And this athletic nose smells that. It smells so good that it made me remember what it was right there on my face. Stir that in. Now I got to put just a little salt. I got a lot of meat and a lot of stuff here, so I don't know how little the salt's gonna be. I'm going to put in there right now about three teaspoons full of salt. 
That's one. Y'all don't believe me, but I guarantee that's a teaspoonful of salt. Come here, spoon. Where you are, teaspoon. Let's just show these people I know what I'm talking about. You see that say, teaspoonful of salt? <laughs> so it is. That's two. Three. I usually put a teaspoonful of salt in for, for every cup of rice, and I got three cups of rice over there, and I got some other vegetables here, so I'm gonna have to add another teaspoonful of salt, or just a little sliver or so, you know, just to be sure I got enough in there. <laughs> now, into this, I'm gonna, now we've got a, enough fire going where I can put some rice. Three cup of rice is what I got right here. Three cup. Got to put a little cayenne pepper in here after I get the rice. Put that in there and stir it in. And I'm gonna put the meat and then the hot pepper. Put the meat in there. Ooh, wee, that's smelling good here. Y'all smell it. <laughs> Man, that's gonna be good, yeah. Let's just put a little water on that. Come here, water. Don't act funny, just come on over here. Let's get in there with a little of you. And you put water in here about an inch above the rice. So I'm gonna add a little more water in just a few minutes, but I'm gonna put the meat in there. So I know how much meat, how much rice I got in this doggone thing. I uh, hope I can get all this in here. I don't know if I can or not. But you know what? I'd bet money on me. Because rice is gonna take up all the water. We're going to put this in here just like we're supposed to. The whole thing, maybe. Yeah, let's put it all in there. In here, not on the floor. You didn't think I was going to get that in there, did you? <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> but I got to stir that rice up into this. Pour a little more water. Because all this will shrink as it cooks, believe it or not. The rice will take up all the water that I put in it. And then the meat will be mixed up with the rice and I'm gonna put a little more salt. I'm telling you, that's not enough of all that meat. Now I know how much I'm putting in there. You may not know, but I know. Here's the water right here. I got to cover that with water. Now you know I look like that may go ball over, but it's not. Hope not in hell. That's just about right. Mm -hmm. See how that rice is there? Just bring it up over this. Get some of it on top of that meat so I can tell if it's a half inch of rice. I'll be able to tell, don't you worry. I've been doing this a long time. A couple of days. That's right. <laughs> All right, now let's go here. You're looking good. You're looking like you're supposed to look. I'm gonna cut that fire down a little bit. I'm not gonna put the lid on it yet, because when I put the lid on it, practically all the water's gone. And that should have just a little bit more water in it. I hate to do this to it, but I got to. Got it. Three tablespoons and a half full of water. Now, ooh, boy. While I'm standing up here, I'll tell you the rest of that story I was telling you a while ago about me at that safety, safety congress they got in Chicago. Let me, let me look at this. Going good, going good. Cook, baby, cook. And I'm gonna lower this fire to a, a medium low. I'll sit down like that so I can read the damn thing. Hey, got it. I put it on low, actually. I stir it one more once and let it cook a while. And then I'm gonna put the lid on it, and it, that rice will just steam. The rest of that story dish, you know, I went and got on the alligator in that big uh, boarding house, Conrad Hills. 
little alligator, and there was a lady on there with a little boy cheering, about nine, eight years old, cute little boy. And she got him by the hand real good, don't want to lose him. And a great big woman got on there, weighed most a bale of cotton, 510 pounds. <laughs> and push up against the little boy when a whole bunch of them safety engineers get on and overload the damn thing, you know? <laughs> well, alligator started and went to the magazine floor and that big fat female women let out a scream, zoom, knocked over 12 or 11 of them safety men getting off so fast. And everybody looked at that little boy like he's a sheep killing dog. And he looked at him with both eyes and he told him, I did it. I did it. I did it. She stuck it in my face and I hauled off and bit it. <laughs> Man, I got, to ta I got to taste some of this food to be sure. It, is, uh, it tastes good to the people who are going to eat it. Now, this is jambalaya. Spread out there. Now you got it. Put that there like a little gentleman. This is mustard green. I like any kind of green. Mustard green, kale, cabbage, turnip green. Anything you got that's green, I will eat it. I'll eat anything else you got too, most probably. <laughs> Now I got to put my napkin on like a little gentleman and fix this up right. <laughs> Come here, red napkin. Tuck it in your belt so it won't drop on the floor. Now you got it right. <laughs> Spread out. Oh, of course I'm gonna pour a little, little wine, a little red wine. Maybe you're supposed to eat some other kind of wine with pork, but I like red wine, so that's what we're gonna have right now. And I got to taste these greens first because they look like they're good. Come in, green. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm, I guarantee. Now, mm-hmm. Southern wine that needs just a little bit of salt. You got to admit that pretty yet. Oh, wait a minute. You know I forgot the most important thing? Yeah. Oh, it's looking good. I guarantee that's a fine one. Hello there, I'm Justin Wilson. I used to cook for people from the Houston Press and other people back in the 1960s. That's how I became friends with Jack Mola, who was city editor of the Houston Press. I spent three days cooking on stage and Jack said, look, you have to write a cookbook. I told him, you got to go find yourself a mind because you have lost it. But with his help and a lot of fear, we wrote the Justin Wilson cookbook. It was published in 1965. The only way I could write it was to, I had to cook the stuff and measure it. I never measured ingredients, so I didn't know how much of anything went into my dishes. That cookbook was one of the first Cajun cookbooks. In 1972, I put together the Justin Wilson number two cookbook, Cooking Cajun. Both of those books are combined in Justin Wilson's Looking Back the dishes that I cooked on the very first TV series in Mississippi nearly 25 years ago 
or in Justin Wilson's Looking Back. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. Whoo, boy. We're gonna do some cooking and tell some stories today. Uh, you know, Cajuns know lots of stories. Ooh, I guarantee. Some of them I can tell and some I cannot. <laughs> but here's one I can tell you today. I got a friend named Murphy Brown. He lived down south with me down there. And one day he asked me, he says, you stand, that's my front name in French. <clears throat> he said, you ever been to Houston, Texas? I said, oh yeah. He said, you been to the Astrodome? I said, oh yeah. He said, told me about that. I said, there ain't no way. You wouldn't believe one word I told you. What you should did is see that. He said, I'd love to do that. And like a fool, I said, I'll be glad to took you there. He said, let's go. I said, well, we can't go right now. Let's just find out when them Astros play, are gonna try to play baseball. And we go over there and play and uh, play around and see that thing and have a good time. He say, call on the phone. I say, okay, I'll call on the phone. So I call on the phone, he said, he's gonna play in three days. He said, let's go right now. I said, no, we'll go in three days and we'll have a good time, pass a good, pleasurable time. He said, well, I'm gonna come to your house. Well, he came to my house and stayed until we ready to go over there. And we go over there and we go to the Astrodome. He go through it three times, not once, no. We go to a restaurant, one of those fine little restaurants they got there. And we, have a nice lunch and he, so I can leave something on the table for them waitress, but I don't got something I'd left there. And I told Murphy, I said, Lee, be sure and left something on this table here for them waitress. He said, okay. Well, I went over to the cash register and paid the check and I met him at the door. I said, did you leave something on that table for that waitress? He said, I'll guarantee. I left them old carrots. I never could stood them there. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people are like that, kid, and they don't like certain vegetables that's green and mustard greens and cabbage and things like that. And uh, we're gonna fix something that you can't help but like, I guarantee. But right now, I'm gonna fix a casserole. Well, what we might call the main dish. This casserole is made of asparagus, cheese and shrimp and eggs and wine. Right now, I'm putting some olive oil on that. Now, people ask me, say, how come you use olive oil? And that's two tablespoons in there, that's what they did. They ask me, how come you use olive oil? Because I like it, that's the main reason. Best reason in the world. But also, it's not as, as bad on your cholesterol, how you call it, as some of the other things. And it's got a delicious flavor, a very fine flavor. That's the big reason that I use olive oil. I like the flavor. Nothing wrong with that. Now, these are green spears, one large can. Now, you can use a casserole that's deeper than this. I sometimes do. But we have this one right now, so I'm gonna make this for this shallow casserole. Look at that. Whoo, boy, that's pretty air. Yeah. I guarantee. Funny thing about this dish, you know, men say, I don't like asparagus, but they like this dish. Must be the wine. <laughs> I've never had one of them turn it down yet. I guarantee you that. Ooh, wee, that's fine. Don't want to waste any of that. Now, we put the asparagus first. Then we got some grated American cheese. We put some of that on there. A layer of cheese. I want to put it all because I want to keep some more. That's a cup and a half, about a cup and a half of Amer grated American cheese is what we're putting in here. And we put a little, I've got about a half a cup of Romana, and I'll put about half of it right now. Let's have that. Now I'm going to put a layer of shrimps. Whoo wee, how you call them? Them good old shrimps from the Gulf Coast. Mm, talk about fine. I guarantee that's fine. These were large shrimp, so I cut them up in the sizes that would do. Uh, you know, these shrimp have been boiled. I want to tell you that. And then we peeled them. And when we boil shrimp, we put a lot of salt. You got to put a lot of salt for any crustacean. And we put lemon, onion, hot pepper, and a little garlic in that. 
And that's all, just a, just a tap of garlic in when we boil shrimp. And wine, we put a little wine. Now we're gonna put some more cheese. American, a layer of cheese on the shrimp. Some good Gulf Coast shrimps. And that's fine. Hmm. And the Parmesan cheese, or Romana. This is Romana, not Parmesan. You can use either one, it don't make some different. Whichever one you want to use. And now, you top that. You notice I put the last layer of cheese because it'll spread all the way down through that, not just be on, on the bottom. It goes all the way through. That is, and that's one of the reasons why we put it on top because we want that good flavor of that cheese. Now, we're gonna beat a couple of eggs. Better take that one out of there while I broke this one. You know, every time I see these eggs, it makes me think about a, a story that actually happened a year ago down in South Louisiana in one of the old-fashioned hotel and restaurant what we had there. You used to go down and you'd get your breakfast served to you down there, and uh, it was this kind of restaurant where you'd get your ham or cheese, uh, no, cheese omelet, you could get that maybe, and you could get the bacon or sausage with you, with your uh, egg, and you always asked you, how you want your egg this morning? I never will forgot this fellow what went in there <laughs> one morning. He had a hang around. Whoo, he felt bad. And this old way to come up to him and say, uh, how would you like your egg this morning? We got bacon this morning. How would you like egg? <gasps> he said, eliminate the egg. He couldn't stood the thought of that. He said, okay. Well, he went back to the kitchen and he brought himself back. He brought some scrambled eggs, and this fellow with him hang around and say, I told you to eliminate them eggs. He said, I told that old cook back there, but she don't know nothing but frying scramble, I guarantee. <laughs> got, to whip the, got to whip these eggs real hard. And we put salt and wine. Pour a little wine. Now, I've got a cup measured out here. Pour a little bit at the time and beat it real good, and we put enough wine to where it smells like eggnog. I'm telling the truth, I guarantee. A little more wine. <laughs> Not quite right, still don't it smell like egg, not like eggnog. You know that wine helps, helps to cook those eggs. <sighs> Just right, I guarantee. Now we're gonna put some Worcestershire sauce on that, like a tablespoon full, and blend it in too. Worcestershire. And a teaspoonful of Louisiana hot sauce. Now, we don't mean Tabasco, no. This is cayenne, not, not, not Tabasco pepper. You put cayenne, put about half that much. Teaspoon. I like it a little better than that. So I'll put a dash. <laughs> then we got to put some salt. One and a half teaspoonful of salt. That's a teaspoonful of salt. You don't believe that. <laughs> I'm gonna show you. Teaspoonful of salt. And a half a teaspoon. Not gonna measure that, because I don't prove I didn't did it. There we go. Now we got to beat this up good and dissolve them salt in there. We pour this on the casserole. <laughs> Can't help but be good. Get all the salt. Now, a can of cream of mushroom soup. This smells good too. 
kind of beat it a little bit so it pour easier. And then spread it the best you can over your casserole. Ooh, yeah. That is good enough to eat right now. Got that good juice in it. Then we put about three quarters of a cup of bread crumbs, sprinkle that over the top. piece of cheese. We don't want that to melt. We put this in the oven at 350 degrees. Ah! And that's going to cook about an hour and it's done. In this pan right here, I'm going to show you how we cook mustard greens or turnip greens or spinach, anything you want to cook. I have in here some olive oil. Oh, yeah, I covered the bottom of the pot real good. And uh, I'm going to put some mustard greens in that as soon as I get this out of my way. Ooh, we don't that pretty. I don't drop them all over the floor. Now, now this oil has already been heating, and I'm going to turn it a little higher. We're going to show you that we put these greens in there with the hot oil so that they will stay green. Just put a little few to show you. That hot oil will keep them green. See how pretty that is? Just as green and pretty. And it stays green, too. Now, we, we uh, soak our greens in our mustard greens. We get in salt water to be sure we get all them bug and things like that off of them and warm, we don't want all that. And we put this in here to wash them off real well after we soak them in that, in that uh, salt water to get the salt off. Any worms that may have clung to the greens after they done hauled off and finished themselves off. Ooh, we this is fine. Now we put, uh, this recipe says two or three cup of sauterne wine. We got three cup. <laughs> we gonna put that on now. You can let these heat a little bit more in the oil if you wish. Get them green, but we gonna put this on there like that. Salt to taste. But we gonna put the little green pepper. One of these real that's, uh, I grew that in my garden myself. That's a cayenne pepper. We're gonna drop that on there so that you can see. Then we're gonna salt that to taste. You can use hot sauce. That's one teaspoon, two teaspoons, three teaspoons full of salt. It's gonna take every bit of that. You know, greens are green. You know, two way about that. Push that down on that. Let it simmer, and by the way, always turn your fire down when you do that, because it'll, uh, they may scorch on you. You don't want to scorch in the green. That'd be sacrilegious. We don't want to do that, I guarantee. Put this out of my way. Now, I'm going to haul off here. I've got to taste a little of this pot liquor in the finished dish that I got over here of some of them mustard green that I got here early and cook up to be sure I got some. Gonna just dip a little pot liquor. Whoo, you go to some of these high class restaurants and they say vegetable juice. Hmm, vegetable juice. Ain't nothing in the world but pot liquor. <laughs> Man, you talk about good. Oh, 
Man, that reminds me of a story I guarantee, and I want to tell it to you while this kind of cool itself a little bit. I got a couple of friends that met up down at Johnny Gitro's one day, and one of them had a gallon of that moonshine corn whiskey. And he told his friend, he said, how about a drink of my moonshine? He said, I don't believe. And he reached in his shirt and pulled out a 45. <laughs> Stuck it right in his belly stomach. He said, took a drink. <laughs> he said, OK. <laughs> he didn't lost his breeze. The fellow handed him a pistol. He said, now hold that on me and make me took one. <laughs> you don't have to do that with this. I guarantee this is fine stuff. Mm, I believe I'll have some more. That is fine. I guarantee. Don't want to waste any of that. That's awful good. Now, I'm going to make a little hot slaw. That puts me in shape to fix something else. That good old uh, pot of liquor, vegetable juice. I mean, it put me in shape to fix something else, and I'm going to fix you a little hot slaw. That's what I'm going to do. Now, in this pot right here, I've got some bacon that I chopped in small pieces, and I, I put that in there and fried it out. Now, I'm going to haul off here and get my stuff where I can get at it. And I've got a little vinegar here. Now, this is optional. If you want to put vinegar in this when you, the last thing, you can do that. If you don't want to, or if you forget it like I do a lot of times, you don't got to do that. First of all, I'm going to put some uh, onion, some onion. We call them onion down there. These are just chopped onion. Put them in here to saute until they are about clear. That's one large onion we chopped up and put in here. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's a science clear up, I guarantee. Whew. That's fine. That's just fine. And now we put one large bell pepper that we done got chopped up and put that in on there too until it comes clear too. Or like we call, well, until it's tender. That's, that's actually what we're talking about, until it's tender. Ooh -wee. That smells good. Now I'm gonna haul off here and add this should cook a little bit the way these onions are clear, but I'm gonna go ahead and add my cabbage, a small head, kind of about the size of mine. We'll put that on there like that. Not a pinhead, a small head of cabbage. And we stir that real well. And the same thing holds true with this grease with cabbage as it does with mustard greens. It'll hold its greenness if uh, you put it in hot grease and you want it to do that. Man, I'm spreading cabbage, I know that. I guarantee you, ooh -wee. Now, two cans, if you got small cans of whole tomatoes, or one large can of whole tomatoes. These are whole tomatoes that I'm putting in there. And I'm gonna put this up like that. Stir them into it. Salt and pepper to taste. This should take about two teaspoons full of salt, maybe a little more. We use both black pepper not too much and red cayenne pepper. And this is where I got to remember to put them vinegar in there. Vinegar, like them Cajuns say when they marinate something overnight, they say, let it sleep in the vinegar all night long. <laughs> yeah, now we got the vinegar, we got everything on that. I'm gonna stir it just at least a little bit to mix it up. I'm gonna cut that fire down to low. Put the lid on that and let it cook itself. That's gonna simmer about 45 minutes is how long we got to let that simmer. Now, let me see. I've got some uh, hot slaw already cooked here. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm gonna get a little hot slaw and put it on a plate here. Mm. 
c'est bon. That means it's good. And it is. Get myself a few little mustard green. Oh, and I'm gonna show you all the finished casserole, too, when I get over there to that table. Oh, just a little bit more. That's so good. Oh, man. Can't stood that. Ain't that fine? Mm. I guarantee. Here is the casserole. Over here, it's done. We fixed that a little earlier. But I guess I better pour a little wine before I sit down. <laughs> I've got a little garlic bread here to dunk in that if I wish. People always ask me about what kind of wine. I say, the kind you like. Just like you wife, marry the kind of girl you like, cook the kind of wine. No. Putting it there for a moment and get a little of this right here. Who you talk about? <laughs> like that Cajun say, you talk about. <clears throat> I guarantee. Hoo-wee. <laughs> little garlic bread. Man, man. Now, ain't that fine? Now, you know, before I do this, I want to tell you a story. I haven't told this story in a long time, but I've been going kind of fast here to cook up all this, and it, it reminds me, this food you eat here that I'm fixed here, it gives you a lot of get up and go. There ain't no twice way about that, I guarantee. When you cook this, you're gonna have, you don't need no, no B12, no nut. One day I got a friend that drove into a fulling station down on I-10, that's between Lafayette and Lake Charles. And he drove into them fulling station in one of them little fast back automobiles, you know, it looked like it'd been chopped off in the back with a broad axe. And he drove in and he say, full it up. And a Cajun standing there say, whoo, that's a nice automobile you got, I'll guarantee. How fast can it go? He said, 120 miles an hour, zoom, just like that. This Cajun say, I can go that fast. He said, what kind of car you got, huh? This kid said, I ain't got no car. I run that fast. He said, you done lost your mind. You can't. He said, you call me a lie? He said, no, I just kind of doubt you were. That's all. <laughs> well, he said, come on out on this interstate, and I'll show you how it's dead. You know, that's before they got the new state police superintendent they got down there. So they got out on the interstate, and this fella with them fast back car, he kind of, he don't want to embarrass that poor Cajun at all. So he said, I just would go about 35 miles an hour, and he sheeze along 35, and he'd look out his window, and that kid would run along by the side of him and lighting a cigarette. <laughs> he said, I can't stir there. So he geese it up to 55, and he'd look outside there, and he saw that kid and done pop some bubble gum in his mouth. He said, well, I'll show him 75 mile an hour. <laughs> he'd look out his window, and that kid would run along by the side of him and blow a great big bubble of them bubble gum. <laughs> He said, I can't stood this at all, I guarantee. So he put his foot all the way to the floor on acceleration. Shoom! 120 mile an hour. And he looked outside of the car there, and that kid just rocking along like he's loping. Don't even look like he's straining himself. And he said, man, I don't know what I'm gonna do. But he looked back at the road, and he better look back at that road, because you better not run the automobile 120 mile an hour, not watch them road, I guarantee. Well, man, he looked back the road, and he looked back, and the Cajun's gone. He said, I wonder what happened with him. Well, he go a piece till he found a place to turn around, and that's not easy on him interstate, you know. Finally, he found a place to turn around. He brought himself back, and there that Cajun in the ditch, and he just one big brush burn, I guarantee. <laughs> he said, what in the world happened to you, huh? He said, you ever have a tennis shoe blowout going 120 miles an hour, huh? <laughs> Okay, okay. I'll be glad, well, you like that so much, I'll just have to tell you, when I look at this set, it reminds me of this. This is a beautiful set, I guarantee. But you know, I never forgot this, this young fella who went to his, his uncle and said, will you give me a job to, as a carpenter? He said, you know anything about it? He said, no, he said, okay, you'll be an apprentice. So he gave him a job as an apprentice carpenter. And they were building a house, and his uncle said, I better check on him, he's the foreman. 
And you go on there and you find this young fella. Kabloom, 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 kabloom. Reaching his apron, get another nail, look at it, chunk it over his shoulder. Reaching get another one, chunk it over his shoulder. Reaching get one, ka-chunk, 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 ka-chunk. He said, what in the world are you doing chunking them nail over your shoulder? He said, well, I put them up there and the points told me that must be for the other side of the house, huh? <laughs> his foreman said, why, of course it's for the other side of the house. But don't chuck them around. Remember, you're gonna get on that other side sometime soon, I'll guarantee you. <laughs> mm, How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee. I talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. And today we're gonna have uh, two little different things. I'm gonna make a cold chicken consomme in this pot right here. I love consomme and I like cold consomme and I like hot consomme and I like chicken consomme and I like any other kind of consomme anybody has, you know? And uh, let me turn the fire on here. That's the wrong one. Oh, we do get the wrong one. Oh, yeah. That is water. I put some water in there that I'm going to put some chicken wings. I put the chicken wings in there and cook them till the meat fall, will want to fall off of it. And then I, I let it cool to get the meat, the, the chicken out, and take it off the bone. Take the bones out and then just let it clear itself up and put it in the refrigerator, it comes out cold consomme. It's very good, too. Now, into this pot right here, I'm gonna put uh, six chicken wings. Go in there like nice little cherry, don't you? you going, chicken. Nice wings. Two, there. Now you can make it, you can also use mixed thighs with this, chicken thighs. I'll never forget the time I was in Shreveport with somebody and I had a Cajun, a full bleed Cajun with me. And uh, in a place where you could get all the chicken you could eat. We were sitting there and the waitress came over and said, uh, anything else I can get for you? And this Cajun from Marksville said, I would like uh, two thighs and a wing. And she looked at me and said, uh, what did he say? I said, he wants two ties in a wing. I thought she was going to shoot us both. I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> now, into this, I'm going to put, I could put ties in there, but I decided just to use wings today. I'm going to put about uh, a tablespoonful of steak sauce. Come on, get out of there now. I want to get all of you in there that I possibly can. Boy, that spoon's too big to get out in there. It is. Uh, stir that around a little bit. And then I'm gonna put uh, about a half a cup of dry white wine. Yeah. And I stir. I want that to look, be right. Put a little garlic powder in there. That's garlic powder. Oh boy, this is good. And the chicken tastes good when it comes out of that. I got to put some salt in there. I'm gonna put some, a uh, little bit of onion powder, just so that garlic won't be lonesome all by itself in there, you know. Let's get this stirred up good. You think I'm not gonna break that up the wrong? There you go. 
They start the ball and they'll broke it. They'll broke it up. I guarantee. You know, get in there, get in there, get in there. Now, you know something? That's trying to act smart with me. It ain't gonna get but Not gonna do it. I'm gonna get it all out of there. There you go. That's onion powder. I need every bit of it in there. Must have been a little damp when we put it in there. So it won't act like that. Stir. Always stir. I put a little dried mint about, oh, this is not quite a te teaspoonful, about half a teaspoonful in there. And stir that in. Go ahead on. Mm -hmm. Let's get, let's broke up there some now. How are we going? I'm gonna put some dried parsley in there too. And it, it, uh, it is very good seasoning dried parsley. That's about a half a cup of dried parsley. It's just that many chicken wings. You can look to it hardly. And it, and it doesn't look bad in, in the uh, consomme when it's through too. Got to put a little salt in it. Just a little salt. Salt to taste my taste. I'm gonna put just about a teaspoonful of salt. And I know you don't think that's a teaspoonful. Some of it's just doubting Thomas and Thomasina. But I'm gonna show you that that is a teaspoonful of salt. Exactly. With three extra grams. And that's all the salt it'll need. Now I've got to put a little cayenne pepper in there. But somebody can talk about, it, but not much. There's hardly none. Not too hot. You know, Cajun people don't like food too hot. They like it well seasoned and tasty. But if you get too much pepper, they're just like anybody else. They don't like it. I don't like it either. Come on now, let's. Now we're going. I got something else I got to cook. I got to tell a story about this next one too. Now, I'm gonna put the lid on that and I'm gonna cut the fire down. I have to cut that fire down some because that'll boil all over the stove and I'd have to clean it up and I ain't in the mood of cleaning up any stove, I can tell you that. So sit down and find the thing and put it on the oh, old real low. No, put it on lower than that. Put it on simmer, 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 simmer. Now, I can see that flame right there. Close enough, close enough. Let me move this stuff out of my way. Put it over here in this thing. Put this with it. I'm gonna leave the salt and the red pepper there because I'm gonna use some more of that in something in, in okra and crawfish and mushroom. Now that sounds like it may be Delicious, and it is delicious. Believe me, it is. We put this in here. Let me get my recipe. I, I watch my recipe because when you write as many of them as I have, it ain't a way to remember them. Into here, I'm gonna put okra. I better tell you that story. Once there was an old mama crawfish, you know, who took a three little baby crawfish out to see the world for the first time, you know? And they were going through the pasture, going real slow and looking. She was explaining this and explaining that. And they come up on a cow, and boy, those three little baby crawfish, zoom, high gear reverse, got out of there in a hurry. And she ran back to and got him, said, what's the matter with you? What that is, my mom, what that is, eh? Oh, she said. That's a cow, and a cow don't eat crawfish. Come on, let's go. So they walked some more, about a couple of more acres, and a great big mule was there, and them two little baby, three little baby crawfish, zoom, I get reverse some more. And she ran back and said, what in the world is the matter with you children? Huh? What's wrong with you? What that is, my mama? Oh, she said, that's a mule, and a mule don't eat crawfish, you know. Come on, let's go. I've got to show you this world and before dark. And they went, but didn't go very far, and the old mama crawfish said, Let's put it in high gear of voice now, Cherry, too. What you see right there is a Cajun, and he'll eat anything in this world. <laughs> <laughs> and 
into this right here, I'm gonna put some water. Got to put a little water, water. Or I'm gonna put uh, mushroom stock or water. Put that in there. And I got to turn that fire on and get that to sizzling. Can't help but get the right one there, you know. <laughs> Come on, water, let's get going. And into this, I'm going to put eight cups of cut okra. Eight cups, and that is so cold. I mean, it's, it's thawed, but it's still cold as, you know. And let's get to cooking. That's beautiful okra. Oh, baby, it start boiling. Start boiling right now. And I'm gonna put two cups of chopped canned tomatoes. And I'm gonna stir it. It's canned tomatoes that are chopped real good. Got to get it all. Don't mess around with that now. And stir. That ding -de -de -de. Now into that, I'm gonna put two cups of chopped mushrooms. Now I like shiitake mushrooms, but I don't have them this morning. These are regular ones that you can get in any store that has any mushrooms at all, they'll have them. To stir. We're gonna put these mushrooms in there. Mix them up good. They, they taste good. Mushrooms have a good flavor. And they're different kinds. Have the ones you gather in the woods are so good. I can't gather them. I don't go out there. I, I find the wrong ones. You're sure as hell. <laughs> but these are good. These are not chopped. They're sliced. Sliced mushrooms. They'll pick up the flavor, though. And they will add to the flavor. Now into that, I'm gonna put two cups of chopped onion. Without onion, whew, it wouldn't be worth a damn. Onion. Improve anything. I could, I don't like a potato salad that doesn't have onion in it. You, you get them in some restaurant, they're afraid people get offended if they got onion of it. You know, people like I do, excuse me, they, you know, they ain't gonna get offended. They ain't gonna eat the hell out of them onion, no matter what you got in it. <laughs> Let's go. Mm -hmm. Stir it up good, you stand, so it can't argue with you. Now, believe it or not, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put a teaspoonful of garlic. Come here, baby. Chopped garlic, chopped real fine. Get all of it. Garlic goes with onions. Onions go with garlic. And I like them both. I like an onion sandwich with a little garlic like that put on it. It's awful good. You eat that at night when there's nobody around. They won't say anything to you, but you smell like garlic. Sure. Sure do. Just eat some. <laughs> now into that, I'm going to put just a little cup of dry white wine. Isn't that great? Mm-hmm. Now, let's stir that in there good. That's smelling good already. You don't smell that? <laughs> oh, I smell it, and it's good too, yeah. I got to put some salt on that. Salt to taste is what it says here. I ain't gonna put the crawfish in there yet. I got to get this cooked a little bit first. Yeah, but salt to taste, and I'm gonna do it. Just I'm gonna put a teaspoonful of salt. I already showed you this a teaspoonful. Not an extra grain in that. Not in the what? Just a couple. Hands are clean, believe me. I wash them more than anybody I know. Keep them clean. 
Now, I could put a little hot pepper in that, but some people may not like that, so I'm not going to put any in there right now. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to let that cook a little bit. I think I'll put the lid on the top and bring it to a boil. And the best way to do this is to you put everything in there except the crawfish. And you cook until the okra is tender. That means the onion will be tender too. There's an onion trying to get away from me. Come in here. Man, what in the world? Right on the spoon. Mmm, mm-hmm. Let me put the lid on this and let it cook a little bit. I'll tell you all the story. Maybe too, I need a bit of telling. But I'm not gonna put any hot pepper on it. It doesn't need it. it. Does not need it at all. And my nose is athletic, you know, Olympic style, running. <laughs> Hay fever or something like that, I don't know what. I would like to tell you a story about three Cajuns that were at the female women's hospital in Baton Rouge waiting for the wives who were in another room waiting to deliver. And I don't mean groceries, no. <laughs> in a few minutes, the nurse come out and said, Mr. Malasol, hey, baby, hey, hey, what I got? What I got, baby, what I got, what I got? She said, you got twins, Mr. Malasol. What you said? You got twins. Twins, that's right, twins. Twins, that's right, twins. A beautiful girl and a handsome young man. Lovely twin. Did I understood you to say twin? That's right. For true, I got twins. That's right. You got twin. You guarantee I got twin? I guarantee you got twin. Well, it's only right and proper. I should have twins. I'm the head baseball scout for the Minnesota Twins baseball team in South Louisiana, and I should have twin. He turned around to Mother Two Cage and gave each one of them two cigars, and he left just proud as he could be to have twin. Two minutes, the same nurse come out and said, Mr. Bourgeois, hey, baby, hey, what I got, huh? You got more than one, too, Mr. Bourgeois. More than one, too, what you mean? I got twins? She said, no, you got triplets, you got three of them. Then I understood you to said, I got three? That's right, you got three? For true, I got three? For true, you got three? Three? Three. Three? Three. You guarantee I got three? I guarantee you got three. Well, it's only right and proper, I should have. Three. I'm the head sailor in there for the 3M company in South Louisiana. I should have three. He turned that other kid and gave him three cigars. He was hitting the door. He said, where the hell are you going? He said, I'm leaving you. I'll drive a truck for the 7 Up company. <laughs> you got to cook a little faster than that. I got to put you on a little faster than that. Now, now, now you're going. Who we yeah. Put this pot on there better too. In just a few moments, I'm gonna, if, I, if I can see that that okra is tender, I'm gonna put them crawfish in there and mix it all together some more, you know? And it's good, it tastes good, it looks pretty and it tastes better than it looks, I'll tell you that for true. Now I got to see how that chicken is doing on that contraband while I'm up to do that too, all right? Man, you got to come to a better boil than that. I don't want it to boil over, though. It's hot. It's hot. Now, into this right here in just a few moments, I'm going to put a pound of peeled crawfish that have been peeled and deveined, <laughs> whatever that means. Now, we got a tasting spoon here. That okra, that okra's getting tender. And it's boiling. It's boiling up a storm there. This is a tasting spoon. I love to taste. It's hot. <laughs> Tastes good. And I'm gonna have to put that crawfish in there in just a minute. I'm gonna stir it one more once. It's boiling now, like it should. 
When you see those on your arms are clearing up, getting clear, that means that okra going to get clear too, not clear like on your arms, clear like okra. Put that there. And I'm going to put these crawfish on there with the fat and all. Now that doesn't have to stay in there but about 20 minutes. Maybe 30, but 20 minutes is about the right, right amount of time. But you don't want your crawfish to come apart. You know, do you want them to get tough, 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 tough? It ain't, it ain't good, no. All right. Not that pretty. Can you all smell that? I hope so. Oh, yeah. Whew. I think I ought to put a little hot sauce in there just a little bit. But I'm not going to do it. I'm going to use my want power. I've got a lot of want power. Most people got willpower. It means you will do most anything. <laughs> want power means you ain't going to do it. All right, now you're looking good there. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Put the lid, cut the fire down a little bit. I got, I got to stir that chicken and get it going better than it's doing right now. I can tell you that. Oh, yeah. I want to tell you a story before I get over there. I want to tell you one quick story. I got a friend that fished down in that meat river where I knew where I lived in French settlement a long time ago. And he'd go fishing, and every time he got back to, the, to Port Vincent where he launched his boat, he always had a boatload of fish, all kind of fish. Gar, shoe pick, some people call them grinnel, big mouth bass, little mouth bass, Brims, succulent, that's a, a crappie or a white perch, depending on where you're from. Sometimes even a little alligator about four or three feet long. And he uh, come back there one day and the game warden was there. He said, man, you caught some fish. He said, you damn right. He said, I would like to go with you sometime. Be glad to have you, warden. When you go in some more? Tomorrow morning, 3 o'clock a.m. in the morning. You be here at 3 o'clock, you can go. If you ain't here, you ain't going. He won't say, I'll be there. I'll guarantee I'll be right there. He said, well, I'll be leaving 3 o'clock. Next morning at 3 o'clock, the game warden was there. And he got on that boat, and they started down the Meat River. It's going down there, and it's dark at 3 o'clock in the morning when the moon goes down down there. Believe me, it's dark. Dark is the inside of a cow. But he's got about a tree line, and just as daylight, he cut the motor, jump out the anchor, reached right in front with him, and got a little brown box about one feet long and a half a feet high or deep. Reaching in, got a stick of dynamite. He stuck a little fuse in there, a little short fuse in there, and then put a cap and put in that short fuse in that cap and then crimp it down real good with his teeth. Puff on his cigar, put it on that little short fuse, chunk it out, and then he real bloom. Fish everywhere. He's picking them up with both hands, put them in the boat. Put them in the boat. That game warden couldn't say a word. He said, man, finally, he said, man, don't you know that's against the law? Don't you know I'm the game warden? I'm going to put you on the jail. You ain't supposed to do that, no. My friend didn't say a word. He reached and got that little box again. He got another stick of dynamite, put another cap in that, another little short fuse. Grip it down real good. <sighs> Puff on his cigar. Put a little short fuse. Chunk it, put, put that in the hands of that game warden. Say, look, you're going to talk a fish. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me pour myself a little wine. That is a, a red wine. I like red wine more than white. That's how come we got red wine. And I got this beautiful concert here. I got to taste that to see just exactly what it is. Oh, that's good, yeah. Mmm, mmm, The crumb of crackers up in that is even more better. I like it just like it is with crackers or without crackers. Mmm, -hmm. Now here is a little, a little bit of that. I'm not gonna put that in there. Let me put my napkin like I'm supposed to, like a gentleman. <laughs> put that there. Tucked it in my belt so it won't drop on the floor, no. Let's go. Now, come here to me. 
Now this is the okra and crawfish and mushroom that I fixed earlier so I'd be sure I had some for me to eat now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> Oh, man, I guarantee. Ooh, 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 ooh. Come on here, Oakland. Mm, good thing I had that napkin. Let me grow fish, grow fish. I want you to know that that is damn good stuff. <laughs> and with a little sip of wine to help you. Southern wine that needs just a little bit of salt. <laughs> you got to admit that pretty yet. Oh, wait a minute. You know I forgot the most important thing? Yes. Oh, it's looking good. I guarantee that's a fine one. Oh, boy. Hello there, I'm Justin Wilson. I've cooked chicken every possible way over the years. Baked, broiled, barbecued, roasted, fried, in jambalaya, in gumbo. So one day many years ago when I put a chicken in a plastic cooking bag with all kinds of stuff that smells really good while it's cooking, I had run plumb out of names to call it. That's where it's chicken I don't know got its name. I just did not know what to call it. That doesn't matter one bit because when you taste it, you won't care what its name is, I guarantee you. On this show, which I made 25 years ago for Mississippi Educational TV, I showed how to cook chicken. I don't know, and chicken on Dewey Gumbo. Somebody asked me recently if I really get up in the middle of the night to make a roux like the one in this gumbo. Well, I used to do it very, very relaxing and gave me a chance to think about my problems, both in my work as a safety engineer and in my personal life, I guarantee. Try it sometime. It takes so long to make a good dark roux that you can solve a lot of problems just stirring it for an hour or so. Oh boy, how y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. You know how come the chicken crossed the road, huh? Uh, ready to run away from them Cajuns, I'll tell you right now, because Cajuns will eat most anything, and they love to cook chicken. They love to eat chicken. That's for true. I'll tell you that right now. And uh, today I'm going to cook you some chicken gumbo with andouille in it. That's a sausage that's a, that we make in Louisiana just for making gumbo. It's a gumbo sausage. It's spelled A-N-D-O-U-I-L-L-E, on doing. Anybody know how to spell that? I guarantee <laughs> And it's a wonderful sausage, saucisse, sausage. It really is. Now, right now, though, what I would like to do is just tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story before I get started. Because I like to did that. I like, just like to get myself in a good humor and everybody else is looking at me. Years ago in Baton Rouge, when they had just one precinct for the police station, they got a call there from an old maid, female lady woman. She wasn't making gumbo, no, they just got a call from her. 
And she say, brought yourself and wrapped now. And the dispatching man on the telephone say, what's the trouble, lady, huh? She said, there's a man next door with indecent exposing himself to me, and I don't like that some, none at all, any. Well, they send one of them petroleum cars right now. <laughs> the red light blinkety, 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 the syringe on full blast. And they get there, and you get out, the policeman cop, go to the door, flap, 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 knock on the door, and this lady brought herself to the door. She said, brought yourself with me. He followed her right into her bedroom. And she pointed next door and said, look at that. That man indecent exposed himself to a maiden female woman like me, and he'd look over there next door, and there's a man in his bathroom shave himself. Got one of them high windows that hit him right here on the chest. And he said, Lady, I can't took that man downtown for indecent exposing himself. All I can see is his head, neck, and shoulder in that high window. She said, Stood up on his box over here, get a much more better view, I guarantee. <laughs> now, What I got you in this pot is what I'm going to tell you about how to make. I got some chicken. That's a, a baking hen that I'm going to use. Right here, I got the rest of the stuff I'm going to put on that. You don't have to put much on this, really and truly. I uh, got some saucies right here, too. That's a gumbo sausage. First, you make a roux. You know that. And to make a roux, I put about three quarters of a cup of olive oil in there, olive oil. And I also, too, I put about a cup and a half of flour. You put about uh, two to one. And you cook that until it's, till you think, that's going to burn. But that's not what it did. See, it got to cook like Dutch chocolate right there, you see? That's so pretty. Stir them roux. That's the roux right there. That roux is... I'm going to put the rest of the stuff on that roux and cook it in there a little bit before I put the chicken. I got one big onion. It's about a cup. One cup of onion, a large onion. Put that on the roux. Turn the roux up a little bit. Not much goes in, not much seasoning goes in chicken gumbo because it don't need much. You stir it into them roux. And you cook them onion until they clear. Well, you think they're clear now. You can't read the newspaper through them, but they look clear, you know. Oh, man, that's a good rule. No, oh, that's the kind we like to make sandwiches out of, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I say that all the time. Now, as soon as I get this going like this, get this over here like this, like that, get those onion kind of clear, then I'm going to put Something else. Now, a lot of people, when they make chicken gumbo, they brown their chicken off. What we call brown off, we brown off, and sometimes use the grease where we brown them chicken off to make the roux. But I want to tell you, that's hard to do. So I don't do it that way, no. And also, too, it doesn't, it does, to me, it does not give the flavor to the gumbo. When you brown the chicken off, you, you lose some of the flavor of the chicken. So what I do is, when I get my onion clear in here and get a little juice, which I got a little juice already, I put my garlic, which is just one large clove of, clove of garlic, chop up real fine. In the reason, I always wait till I got juice, like I always told people. The garlic will get hard and lose its flavor if you don't did that. Now, I got that like that, put it on there, and I got a few other little things I got to put on here too. Like, uh, I use wine when I make my gumbo. I got four cup of sauterne, and four cup of water that I'm going to put on here. What I like to do is just put my water first and get my roux kind of mixed with them water. Turn the fire up where well, I'm going to get some hot on it. But you got to watch them hot with them roux because you can burn a roux, but not that you get some water on it like that. Put it in and get this. It looks like it's not going to mix, but it is. Whoo, I guarantee it's going to mix. I got that on there like that. The next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little of my seasoning on there, like uh, two tablespoonful of, uh, how you call it, uh, Worcestershire, Lee and Perrin. It's a good Cajun name there, Perrin. One, two, two. Tablespoon full of them 
how you call it, Worcestershire sauce. Now, I'm going to put some, if I had a fresh hot pepper, I'd put that on there. But I don't got that, so I'm going to lo use Louisiana hot sauce. Now, you can use this, or Tabasco. This is made from cayenne pepper. Tabasco is made from uh, Tabasco pepper. I use both of them. I, I like this a little bit better. And what you, you put as much as you want to. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put about a, you know, a little more on there. Because I like hot sauce. I think I'm going to put a little more. Put that on there, and you see that's beginning to get hot. Bubbling up at least a little bit. Make them roux. Oh, boy. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the sausage in there. See that? Ooh, you smell the smoke on that. That's good. Put that on there. And put some chicken. Now, it takes about one to two pounds of chicken. I got a little bit more than that in this bowl already cut up. And I'm going to put most of it in there. But I want to be sure I got room, and I put the pieces I like most of all, which is all of the chicken, <laughs> the drum leg, second joint. And when you cut up chicken for gumbo, you do it a little bit different than you do ordinarily for other things. Like this second joint there, I cut off part of the meat and put there. And I love the back. You know, the part what go over the fence last. I like that too. <laughs> it's got the flavor there. And I love the gizzard. See, I cut that in half, but in case somebody else like gizzard too. We put that on there. And that ought to be close to enough meat on there and still hold on to the pot. We don't want it to lose the pot. We'll put this down here, out of the way, in these two. Stir that around a little bit. Get them roux going good, and it's going good. And guess what? Four cup of sauternes wine. And the reason why, how come I quit putting them chicken in there, I want to be sure I get all the wine in there. And it do just that. You see that? Now I got to put some salt. And you got the salt to taste. Now you got a whole big chicken in there, and that's going to take some salt. Let's see. One teaspoonful, and I want to be sure I don't uh, lie to people about the teaspoonful, you see. I'm going to put about two and a half teaspoonful of salt, and then after I let that cook a while, I'm going to taste it. What I'm going to do is going to taste that and see if there's enough, enough salt on it. And stir it around a little bit. Because that roux is going to come out of there all right, going to be just like it's supposed to be dead all the time. Isn't that pretty? And it's going to be good. Let me tell you something about this bongo, gumbo there. Bongo, some of them people call it. What you did with this, now you cook this today and don't serve it today, no. Put it in your icebox tonight and tomorrow. Bring it to a boil and let it simmer for about an hour, and then eat that, because it tastes more better then. Whew, it always does. That's for true. It really does. Now, and when we serve this, we serve it with filet. Now, you notice there's no okra in this, so it's not thick. But filet is the leaf of the sassafras tree. It is taken off the tree about the second or third week in September, where I live, and we pound it. We pound that a sassafras leaf until it's just right to a powder, a real powder. Now we're gonna let that cook a little bit because I got something else I want to do in here. And I can't. Put this out of the way. Some more chicken. Got the chicken there. All kind of good is here. Whoo, yeah, look at that. Look at that nice. And we got, we got a, a, a roasting pan with a turkey bag. It's just a big turkey bag. I got this on purpose. Put this turkey bag here. Now, I've already sprayed this pan real good with Pam in case the bag broke and it's too hard to clean the doggone thing if it's, uh, you don't put some Pam on there. It, would, it really helps. I don't know what I did without that before it happened. I really don't. I grease the pan with olive oil, everything else. I can tell you that. Now, in this bag, I'm going to put oh, about a, nearly two tablespoons full of flour. And I'm going to shook it up. 
Now, like I try to tell people all the time, always put them flour in these baking bags and shake it up good. Get it all over that bag. It's going to lump up anyhow if you don't look out. Then you got to reach your hand in there and spread it out some so that you'll know you cooked with flour. That's how come you do that. Spread it out real good. Then wipe the hand off, keep it from getting all over you. You know how that is. <laughs> now this dish here, I'll tell you something about it. We cooked it one day, sir and I cooked this one day, and it turned out real good. And she says, you stand, what are you going to call that? I say, hell, I don't know. So we call it chicken, I don't know. That's what this is. And it's a real fine dish and simple to make. That's the thing about it. And you don't have to worry too much about it. Remember, cooking in a bag, your time, cooking time is cut about a third. Now take this, this is, I've got two fries cut up. in quarters, just quarter them. And I'm gonna put some red pepper and salt on each piece of chicken. And I'm gonna put them in the bag. Each one, each little piece of chicken goes right in the bag. Now this is gonna have to take some figuring on this pot, this pan rather, because the pan ain't too big. Put some red pepper, not too much. And salt, all you want. Get that side with both of them, red pepper and salt. Put this in there too. And I got to kind of put that on top a little bit to be sure I got enough room. Now, you notice that I'm putting one part of the quarter, the second joint quarter on one side. I'm going to put the breast on the other so I'll know where it is and when I start to serve it. I usually do that, sometimes I forget. You know, <laughs> it's not hard to forget most anything. But I put this up with the, ah, whoo, you kid, that is gonna be good, yeah. That pepper gets to me though, I'll tell you that. And it's hot, but not too hot, not any hotter than black pepper. People say, all that red pepper? They know it's hotter than on the black pepper, and the thing about this, you can digest this, and black pepper, you can't digest that. In the way, like eating a piece of stove wood. That's right. I'll tell you the truth. Put them red pepper on there. It would be good if you just put it in there and cooked it like this, but it's much more better with what we put on there. I can tell you that for true. No. Notice how I got that kind of stack up pretty? Look good, don't it? Yeah, hey, man. Come here, red pepper. Ooh, I'm gonna have to go wash my hand when I get through with this. That's what I'll tell you that right now. Because I may rub my high and that'll be bad. <laughs> that looks so good. And it all, it all good. Now I'm gonna get that there. Put this back over here out of my way. Get this out of my way. And I got to go rinse my hands off. Boy, you know, I, I, I cleaned some crab the other day, and I still got a couple of cuts, and that hot pepper gets to them cuts. Oh, I mean, now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some onion, not many, just four cup. Four cup onion, put them on top. <coughs> excuse me, moi. That means excuse me if you don't know. That's a cup of of sari, one cup of sari, spread on top. One cup of bell pepper, sweet pepper they call it, for some places, we call it bell pepper down where it is. Spread on top, get all that. One cup of fresh parsley, spread on top. We got a uh, tablespoon full of garlic, chopped up, put on top. Now, we gonna put a cup of water, notice I put that in front, Put the water in the front. But I'm going to haul off and put a cup and a half of salt turn all over the doggone thing. Mm -hmm. Now you 
you talk about good, it's got to be good. But I save a little of that out there because I got a little lean pan I'm gonna put on there about a tablespoon full of lean pan. That's a tablespoon full. And I got to put also two, about a tablespoon full of soy sauce. And I don't mess with that stuff too much. Because it, it's got a, I mean, uh, by that I cook with it a lot, but I always measure it practically exact. And here's one that I absolutely measure exact. One half teaspoon full of Peixo bitters. This is a secret I've been keeping to myself for a long time. And I'm giving it to everybody now because I realize, just like money, I can't take it with me. <laughs> Even if they had an armored car and put my bitters in it, I never saw one in a funeral procession in my life. You know that? <laughs> Not a one. Put that on there. Get all of that in. But you measure that carefully. Whatever I say, do look out there. I most love out some of this beautiful garlic. Whew. The one that did that. Now, what I'm going to did is pour this over the whole thing. I mix it with them wine. And I'll show you something else. You notice I salt and pepper them chicken. I put a little more salt on account of the vegetable. They ain't got no salt on them. Now, we got that. I'm gonna tie this. Tie this bag up like you're supposed to did, real good. Tight, tight, tight. Cook it in an oven at 350 degrees because you do not cook anything in a bag more than 350. They, they say 400, but I have a safety man, and I say put 350 in your jar. Now, what I got to do is punch some hole on there to be sure that I got it right. I'm going to punch 12 holes, but punch them on top. One. Two. Three, four. That's four we're going to put on there. Five, six, seven, eight. Four of them trees, twelve, huh? Put four more over here. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put them on the oven over there that I got preheating at 350 degrees. In this chicken, you let it cook about an hour and a half, maybe a little more. Let me tell you this, as long as it look all right, you want to cook it till it comes off the bone. It takes just about two hours. It tastes more better if it cooks that much. Oh, that's pretty, yeah. Woo, come on here, you. I'm going to put this on the oven. I've got to shake my gumbo in just a minute. Put this on there. Try to keep your bag from touching the oven so it won't burn. Because the bag will burn a hole in it if it gets too hot. It's simple, you know that? I guarantee. Let me cast my eye on this gumbo to be sure she's all right. Ha oh, ha. Oh. Man, go ahead on there. Got to cook quite a while. And you wanted to cook a while. Actually, we make gumbo at home. We figure we're going to cook it about five or six hours. The first time we cook it, the second time, a couple of more, and I'm gonna put this out of the way here, get out of my way. Ooh, boy. Now I'm telling you something about that chicken I don't know. It's gonna surprise you. And cooking all this chicken, I gotta tell you all the story. Years ago in Crowley, Louisiana, when I lived down, and this is a true story. There was a fellow down that had a meat market, a poultry market, actually what it was. And that's before they had all the beautiful stores with all the stuff wrapped for you. You had to go in there and get you your chicken. They did have them at least dressed. And I can remember when they did, you had to go in the coop and get them. But this lady went into that poultry market one day and she told this friend with me, the butcher, she said, look, have you got any nice, good bacon hen, huh? Kind of like the one I put in the gumbo. Oh, he said, very good, I guarantee. She said, well, I want one. And he didn't have but one chicken left. He'd been busy as he can be. And he reached down at eyes, that crushed eyes, and 
let me see if I got more. She said, let me see a good one. And he put up there and he said, on the scale, he said, five pounds. She said, I'm going to have company. I don't think that's quite enough. He said, wait just a minute. I'll give one away a little bit more. He reached down the same chicken, put the chicken in the eyes. He just put it in the eyes and put it back up on the scale and put his thumb up there with it, you know, where she could not see his thumb. He pressed down the scale. He said, six and a half pounds, weigh a pound and a half more than that other one did, lady. She said, well, that's fine. He took it and put it on a piece of paper. She said, I'll tell you what. I don't know how much company I'm going to have. You better give me both of them chicken, I'll guarantee you. <laughs> oh, but yeah, got a little rice. And what I'm going to do is put a little rice first. Oh, you know how the rice stand every grain apart. Oh, it's so easy to cook. The rice. Now, this is when you put your filet. Put your filet, F-I-L-E, with an accented U on the E. File, a fella asked me once. He said, I put them file in my gumbo, and all I did was make it taste rusty. He put a doggone file in there. Didn't know nothing here. <laughs> all right, now we got them chicken on the gumbo. Now, there's a piece of chicken, what I wanted. The very one, what I'm looking for, right there. Put them on there. I want enough of this because I'm going to eat it. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I'll put that right there. And I'm going to put the lid back on this because I want it to stay hot. Now, I got a little place over here so I can get that chicken I don't know on this because that, whoo, that's good. I'll take the part what's got the, yeah, yeah, the part what go with the fence last. Look at that. Don't that pretty? A little juice on that, too. Put that right there. Sit myself down. Get everything just, just right. Now, get my napkin spread on my lap and pour a little wine. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I got a friend, old fella getting up there in age. In uh, one morning, about 2 o'clock a.m., o'clock in the morning, he woke himself up and he got, he got chest pain. He told his woke his wife up, his name is Broussard, woke his wife up and say, uh, Mama, I'm sick. Whoo, I feel bad. He said, my chest, I feel like somebody squeezed me real tight. She said, we better call Dr. Boudreau. He said, no, 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 don't call him. He ain't got no, no old doctor. All the old doctor gone. Ain't got nothing but these young doctors. They don't know nothing. Don't call them. Say, oh, yeah, I feel so bad. I feel so bad. She said, I better call the doctor. He said, oh, no. Oh, yeah. So she went to the phone. She called Dr. Boudreau. She brought herself in. I lived just two hours away. Put his pants on over there with a little black bag. He walked to the side of the bed. Say, Mr. Broussard, where are you hurt? Mr. Broussard looked up and say, you the doctor. <laughs> you told me where I hurt. <laughs> oh, he said, come on, Mr. Broussard. Tell me where you hurt. Maybe I can help you. He said, you the doctor. Like I told mama, you young doctor don't know nothing. You told me where I hurt. Dr. Boudreau said, Ms. Broussard, will you go call Dr. Melanchon on the phone and ask him to come here? She thought for the phone. You know, Mr. Broussard said, just a minute, Dr. Melanchon, don't that the veterinarian, huh? <laughs> Dr. Boudreau said, yeah, and he's the only doctor in town I know of can look a jackass in the face and throw away hurt, I guarantee <laughs>
Southern wine that needs just a little bit of salt. You got to admit that pretty ass. Oh, wait a minute. You know I forgot the most important thing? Yes. Oh, it's looking good. I guarantee that's a fine one. Oh, boy. Hello there, I'm Justin Wilson. I like to make casseroles and I can take most anything to make a casserole and make it taste good. In fact, I like just plain old macaroni and cheese casserole. I can't even remember how many ways I've cooked eggplant in casserole. That's why I write cookbooks so I can go back and look. The eggplant appetizer that I cooked on a series I made for Mississippi Educational TV more than 20 years ago is particularly good. Watch how I made it, then try it and see for yourself. On the same show, I showed how I make a roux with tomato sauce, a variation on the basic roux recipe, and how I cook boiled burr artichoke. Makes me hungry just thinking about it. I guarantee you. Mm. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me. I guarantee. This is an artichoke that's been trimmed and cooked. Now, my papa, he didn't like artichokes, no. He told me one time, I'd just as soon eat a pine bar as an artichoke. So the next time I fixed this recipe, we got him a pine bar and put it on his plate. <laughs> now, I ain't gonna tell you what he said about that. <laughs> but when he tried his recipe, he changed his mind, and from then on, he's fighting for his bar artichoke just like the rest of us. And we're gonna fix that a little later. But right now, we're gonna show you how to fix something else. To start a meal off with, cause that's what this show is all about, appetizers. Now we're gonna start with an eggplant appetizer a la Justin, a la Justin. Now I'm gonna show you an eggplant. Now I don't mean a chicken either. That's an eggplant right now. You can do more with this vegetable, I think, than any other. I guarantee. Now, I'm gonna peel just a little bit of this to show you what I mean about peeling an eggplant. You wanna peel it to where you be sure you don't leave any of this black or green on there, because that, that has a, a bunch of bitterness to it. You see that? And I left a little right there and I'm able to get that off. That's peeling an eggplant. <laughs> now, I got one right here that's already peeled. <laughs> and I'm gonna slice that lengthwise to show you how we did that. See that? Now, now I'm gonna put that, that's about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch Thick, that's how deep that is. We put that in some, we got that what's already soaking in salt water. The marinating, soaking, some people call it, I call it that. Now the reason you marinate that is because this eggplant got a certain bitterness about it that this takes out. And we generally marinate them about two hours. Now, I got some that's already marinated right here, see? Now we drain that and rinsed it off real good to get most of the salt off, but we still kept some of it on there. Now, I've got a root that's already fixed over here. Can you see that? That's your roux. We made this roux with tomato sauce. First, we browned the flour. First, you make a roux. Then we poured tomato sauce on it and brought it back to about the color that it was. That's that right there. Now, I'm gonna add some seasoning to that. First, I chop up one leaf of celery. Put it on now. And stir that in. And then we put a small amount of parsley on that. Ooh, that's wonderful seasoning. People just use it for garnishment, but they just don't know what I know, what a wonderful seasoning that is. And we stir that on there too. Now I got a cup of onions. Mm. The invention of twin beds, right there. 
<laughs> and we put that on now. And we stir that into them roux. Hoo-wee. And also, too, I don't want to forget them bell pepper. We put on that. And I got some garlic that chop up real fine. It's usually a good idea to kind of let your stuff juice up a little bit before you put your garlic on there. But we don't have time today. We're gonna put it on there right now. Now. And we stir that up real good. And we cook this about 20 minutes over low, low heat to be sure that it don't burn itself, you know? But right now, I'm gonna change and put one up there that I done hauled off already and cooked for 30 minutes. Now, to this right here, I'm gonna add a little something to that, make it more better, like a cup of and a half Whew. claret wine. Don't that pretty? That tastes good too. I get our own tea. Hmm. Hmm. We stir that around. Get that mix up. One tablespoon of Worcestershire rooster sauce. Pour on. Measure that real careful, like. Then we're gonna haul off them and put the um, one teaspoon, Ooh, hate to insult myself, one teaspoon of Louisiana hot sauce. Make that real careful, too. <laughs> and we stir that up, and we got to put a little salt to taste, about, um, oh, I would say, about, oh, that's a table, teaspoon and a half. And we stir it around, and get it all mixed up. And I want to tell you something. If this is, if it gets too thick, well then you add water, and you cook it just about an hour until all the vegetables are real done, and the wine got a chance to blend up with them tomato sauce. To take the bitter out of that, and I'm gonna put this down here out of my way too. I already got some fixed right here. Now, over here, I got the frying pan skillet black one. What I done put about oh, three tablespoons full of olive oil on that. And I'm gonna fry just a few eggplant to show you how we start that. That's right. Go ahead and fry it there, you. We put that on there and let them fry. That's the eggplant what's been marinated and then rinsed and all them kind of things. You know, I keep telling you about they've been marinated and they've been rinsed and they've been soaked and all that. People are always ask me, how come you did that? How come you did that? And all that kind of stuff. Why? Well, in French, we, in South Louisiana, they don't say why, they say how come. <laughs> and, and, and but why? You know, I never will forget, there was a school teaching lady women in Baton Rouge it had a little boy cheering as he come across from the Mississippi River there, from one of them little kids in town. And everything she said, he said, how come? How come this? How come that? How come this? How come that? <laughs> she got so tired of how come, she don't know what they did. And finally one day, she said, don't say how come, say why. He said, how come why? <laughs> Watch here, I want to kind of clean that off. Be sure I don't left nothing like that up there. Get this right. Put this spoon over here. Now, I'm gonna put this out of my way. I better leave that up here. Don't wanna, don't wanna part with that hot sauce, no. Put that out of my way. And I'm gonna tuck this skillet down too. But I don't need that some more. 
now. Come. I got something right here I already did. Hmm. Not that pretty? Huh? Now that's some eggplant we don't fry till that's tender. See? Now I got a layer of eggplant on this pan right here. I'm gonna sprinkle that with some Romano cheese. Ooh. Man, that smell good. You got to like cheese for it to smell good, though. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put another layer. No, first what I'm gonna did there, I'm gonna put another layer, all right, but I wanna haul off there and put a little of them sauce without even spend a long time making. Ooh-wee. Ain't that pretty? I guarantee that pretty. Uh oh look out there, you. Just spread a layer of sauce. And then we're gonna put another layer of eggplant. Oh, still. Mm -hmm. Put a little eggplant. Ooh, wee, you talk about. See, and that just melt them cheese right on down. Mm -hmm. I guarantee. And taste good. Whoo. Put that on there like that. Leg plant. Leg cheese. A layer of sauce. I used to make this a lot. I just sing a little chant to myself there like that. Leg plant, layer cheese, layer of sauce. Let's get that right. <laughs> now, we're not going to put but two layers of this. We're going to put another layer of cheese, another layer of sauce. Ooh, wee. Mmm, that smells good, yeah. Straighten up there. There we go. Got it. Right there. And a layer of sauce. I mean, no damn cheese. <laughs> See, I got my song all wrong. <laughs> that good Romana cheese. Them little lump don't matter, but that's gonna haul off and melt down when I put them good sauce on there. That's hot, yeah. <laughs> now, we're gonna put them sauce to it. You right, mmm, that's good. <laughs> I guarantee that's good. Mm. Now, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. Put this in the refrigerator to chill it real good because it's more better chill. That's for sure. Let me get this out of my way. Ooh. Ah. That is the finished product right there. Make a little slice there. Make a little slice there. A little slice there. Just like you slice them chocolate candies. I'm gonna put that back there where I can get at it a little later. <laughs> now, let's get back to them recipe what I'm told you about at the start of this show. Artichoke. show. We start with four fresh artichoke. Burr artichoke. You know, there's two kind of artichoke. There's ground artichoke, and there's burr artichoke. I want to show you something about this. You see that stem? You don't want that. I do. Most people like it a little bit, but that just gets in your way when you're trying to fix it. You cut that off chunk it away or you can put it in your pot and cook. Then you get this front and you trim off that like that so it'll look pretty and also get them old stickers out of the way. And there's some stickers on that too, you hear? Right there. And then you take a pair of kitchen scissors and trim off these others that are sticky. Just like that. Then, 
See that? Now we put that in a, in a, in a pot that's large enough, got to be large enough to hold this. All for artichoke. Stand them up there and make them look real pretty. Then we're gonna haul off there. Got, we got to cover that. They're gonna float, but eventually they'll sink on down. We're gonna pour about three quarters of a cup of olive oil in. We're making our sauce that we're gonna eat this with too. You don't have to put anything on these artichokes when they're done. Just eat them. Mm -hmm. Now we got some onion chop up. Put that on there. And some two fairly large cloves of garlic and a quarter of a cup of lemon juice. See, that's your sauce. Now, that recipe in the cookbook, my cookbook calls for four or three cup of sauterne wine. <laughs> Take four, it's more better. <laughs> and then, I want to tell you while I did that, I can't help but talk about uh, them preacher was following my friend there. I got a friend was right as they finished in four lane highway down there by Baton Rouge. He was drove down the road. He was not drunk uh, much. He just took all four lane and both shoulders to drove down the road. Kabloom, kabloom, kabloom. And the preaching people was behind him and he worried about him. Kabloom, kabloom. And this Cajun light a cigarette and his car straightened himself up and zoom, the preaching people pass him right now. And he watch him on the rear view mirror, you know, because he's concerned about him for true. And he watch him too close. The road turn, but the preaching people don't. And kabadoo! <laughs> he had one of them lovely live oak tree, what we got in South Louisiana. And man, that drunk drove up there, the drunk Cajun drove up there, and he crawled out of his car, and that preaching people crawled out of his about the same time. The drunk say, you hurt my friend, huh? He said, not a scratching. Whoo, that drunk say, you don't know how lucky you are, no. I guarantee you fill plumb up with luck. The preaching people say, oh, no. The Lord was with me in that automobile. The drunk say, you better let him ride with me. The way you drive, you're going to kill him. I guarantee <laughs> Now, I got to put a little Louisiana hot sauce. I, I put about a teaspoonful of Louisiana hot sauce. I like it a little hotter than that. And about a tablespoon full of Worcestershire. We'll measure this one real careful today. And put a little tablespoon too. <laughs> hmm. Now, I guarantee that's gonna be good, yeah. Now we add enough water to cover that. And we got to put some salt on that, too. Uh, artichokes, I want to tell you. You see, that, that, that'll that cover that. That floats right now, but it'll cover that. Artichokes take a lot of salt. They just eat them salt up. So you've got to put a, a lot of salt on it. That's what I'm looking for, right there. Nearly a tablespoonful of salt for each artichoke. Nearly a tablespoonful. Most nearly. And we put that on a fire with a lid on that. And how you know when that's did? By its tender. We got some right shell. Then you keep it covered. See it's tender? The fog just pull all those leaves off. You keep that covered after you turn the fire off for about, oh, I guess 30 minutes. Now, this is the pot with some bit of Plum, plum down. Right here. Now this one right here, I wanna show you something. I think everybody ought to know this. A lot of people have never eaten an artichoke. These leaves are delicious. That's tender. <laughs> you go ahead and eat that. But inside this artichoke, or the heart, is the heart of the artichoke. You pay a lot of money at the store when you go bought them heart of artichoke to make a salad with or just eat by itself. And I'm gonna take the leaf over there and get right down to the heart of the artichoke. Ooh-wee! 
at Pretty Air. Now this right here, you can kind of taste that, but now we can get down to the part what you should not eat, no. That's this right here, it looks like a tissel. Thistle to you, tissel to me. <laughs> See that? You just pull that off and put it right here. Whoo, don't that pretty. Now that is the goody, I guarantee. I'm gonna put a few leaves back here on that because they are good too. Let me put this back here. Hmm. Oh man, that's fine, I guarantee. Now, I want to tell you something. Every time I get right here at this jogging block, I can't help but talk about a bunch of my friends down in Louisiana, them Cajun, them wonderful Cajun. You know, Cajun love the children. There ain't no two way about that like everybody else. And I got a bunch of them in one family, and all of them are fine looking peoples, except one. He ain't but four feet, 11 inches tall, 17 year old. And they ain't ashamed for him, anything like that. They would just like for him to be like some of others. Some of them are six feet four, six feet three. And he got a daughter that's six feet herself. And they just kind of worry about that. And one day, the father, you about one of them chiropractic people, you know. And he thought maybe he could took this child and maybe he could help him out. He did not know some better. So they drove about 43 miles to town and they get there and they go to this chiropractic people and man, he said, well, we'll try to help. So he took him into his office and he got a table what just about the height of this shopping block. That's what made me talk about that. And he lay him out there and he get four big men. One get a hold of one leg, another one get a hold of another leg, and another one get one arm, another one get another, and they just pull just as hard as they can. <laughs> to stretch them little short Cajun people. He said, now, you got to have them treatment every day for one hour at least. He got to be pulled on like that. And I know you live 43 miles from here and you can't make it all the time, so how come you don't get your family together there and one get one leg, one, the other leg, one arm, the other arm, and you did that yourself? My friend said, okay. So he left. And he did not see this uh, chiropractic people for about three months. And he brought himself to town, he would walk down the street, <laughs> And he see the chiropractic people. Oh, he say, I'm glad for you to see me. The chiropractic man say, I'm glad for you to see me too. How is you son? Oh, he say, he's just fine. Well, he say, have you been treating him like I told you? He say, oh yeah, one hour every day we put him on the chopping block, but we got it home, we use that. And we pull on him one hour like you told me. He said, well, has he grown any at all? He say, not one doggone inch, but he's confessed to 50 unsolved crime, I guarantee <laughs> Now, I got, I got another little appetizing. Whew, and I mean it is, I guarantee. Let me move this back here. Hi. And I've got a frying pan skillet down here. Let me put this, so oh, I can get at a little more better. Now, there I go. In this, I'm gonna make smoked sausage or saucisses in French. A la Justin, that's me, a la Justin. I'm gonna start with two pounds of sausage, what I got chopped up in little, about one inch bite sized piece. We're gonna put this on a frying pan skillet, what we got right here. Turn it fire down a little bit. And then I'm gonna add a quart. A medium oysters, but I want to tell you now, when you go select your oyster, you got to haul off there and be sure you get oyster when you get them in a quart jar or a pint jar or a 12 ounce pint jar. What you did, you be sure they ain't milky looking. Because if, you, if they're that way, they, they're fresh. They're just fresh as they can be. Now, we're gonna put on this, hmm, some sauterne wine. Mmm, it smell good, yeah. Sauterne wine. And we got, uh, got some lemon juice here. We got to put that on there. Got to pull it up here, where to get a good, we well, brought it to a good boil. And then I'm got to put a teaspoon, about a half a teaspoon full of salt. I'm gonna put on this. 
Mm. Now I got some, some of them concentrated garlic here. Garlic, salt. See, that's how come I didn't put but a half a teaspoon. I'm gonna put about a half a teaspoon full of them garlic salt, too, on that. Ooh, get that off my hand, man. And I done put the juice of, of a half a lemon on that. Mm, 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 mm. And I've got to put it just a little hot sauce. It ain't no good without that. That's for sure. Whoo. And I'm gonna let them cook. Just gonna let them cook, just like that. Let's get after it there now and start to cook. Oh, you kid. I got some what's finished right there. And I'm gonna get a few of that, like a piece of saucisse, a sausage, a couple of oysters on a teeth pick, put them there. In fact, I think I'll get another saucisse right now. And I'm also gonna get a little of them eggplant, but I got appetizer fixed right here. Whoo, you stand. Don't that good? And I guess you wonder how come I took the heart of them artichoke out there. I got that for me. <laughs> I took my leaves with me too, just in case I want that too. And I'm gonna put the lid back on this and took myself over here to this table, sit myself down, finish opening them wine, and just haul off, aye, and boil for a little bit in there. Ain't that pretty? I guarantee. Hmm. That's fine. Sauter and wine that needs just a little bit of salt. You got to admit that pretty. Yet. Oh, wait a minute. You know I forgot the most important thing? Yeah. Oh, it's looking good. I guarantee that's a fine one. Hello there, I'm Justin Wilson. One of my favorite meats is lamb, when it's cooked until it's tender and is seasoned well. There just isn't anything that can beat it. I'm not talking about tough old mutton, no, but young tender lamb. Sometimes I like to cook it with mint or serve a mint sauce on the side or make a delicious gravy to pour over it. You're gonna see me cooking lamb 25 years ago on one of the first shows I made for Mississippi Educational TV. There weren't many public television stations back then, so not many of you had a chance to see this show. I hope you like my recipes for leg of lamb, pork chops with dressing, and baked pork chops. I know I do, I guarantee. <laughs> How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me. I guarantee. Whew, don't just sit there and laugh. <laughs> That's more better. I'm going to tell you some stories to make you laugh, I think. So I'll start right now. Down in Crowley, Louisiana, I got a friend that's got a big rice farm, and he raised cattle too down there. And one day he was in his house watching television for the midday news. And flap, 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 somebody done knock on his door, you know. And he goes to the door, and there's one of them bureaucrats. And he don't even introduce himself. He pull a laramated card out of his pocket, and he shoo, <laughs> trunk it right in that cage and face. He say, you see them cards? My friend say, I got to. It's in my eye. <laughs> he say, well, that card give me the authority and the right and the privilege to look at anything I want to on your place. That card say, you can't stop me. I look all I want. There ain't a thing you can do about that. I'm going to look. My friend said, go ahead and look till your eyeballs fall on the ground. <laughs> That's all right with me. So he laughed. And my friend went back in to see the rest of the news. And after a while, he year out there, help, help. 
Won't you help me? Please help, help. Well, he run outside and he go back up his barn where he got a big corral back there and he got his prize Santa Gertrude's bull back there. He go back there and there that bureaucrat running round and round in them prize bull, three step behind him trying to make it three all the time. Trying to make it just two. He get there real close and he run by, help, help, please help me. Help, help, please help me. You watch him come by there the third time and he say, help. He said, show him your card. Show him that card you got there. <laughs> now, today, today, this story goes right along there. We're not going to show beef, no, but it goes right along with it. But we're going to show something else that raised on the farm. A couple of things, in fact. Right now, we're going to show you how to cook a leg of lamb. Now, you know, you ask almost any GI, ex-GI, what was in Australia during World War II. And he gone told you that all, of all his most unfavored meats, lamb and mutton is the most unfavoredest of all. To tell the truth, I don't think that Australian mutton was mutton at all. It was some kind of mountain goat or something like that. Whoo! Did that have a smell? Mmm, I mean aroma. Mm. One you ain't gonna never forgot, I guarantee. But this leg of lamb is different, I guarantee. In the first place, it's young and tender. Look at that, you can tell. Young and tender lamb. Not tough old mutton. And most important, hmm, is the way you cook this lamb. The wine and the mint make the difference. <laughs> That's for sure. And get that out there. Well, I can get at it. And when you serve this dish, even an ex-GI, you're gonna hear him rave about that. Whoo! Now, when you go to the butchering shop, be sure you get lamb that got most all the fat took off of that. And that's important. Because lamb fat's not all that good, no. And also, too, don't forget, hey, butcher, look, I want you to be sure and took them gland, called a musk, musk gland, out of that. That's down in here on the leg of lamb. And I done got that out, right there. Now, I'm gonna wipe this off real good. Let me get my roasting pan up here. Well, I can get at that. Mm -hmm. Put that right there, take it off. Get that lamb wipe off good. And then I'm gonna punch six holes in that. Not all at once, no. Just uh, one at a time. And in that, I'm gonna put a garlic clove, and a little piece of green onion and cut that off right there. And I brought some pepper from my garden down in South Louisiana, cayenne pepper, green cayenne pepper. And if you don't got that, you can use um, some pickled pepper. It's all right. That go all right. Punch them hole in there. Put them garlic and them onion. And shallot, how you call, cut it off. Piece of pepper right in the same place. Go ahead in there, that's good. And we punch one over here. Punch them, put them garlic on that. Onion, cut them off. Got a little pepper. Cut them off too, because you don't want to put all that pepper in there in that one place, too much. Put that on there like that. I think I got room for one more hole here like that. Yeah. I'm not gonna punch, but one, two. And you, let me tell you something else. Don't punch your hole first because you lost it and you can't find it. <laughs> That's bad. Put it on there like that. And this leg of lamb is a small leg of lamb and that's gonna be enough on that. So I'm just going right now, I'm gonna salt and pepper this leg of lamb with red pepper and salt. Man, that's pretty air. Now what I'm gonna do, put that salt on there pretty good. Do the same thing to the other side. And where that butcher people done haul off and took that 
in Moscow, you put some salt and pepper on that too. You don't want to make it feel neglected just because it had the musk took away from it. <laughs> now, I'm gonna haul off and put on this. First of all though, I'm gonna put some olive oil in the bottom of this pan because I'm gonna sear this thing. Let me check my oven there right now. Up oven at 400 degrees to start with. Get that preheated. Now I'm gonna pat some mint, fresh mint, and rub it on there, pat it on there real good. Both sides, this side first because I'm fixing to put that on that pot. Mm. There you go, boy. Isn't that nice? And put the rest of that mint on there. Pat it real good. Mm, that smells good like it is. Now, I'm gonna put this in that oven and see if I can't sear that just the least little bit on all side, all eight sides. Gonna get that dish. Go ahead, start to sear there now. It's hot, whew, I guarantee. Now, you know, when I talk about sear that on all sides, I never will forget this story. It doesn't necessarily have all side, but it, it got two of them anyhow. I got to go down and see my, my friend Alma Piku and her husband, about oh, 12 or 11 miles down from where I live. And I make the mistake of telling somebody I'm gonna brought myself down there. And I get down there, and in a vacant field next to Alma Piku's combination ballroom saloon and dance floor, <laughs> there's 17 or 16 Cajun, and all of them got a hold of a telephone pole. Now, the pole's not holding them up, they're holding the pole up. <laughs> and the pole's on top of the ground, not in the ground. And on top is a little bit of Cajun with a tape measure, trying to get somebody to caught that on the ground. And like a fool, I walk up there and say, what y'all doing, huh? That little kid say, any fool know what we're doing, we're trying to measure how high this pole is. <laughs> I say, well, look, lay it down on the ground. You can tell how long it is easy like that. He said, we know how long the doggone thing is. We want to find out how high it is. <laughs> now in this right chair, I'm going to put a tablespoon full of Worcestershire sauce, rooster. <laughs> that help out the flavor of most anything. A tablespoonful. And in this um, cup here, I got a tablespoon full of dry mustard. I'm gonna put on this sauterne wine. That's what I got you, you know. <laughs> that dry mustard, I wanna tell you what it did. It take the flavor all over. Look at that, I'm stirring with a knife. Huh. Don't see some spoons, so I'll just use this knife. <laughs> this, uh, this dry mustard will take that flavor all the way through there. All the way through. Now I got to check, I got to turn them lamb, cause I hear it searing real good. Let me turn them over. You hear that? Ooh, I guarantee. And it's sear right there too. It's sear for just one little minute in there. While I get my stuff stirred up good, I don't wanna put something in there when they stir up real good, I guarantee. Mmm, that smells good. <laughs> now I'm gonna take them lamb out. Hold still. I'm gonna take it out here where you can see that. And I'm gonna haul off there and pour my wine. Lee and Perrin, Worcestershire sauce, and dry mustard right over that. You talk about good. That's good, yeah. Mmm. Now I'm gonna put a, how you call it, a lead on that, and put that rascal right back in that oven, and let her cook. Now I would advise you to lower your heat just at least a little bit because that oven may kind of pop every now and then. 
it does that to let you know that lamb don't like what's going on. <laughs> now, you got to base them lamb pretty frequent, about every 15 or 10 minutes. And if you run out of juice, add about a half water and half wine going light on the water, you know? <laughs> now, I got something else I'm gonna fix here for you. Mm -hmm. Pork chop. Not that pretty. We're gonna fix bo uh, baked pork chop. Now you need six center cut pork chop, what I got here. What I done already, salt and pepper with red pepper and salt, and I browned that off in a large, a great big skitter. Try to get them all browned at the same time, quick as I could. And I put them in this dish, right here, that I put just a little oil on the bottom to keep it from sticking. Put each one on the bottom. You don't want them to even overlap, because you want a little room in case you got the, the base. Then I took a large bell pepper like that, see? Chop it off, and I made rings, just like that. Like them ring there. And I got them already fixed right here. I put a ring right there, a ring right there. In fact, I just ring the daylight out of every one of them pork chops. <laughs> Get that fixed. Ain't that pretty? Now, I'm gonna Take an ice cream scoop. We ain't gonna put ice cream on this, no. <laughs> We're gonna put rice. Good Louisiana rice. We put them in them scoop like that. We put that in that ring of bell pepper and press it down at least a little bit. We add on every one of that. Whoo-wee, you talk about good. Press it down just at least a little bit. Yes, sir, man. Mmm, that's fine. This not only look good, it's a beautiful dish to serve when you got company, people that you don't know real good. I mean, <laughs> I get this on there like that. I ain't near true either. Can't I get this ice cream looking rice on there from this ice cream scoop? and get the rice off my hand so I can handle something else. I'm gonna put an onion. Not a ring, though. The whole doggone thing. I better turn that one over so it won't ring on me now. Put that on there and press it down at least a little bit. Put onion on every one. Wee-wee. Not that pretty. Mm. Put that on your there like that, press them down. Now, you thought I was true. <laughs> but I ain't no. What I'm gonna put on there is a tomato. Now, if, if tomato ain't in season in the, in the too high at the store, get them whole can of tomato, them tomato what got them whole, them can what got them whole tomato on there. Well, you put that on now. You just cut them in half and lay it right on top. Stay still. Now, there you go. Slice your tomato right on top. Mm-hmm, hmm. Man, I tell you, them twin bed onions are strong, yeah. come out just right with six slices of tomato from them one medium-sized tomato. Now, then I empty two number three cans of tomatoes in this pan. This got to be salt and peppered. Got to put some salt and pepper on this tomato because if you don't did that, it's bad. You can use red pepper, black pepper. Black pepper's handy, I'll use that. Now I'm gonna put that on there real <laughs> hygienically, you notice? <laughs> Put it on there like that. <coughs> These are tomatoes what been broke up real fine. I'm gonna pour that down in there. Mm-hmm, that look good. 
You want to put enough to base, but you don't want to put too much. You don't want to cover your pork chop. That would be too much. Ooh-wee. Get over there. Ain't that fine? Mmm. That smell good, too. Now, we season that with salt and pepper, and we cover that. We put a lid on that. This right here. And we're gonna put this in the oven, 350 degrees. That's what we're gonna do. But before I put that in there, who we? That's hot. <laughs> I'd look at that pan real quick. Get that out of there like that. I'm just gonna show you how that look. Well, I'll put the other one in there. Don't that pretty, huh? I guarantee that's pretty, yeah. Now we put that at 350 degrees. That's what that go on, 350. And get this out of my way. And I'm gonna put this back here. It's not that hot now, thank goodness. Put that right there. Mmm. Got to get this out of my way. Start over clean. Now, we're gonna fix pork chop one more time some other way. Mmm. Look out, don't spill the wine, Justin. Hoo <laughs> wee. Not that pretty. Now. Was that pretty, huh? I guarantee it is. Now, what I'm gonna do right now is make a breadcrumb dressing. I got two cups of breadcrumb. Crush up real good. Put that on there. And then, I got to put a little salt and pepper on that too. I'm gonna do it while I'm taught about it, right this minute. About a teaspoon and a half on there. That's about all. That's, that's right what that is. And a little red pepper. We don't want to miss that. I'll get, i lose my diploma. <laughs> I don't put that. Now I'm gonna beat the daylight out of two eggs, chicken eggs. <laughs> you know, they're all kind of, a lot of times I make dressing with duck eggs. They make very good, very good dressing. Lou, we'll give this the Cajun whip. There we go. And to this, we gonna haul off there. Hmm. What that is? Wine, claret wine. Gonna put that on there. Hmm. And whip that just the least little bit. Hmm. And we gonna put that on the breadcrumb. Hmm. And that's fine. Let me get his spoon. Ah, right, one. We're gonna stir that up real good. Mm hmm. You talk about good. I guarantee that's good. I'm gonna put on there some olive oil, which is very good. A quarter of a cup of olive oil. That kind of hold it together too. Make it taste more better and keep it from burning. Also, main thing is it tastes more better. And in the bottom of this. Uh, baking pan what I got there. I got some olive oil on there. Now, here's another time. Onion, cup of onion. I like them grated usually. And I got hid from right here on this table a half of a small bay leaf. I'm gonna break it up in little bitty pieces so you won't know what you bit into when you get it. <laughs> Put that on there like that. And I got some garlic what I done hauled off and sent through the press. The garlic press. We're gonna stir that up. Now that's kind of dry. You don't want this to be dry, no. Let me put a little uh, steak sauce. Hmm. I'm gonna put about two tablespoons full with them steak sauce. You get the kind you like. It don't make some different with me. I got the kind I like to put in here. One. They don't have to be too heaping. And then I'm gonna put about a teaspoon and a half 
of Louisiana red hot sauce. Now, this is cayenne hot sauce. Let me put that on there like this. Mm -mm -mm. Teaspoon and a half. <laughs> put that over there out of my way. And I'm gonna see if I got enough juice. Now, if I don't got enough juice, I'm gonna add water on that. I'll guarantee that's not juicy enough. I hate to put them water on them wine, but I'll did it. <laughs> there we go. Add a little more water, a little more juice. Mm -hmm. That's beginning to smell right. Stir that real good. Just at least a little bit more water. Ooh, it breaks my heart. <laughs> now, we're gonna put all this in this baking pan right there. This casserole dish or baking pan don't make some difference. This is a casserole dish, aluminum. How you call it? Get all your dressing out of that because you need every bit of that because that's good. And we spread that. Come out of there, you. And we spread that on there, all over that bottom of this casserole. Man, man, that's pretty air. Now, what we're gonna put on top of there is pork chop. What we got here. We're gonna salt and pepper that with red pepper. And then we're gonna put that, we're gonna cover that and put it in a 350 degree oven. Hoo-wee. Look at that, man. Ain't that fine? Now, hope it all fits. One. Two. I'm gonna turn that over because I'm gonna do it the other way too. There we go. Two, three, four, five. Who must have done that before? Six. <laughs> now I'm gonna put a little red pepper on that. And a little salt on that too. Look at that, man. We put a cover. We use aluminum foil on this one too. We cover that real good. And we're gonna put this in a 350 degree oven also too. But I'm gonna have to get something out of that to show you how pretty it look already. You know, I've been busy cooking all that stuff like that. <laughs> look at that, don't that pretty? I guarantee we put this on a 350 degree oven and let her cook, 350 degrees. It's not too hot, no, that's fine. Put that over there like that. Now, let me put this out of my way. Here we go. Y'all thought I wasn't gonna eat some of this. You wrong. <laughs> Come here to me, you. Pork chop. Another little pork chop with them good dressing on the bottom. Come here, you. Yeah, just a little taste is all I want. Mm. Oh, guarantee. Pour a little wine. Mm, a day without wine is a day without sunshine. <laughs> Don't forget that. Put that on there with them rice. And a little of them lamb gravy. Whoo, you kid. Ain't that fine? Get some on them rice. But I got to cut a piece of lamb too for me. That's for sure. Turn this over and just cut just a little bit of them lamb. Not too much, just a slab. <laughs> now, sit yourself down, Justin, and eat good. Sauter and wine that needs just a little bit of salt. <laughs> you got to admit that pretty ass. Oh, wait a minute. You know I forgot the most important thing? Yeah. Oh, it's 
looking good. Ah, I guarantee that you find one. Oh, boy. Hello there, I'm Justin Wilson. You haven't really lived until you've attended a cochon de lait in South Louisiana. My wife Sarah and I used to have one every year. We'd invite 50 or so friends from kin folks and neighbors over, dress out a whole pig and let it cook all night by reflective heat in a building I built to cook it in. One year, 500 people showed up. Word had gotten around and we had people there that neither of us had ever laid eyes on before. I love a cochon de lait. We'd spend all day eating, singing, and passing a good time with friends, a tradition that's important to the Cajuns of South Louisiana. That meat would be so tender, it would literally fall apart. I'd use pecan wood or oak wood to cook it, season the meat with salt and pepper and stuff it with garlic. The flavor was heavenly. You can come close to cooking pork as tender and flavorful as the meat served at a cochon de lait when you cook pork roast in a bag the way I did on this show that I made for Mississippi Educational TV nearly 25 years ago. Boy, is it good. Ooh, boy. Hi, y'all. Are. I'm glad for you to see me. I guarantee hey, that's a good Cajun yell this morning. And I got a story I want to tell you. Before we did another thing, I've been thinking about this story all oh, about three or two hours, so I can tell it to you. I got a friend that's rich, whoo, but he used to be land poor. And he used the same barber with me. And one day, oh, about, a, oh, I guess two or one year ago, I was sitting in the barber shop talking with the barber. And then come my friend, he flopped himself down there, and he told him, barber, he said, you know what I'm gonna did? The barber said, ain't a bit of told what you're gonna did since you got all that money, I guarantee. Whew. What you gonna did? He said, well, me and my old lady, we going to Europe. We gonna go down to New Orleans and get on that National Airline plane and fly to Miami. And then we gonna nonstop flip on National Airline all the way to London, England. Then we gonna go change plane, go to Rome and go to Excelsior Hotel there. We ain't gonna get a room now. Get a whole dog on suits, about four tree room. Then we're gonna did the one thing, the only thing my, my wife ever told me she wants to do, and that's go have a private audience with that great man, the Pope. Well, that barber, like a lot of other people, he knows more than anybody else, he said, look, you don't want to fly National Airlines. Whoo, the crew go out and get drunk and fly, you would hang around the next day. The equipment's wore out. And the overseas steward I would do you, they the oldest one. And you talk about going to Excelsior Hotel in Rome, man, don't you know it's run down, the mattress look like the Alps, and the bed bugs organized in groups. <laughs> and the food is terrible if you can get it because the service is so bad you might not get it. And you talk about a private audience with that Pope, you and your wife are gonna go there to see that great man. And there gonna be 50,000 other peoples out there in St. Pierre Square. You just know you're not gonna get no prize. And you're gonna come back and say you did it. Well, my friend said, you know how it is, and I told my wife, you married, you got to, he said, oh yeah, I understood, you got to go. Well, about seven or six weeks later, I was back in the barbershop some more, I didn't stay there all that time, I was back. And he didn't come my friend again, he flopped down that chair, and the barber didn't wait for him to say to him, I reckon you went to Europe, huh? He said, oh, hell yeah. And you wrong about National Airlines, that's the finest airline in the world. Fine young crew, bushy-eyed and bright-tailed as they could be. Brand new 747 aeroplane, too. Whew, and that ain't all. They took me on how you call the flight deck to show me how to run that thing just in case. And you wrong, too, about them stood eye. Man, my old lady kept me buggling the seat the whole way across. I guarantee. <laughs> and they done redid the Exceptional Hotel. Brand new king size bed, foam rubber mattress. Clean, mm, real good. Food, out of this world. Most as good as Cajun food, I guarantee. <laughs> and we're the luckiest in service. Let me tell you something. I knock a little fella down, he's just trying to hand me something. 
And we're the luckiest people in the world, me and my wife and another couple from up north around Shreveport. <laughs> we got a private audience with that great man, the Pope. And we get true, we got to get, well, 30 minutes we die with him. You know that, 30 minutes we die with him. And he talk English most as good as me. And we get true, we got to get how you call the papal blessing. The barber's Baptist, so he's got to explain what that papal blessing is. And what we did, we all four kneel ourselves down. And that great man, the Pope, put his hand on that lady's head, and he blessed her. Put his hand on that man's head, and he blessed him. And good, put his hand on my old lady's head, and bless her. And put his hand on my head, and say, whoo, you ought to change barbers. That's the worst haircut I ever felt, I guarantee. <laughs> Today we're going to cook two pork dishes. Broiled and baked pork chops. We bake them a little bit first and then broil them. And then we're going, and you know, we got, we're going to cook a pork roast. It's a Boston butt. We, we're going to have a ham too, but um, I decided we already got enough ham on this show already, you know. <laughs> but right now I want to show you something what take place in my house not too long ago when we cooked a whole pig, how you call it, a cochon de lait. There you see us put them P.I.G. hog on a wire frame, what we're gonna put, that's not hog, there's a friend with me, and we stuff them good with garlic. You see them garlic? We put that all over that hog. In the loin, in the ham, we put that in the jowl, in the shoulder, every place we can find a place, we stuff them garlic and put it on there good. Then we salt and pepper them hog real good with good salt from Louisiana and red pepper made right down at Port Vincent where I live, Port Vincent where I live. Then we wire that hog to a wire frame. Now that's why we punch through and we tie the hog real good so he won't fall on the dirt or in the fire. Now that fire is built in front of them hog. See them hog there? Now it's on a frame. We turn it both ways. We turn it around and round and sideways round and round too. Now that's tin. It reflects the heat. It cooked them hog real good. Then we blessed, to have the blessing, singing a song, going back to cut the hog up. You hear them singing? That's old Justin helping sing too, I guarantee. Oh boy. You take him up there, drinking a little lemonade, that's what he's got down. There's the P.I.G. hog cook. There's a good friend with me, used to be a pro baseball player. Then we march up there, we put the hog on a big table in my outside kitchen, and we cut the hog up, and it's hot, hot, hot. Watch how fast we handle that meat. That's like looking at a hot horseshoe, real fast. You notice how serial we are about that, because this is serial business cooking a P.I.G. hog. 160 pounds, and that meat is wonderful. All the grease is dripped out on the ground, and that's still there, but it won't hurt you. That's a, that man there is a dental surgeon. He's working out on that hog right now, too. You see that? <laughs> of course, I get a little taste there every now and then. I see another surgeon there from up in Missouri who helped cut them hog up, too. It's real good stuff using them surgeons to cut them hog up. I'll guarantee. <laughs> now, we're going to cook right now some pork. Not as good as them hog. That's the best pork in the world, a cochon de lait. I'll guarantee. Right now, we're going to bake, broil some pork chops. We got them right here. Now. And I know that uh, you see that uh, wine on there. Well, I know why you're gonna bake broad pork chop with wine. We ain't gonna did that. That's just to let you know I haven't forgot about that wine. No, what we're gonna do after the pork chops is most done, we put about a tablespoon full of soy sauce in them wine and pour it in and make how you call a little gravy. We put that on there. First of all, we're gonna spray this with pan so it'll be easy to clean when we get through. We spray this baking pan of dish, whatever you want to call that, with Pam. Then I'm taking these pork chop and salt and pepper them. That's what I'm gonna do. Don't they pretty? Put them salt on that. Both sides. Red pepper. Cayenne pepper. Whew. That's good, yeah. Put them down in here like this. Get another one. Pepper one side. Most lost him, caught that pig, I guarantee. And we put the salt on both sides too. And I want to tell you right now, whoo, 
you talk about good, that's good, yeah. That pork is good, and I love it. Salt and pepper, that good. I want to tell you right now, that pepper will get to you if you don't look out. I put it as far from as I can to keep it from getting to me too good. No, look at that. Don't that pretty? Oh. That wine, and like I'm told you, as I get this most dead, I'm going to put uh, a little wine and soy sauce to make a little gravy to put on rice. You sort of sop it up if you want to. I don't mean dunk, I meant sop too. Not like that. There's a difference in sopping and dunking. Everybody don't know that, but us Cajuns do. I tell you that for true. Yes, sir. Get on there, boy. I tell you, that look like a lot of pepper. It's not. It's about the same as if you use black pepper. Just about the same. Not much different. It's pretty though, huh? At 350 degrees, and I'm gonna let these pork chop bake for about 10 minutes. And then, but right now, I got to go wash my hands. That hot pepper will eat me alive. Whoo, <laughs> yeah. Get that off of there. I want to tell you, you got a least little bit of cut on your hand. Not only will that hot pepper get you, but that salt will let you know right where it is, you hear? Ho, ho, ho. I'll tell you right now, that's true. Whoo. Now, I got my pork chop. I'm going to put them on the oven. It's preheating to 350 degrees. Notice I got that broiler down a little low. I'm going to put that on 10 minutes. And I hope I remember what they did when it go off. Let me put the light on so we can see. Now, I'm going to leave this over here because I want to be able to remember to put them wine in soy sauce. Pork roast. Come here to me, you little old P.I.G. hog. Nah, that's not, there's nothing like when you got a, a whole pig like I got. But right now, I'm going to stuff this devil. I mean, this P.I.G. hog, it ain't no devil. I'm going to put some garlic. Try to find a place, that place. Stuff them down there. Put some of this wonderful garlic down in there. I just happen to have a cayenne pepper what I raised myself. But if you don't got that and you got a pickled pepper, put that on there. And if you don't got that, leave it out. Don't put it on there at all. Now I put a green onion, cut them off, even with the meat, stuff them down in there good. In a little place. Garlic, put that on there. Whoo, come on, boy. I tell you, that hot pepper got me a while ago. Whew. Put that hot pepper in there, put them green onion down in there real good, stuff them. Down where I put a little more. Won't hurt a thing, put a little more in there. Oh, man, you talk about good. That's gonna be so good, I ain't gonna be able to stood it. Whew. Got the pepper. Put that down in there. I, I know a lot of people think, whoo, that's gonna be hot. Only right around where you got the pepper. But not too hot there either. If you like pepper, and I like pepper. Now this is just a little bit of shallow place. I'm just gonna put a piece of garlic down in there. I might just well put a piece of onion too to help it out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a place we can put a little piece of garlic. Make the place, put the garlic, put the pepper, cut them off. Get in there, you rascal. Got to put just a little piece of onion in the milk. Don't want to leave it feeling neglected. Huh. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to salt and pepper this with salt. Pat it good. And a little red pepper, naturally. Then, just so it won't feel bad, we're gonna do it to the same thing to the other side. Ha! Got a place right there. Oh. Yeah, there's a place right there. Got a good place for garlic there. Gonna put them on there, too. Got enough room. Got enough room in that place, that little hole there to put a 
green pepper is hot. Man, I mean it's hot, and don't you forgot that. Them seed is hot. Whoo! Make you know to get athletic on you. <laughs> Garlic. It's such a little piece of garlic. I'm gonna put two pieces down in there. Sure. Piece of pepper. Let's see a piece of pepper. Move on that side. Piece of onion. Green shallot, some people call them. Onion. These are not scallions, oh no. Got a place over here. Come here, God. Gotcha. I got to go wash my hands some more, too, when I get through with this. Hoo wee You talk about. You scratch your nose or your eye. It's just too bad. The salt. Put them salt on there like that. Put them pepper, too, like that. Now, this rolls can be cooked either. You can cook it either with the, on a rack and put foil on it, or you can did what I'm gonna did, which is a lot more easy. And believe me when I told you, it make it taste more better. I'm gonna cook it in a bag. I found out, I got, I found out that these bags a really great thing. First, let me spray this pan just at least a little bit with Pam, just in case. I know I got some here. Yeah, there it is. In case the bag broke, we don't want to have a hard time cleaning this thing up, you know. Whoo! I got to take a look on my pork chop there. But right now, I'm going to put a little flour. I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons full of flour in here. If I can just get them bag to open itself up. It did. That's because it's a safety measure. Then I'm gonna take them bag and shook them up. Shook them up real good. Shook them bag, tote them bar, get them thing jet wrapped. Ha <laughs> ha, guarantee. Now, and you shake all them powder out of the corner. Don't get it in one spot, kind of spread it around a little bit. Now, I'm gonna put them rolls on that right this minute. Go in there, rolls. Got the rose on it. And right here, I happen to have some green onion chop up. Put them on there. And I want to tell you right now, you talk about good, that's gonna be good when I put the last little thing. See, you spread them around in there. Put this out of my way. Get this out of my way. That's where it is. What I'm gonna did just put a cup of wine down in there. Might just well pour it over it. That's a cup of sauterne wine. Whoo, you kid. To make a little gravy, a little juice, to put on something, to put on rice, or to sop up, it don't make some different. Now, I'm gonna tie this up and punch some hole. Twelve hole. Might just well not waste them onion, just put them in there and cook them too. <laughs> Let them go. That's good. Man, you talk about good. Go in a little bit more, boy. A little bit more. Now you're going. Got them bag. Now this is a pretty good sized bag. I like to use the larger bag because it makes it easy to work with. I you know one thing, I've got to go wash my hand because the pepper has got to some cut where I cleaned some catfish the other day. And one of them thinned me. And if you don't mind, I got to go wash my hand right this minute. Done got with it. Whoo, boy. I guarantee you, let me know where it was. Mm. Dry them hand, good, good. Don't wanna, you know, let me tell you, when you got a wet hand or a wet cloth and touch something real hot, it's subject to burning you, I guarantee. Now, this is going into a preheated 350 degree oven. Oh, in the bottom oven, right there. Now, my pork chop is just right for me to put on broil. So we put that on broil. 
Okay, that, and they're brought in real good, I guarantee. Whoo, man. Now, I'm going to put, get this ready to pour some gravy on that in just a second. Oh, I got to punch hole, my goodness alive. You see there, that's a bad thing. If you don't punch them hole, your bag is liable to bust itself. And I'm gonna punch them hole right now. Don't you worry none about that. And even got hot. But if you don't punch them hole, it's gonna have a explosion. <coughs> Boom, just like that. That's two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I want to tell you right now, if I had not punched them holes, it would let me know pretty soon. In no uncertain term, it would let me know, too. And that's them, them term is the kind you don't like. You hear? <laughs> bloom, bloom. Like them two, them two Cajun talking one day, and it was just raining and storming, one of them say, listen to the bloom blue. One of them say, listen, that fool can't say flunder. <laughs> now, what I'm gonna do, just in case, just in case my pork chop get there, and they about there, they broiling good, I'm gonna put a tablespoonful of soy sauce on this and stir them up. And I think that I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look at them pork chop and see if I can put this on there. I don't wanna put it on there unless it's ready. Just hold yourself still there now. Don't go someplace. Not quite ready. It got to be brown before you put that on there. But if it's not brown, it's not good, no. But that's, that's a pretty, that look like good enough to drink. It tastes, you know, that soy sauce, it ain't gonna taste exactly like wine, though, if you drink that. Ooh, let me get this cleaned up out of my way. You know, when I'm cooking at home, I clean up as I go along, and I find it's a lot better, a lot more easy, I guarantee. Let me cast my eye here one more time. This is all set just right. 350. Got the whole punch. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put them soy sauce and wine, one cup of wine, just one. Not gonna use much. That's pretty. Smell good too. I tell you what, if anything, that soy sauce improved the smell of that wine, that's for true, I guarantee. Now, I don't wanna pour that on the pork chop, so I pull them out, and I put them in. It's on broil. Oh, that's gonna be good, yeah. And when you bake broiled pork chop, you notice you don't got to turn them over. You just left them in there. You're baking on one side, broiling on the other. Put this out of the way here right now, and I'm gonna <laughs> fix it and go over to that table and eat myself some of this hog meat what I done got cooked up. While y'all were not looking, look what I did. I cooked up some of this. Whoo, you, you kid. Turn that around here like that. And slice just a little of it. Now, I'll tell you what, when you're gonna slice this pork, I would advise you to let it cool just at least a little bit, because if you don't let it cool, it's gonna make it hard to slice. But look at that. Now, this is, this is a, uh, a Boston butt, like I'm told you. Even then, it just cooks so good, and you let it cook about three hours until it cooks itself off the bone. That's what you got to do. Now, look at that. That's the piece I've been looking for for myself. At least one of them. I'm gonna take two. And I wanna get that outside piece too because it looks so good. Well, it'll look good too, might just well take that one. Now, over here, I got some pork chop. You talk about good. Well, I might just well have some rice and gravy with that, huh? That good rice cooked every grain stand by itself apart what you call independent rice. <laughs> Stand by itself. Now, get me a pork chop. Get the biggest one they got in there. 
You know that's pretty, yeah. Whoo, I guarantee that's pretty. But I got to have some gravy, too. I just can't just not have a little gravy. And I'm going to use this rice spoon, what I got there, for a little of this gravy here on one side. In right here, I made some gravy when I cooked them roast. You see, it's got a little flour on it that was in the bag. But the flour is done. Put that on the other side. Go ahead on that. You stand, you done got yourself a whole bunch of good food to eat there. Who I guarantee. Let me get with it. It smells so good. Oh, let me taste them. That look pretty, huh? So much of the eating is not just the taste, you know that, but also the color and the smell. You know, it's a terrible thing. I, I think it would be terrible not to smell. I, I have such a wonderful smeller that I can smell and tell if there's enough salt in something. This is true. And the texture. You see how pretty that pork roast is there? The texture, that, that beautiful meat, and it's done. You know, a Cajun I knew got so he couldn't see his food so well. Let me pour a little wine on there. So he went to the high doctor, how you call the optometrist there. He went to the optometrist named Jerry Henderson there in Denham Springs, where I'm from. He said, Doc, I can't look as good as I used to. Doc said, well, let's just get here and make an examination and see what we can do. And he got him in the shower there, got him scared enough, you know, the way I could examine him real good. He said, I want to ask you something. Have your eyes ever been checked? This kid looked at him and said, hell no, they always been blue, I guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. I'm gonna taste this jumbo live food. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee. Talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. Hi, y'all are. I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. And today we're going to make a crawfish mock shoe. And it's delicious. And you'll all get a big taste of this when this is all over with. Now, this is for mock shoe. Got it right there. I'm going to tell you all the story in a few minutes. But I first got to get this mock shoe to go in so we get it done. In this mock shoe, I'm going to put a half a cup of olive oil. That's all it needs. <clears throat> Turn the fire on and everything works a lot better. Put that on a medium, a medium blade. And I've always wondered what mock shoe meant. And I used to speak Cajun French pretty good and I don't remember what the hell it was. Into this right now, I'm gonna put, now I, I keep my recipe here, because if you, if you write a cookbook, you don't try to remember all the recipes you got written down. You can go back and look anytime you want to to see about it, see? And I'm going to put in there right now some onion. Now, that's a cup of chopped onion. Put those in there, and I got to cook them till they're more or less clear. I don't know what that means. I couldn't see through them. I know that. And then I put a few, of uh, about a three-quarter of a cup of chopped bell pepper. And I stir. Whenever you put anything, you're supposed to stir. Stir that around the way it'll even out pretty good, too, I guarantee. <laughs> Get out of there. My hands are clean. I washed them the other day. Now, in the, right now, I'm going to put some, some uh, chopped fresh parsley in there to get that to go with this. It all mixed up. Get out of here. Come on, come on. And it is good. 
and I stir. Anytime you add anything, you got to stir. Remember that when you cook it, except rice. And I stir my rice when I cook it, but not when I don't add anything to it. Get it all ready. It makes a loud noise doing it. Come on, now you're just going real good, I guarantee. Now, while that's cooking like that, I may just tell you all a story. I got a, a young friend that started to be a lawyer. You know how that is. I'll put this down to medium low, down to low. And when he when he got finished school, he was so broke, he, he didn't have enough money to go run an office or anything else. And a fine gentleman, old gentleman said, look, I've got a place I just finished, and you go use that for a month until you can make enough money to, to rent you an office. Oh, he said, man, I depreciate that. I guarantee I really do. Well, he said, you just go in there, just, that, that's your office. Okay, thank you, sir. Well, he went down, and there was a desk there, and a phone sitting on all that, and he's, man, I feel so good, and just got a new concrete wall going up to it. And what tickled me to death about this story is it's true. And he heard somebody coming up the walk, and he reached and got that telephone, put it on his head like that. The man knocked, he said, come in, brought yourself in there. No, 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 we can't do that. No, we can't go that. No, that's not enough. No, no, not 25,000. It's got to go for 50,000, or we're not going to do a thing. 50,000, is that right? Okay, and he hung the phone. He said, what can I do for you, huh? Man said, I'm from the phone company. I want to connect up your telephone. <laughs> <laughs> now, we got this going pretty good here. Got to read the file a little bit. And now, uh, and into this right now, I'm going to put a cup of dry, no, I'm going to put four cup of corn. If you scrape off the cob, or you can get canned corn, it's got to be the full green corn, you know. Scrape that off the cob, or we got this out of a can, it's pretty too. Come on, let's come on out of there now. You know you all got to get in there, you might just as well quit arguing with me. Oh, man, that's right. Listen to yourself. It's going to be pretty, yeah. Uh... Now I put a cup of dry white wine. Now, sometimes you got to add a little water. And I'm going to add a little water to this, too. Not a great deal, but just about a, oh, a half a cup to nearly a cup. That's water. That's enough. All right. Stir that up. I'll do that. This recipe says then I can put some garlic in there. See? Put a little garlic in there. Come on, get out of that stuff. All right. Stir. I got that in here. Now I've got to put some other little things in here, like uh, cayenne pepper, but I'm not going to put anything in there right now like that. I'm going to put some uh, steak sauce a tablespoon full of steak sauce. And this is delicious steak sauce, I guarantee. Cajun, uh, what they call it? Oh, man, that's pretty. <laughs> but it's made it good, you know. I guarantee. Now, then I got to put in there. I got to put in there. Bell pepper, salt. Take a little salt in there. Now I got quite a bit of stuff in here. You notice that, huh? So what I better do? 
I'm going to put a teaspoon full of salt. You don't believe that teaspoon. I can see some doubt in Thomas and Thomas Sinners out there. And I'm going to marry that teaspoon full of salt. You notice that? In fact, they got to put another one in there because I won't have enough teaspoon full of salt. And then there's three teaspoons full of salt. We got a lot of stuff going here yet, you know? Got all that like that. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, that's smelling good already. And I'm gonna pull the fire up a little bit more. Now, I got some crawfish tail I got to put in there. But I'm not gonna put them in there yet to well, those onions are clear, though. They're clear. Put this up here. I want to be sure I got everything in there. I got the chopped onion. I got the bell pepper. I got the parsley. I got this corn in there. And I got a cup of dry white wine, a cup of water, maybe more, just a cup's all I put in there. One teaspoonful of finely chopped garlic, what made and invented of twin beds. Salt, I got in there. Red pepper. I'm gonna put just a little pepper in there. Just, you know, just a little cayenne pepper. It's good for you. <laughs> Stir that in there good. That's right. It's gonna be a beautiful dish, and it tastes so good. It's good enough to eat right now, but the crawfish make it taste more better. I guarantee. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to put the crawfish in here and let it cook about 20 minutes. That's all. That corn is done already, I can tell. It's just beautiful. Oh, those are beautiful crawfish. Put the fat, too. Don't forget the fat. Oh, no. Stir this up real good. That looks good and that smells good. <laughs> Not that pretty? I guarantee that. What's pretty about it, it tastes better than it looks. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this the lid on this pot and let this cook on a, I'm gonna bring it to a boil first and then let it kind of cook slow, see? Let it let it kind of slow. Put it on there. And you notice this got some little, got to cover that real good. And I'm gonna cut the fire down just a little bit. I'm gonna put that on, I'm gonna put it on low, which is just as far as it'll go, so it's got to be low. And I got everything in there I'm supposed to have, so that make everything all right there. Now, I'm gonna mix something else. But I think I'll move this pot. No, I'm not. I'm just gonna put it in the back. Because I got to mix something else. Light the fire. It's lit. Turn this one off. Now, I've got that going right. Maybe sure I got this on the right one. Got it on low. Right. Now. I'm gonna mix something here for you. I'm gonna mix a sauce to eat with boiled crawfish or with, with shrimp, whatever you want to eat there. But I've got to tell a story. I haven't told this story in a long time and I might just as well tell it right now. Years ago when I lived in Crowley, Louisiana, they had a place called Lotel, a dance hall was there. Man, and them kids would go there whew, on the weekend and have a good time. There were very few automobiles back then. You know, the, the, you see those old black buggies with the top on it, a nice pretty horse. And people would go there in them horses and they would dance and, and pass pleasure, have a good time. And I never forgot, a fellow went there with his horse that he loved that horse. He curried that horse, dressed that horse up as much as he would let him do it. And so he went to Lotel to the dance. And man, he danced up a storm. He tied his horse in a nice shady spot. He danced up a storm there on a Sunday afternoon. And he got to thinking about his horse, and he went out to see about his horse. When he went out there, somebody had painted his horse a bright green, a beautiful green. 
He went back in there and he was mad. He was mad all over. Even fingertips were mad. That's how mad he was. <laughs> and he went in there and the band was just to play and he hollered, who banged my heart? Nobody, nobody heard him. So he told the band, stop yourself and right now. The band stopped itself and right now. And he hollered, who painted my heart green, man? And the biggest man you ever saw in your life walked up to and says, I painted you horse. What about that, huh? The man looked at him and said, I just want to let you know he's dry and ready for the second coat. Right here, I got a little bowl that I'm gonna put here in the middle. I'm gonna make a sauce, and I'm telling you, it's a delicious sauce. And I got to move this so I can be sure I got the right thing. This is for crawfish or shrimps. Whatever you want to have, doesn't make no difference with me. So I'm gonna put some of this in this right here right now. This makes about eight to 10 servings, depending on who's hungry, you know? And I got peeled crawfish we're gonna use with this, for this sauce. I put a, a half a cup of picante sauce. Mmm, that smells good just like it is. Put a half a cup of picante sauce. I'm gonna get all that out of there too, don't you worry not. Where's my little whisk there, man? Come here to me. And then that adds some angle and angle stuff. And then I put a cup of ketchup. That's good ketchup. Whole cup go in there. Try to get as much of it as you can out of that cup. So you want this to be good, and it is good. I guarantee. Whoo! Aye, aye. And I use a whisk to do this because it mixes it better than a spoon. You don't get any on a spoon. You got to have the right move to get this done right. That smells good already. <laughs> now into this, I'm gonna put some horseradish. A half a cup of horseradish sauce, not pure horseradish. Horseradish sauce is what this is. Go on out of there. Now you going. Smells good too. I love horseradish sauce. Come on. That little old cup don't want to give that up, but he's going to do it. Might just as well get ready to. Hmm. Come on, good enough. Put you right there. Hold up. Oh, that's looking good and smelling good. I would taste it, but people would see me, so I can't do that. Mm -mm. All right, now into this, I'm gonna put a little parsley. Just a little parsley. There you go, a tablespoon full. A Worcestershire sauce, I'm gonna put that in there right now. No, got it? See a tablespoon full, I'm gonna measure this very carefully. You know how I'm about that. Give me a tablespoon. There I go, tablespoon full of Worcestershire sauce. I'm gonna stuck the spoon so I had to get it all out. Put this lead back on there, I don't want to spill that, no. Okay. And I'm not gonna put anything, but I see I got some lemon juice, the lime juice. I got a tablespoon full of fresh, fresh squash lime. I guess it's all out of there, I can't look and see. And stir. 
I want to be sure I get everything in here because this looks good. It smells good. And when I eat it, I can tell you whether it tastes good or not, too. Don't you worry none about that. Let me look at this and see how it's doing. I might turn that fire up a little bit. Well, you go ahead and stir away. See, I can do two things at once. Medium low now. That's got to cook. Aye, 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 aye. Gotcha. This is parsley, freshly cut parsley, chopped fine. That ought to be, let's see, about a two tablespoons full. No, can't be that much. A half a cup, that's more than two tablespoons full. My hands are clean, I guarantee. Throw that in there, that'll make it look more pretty too. That's for true, I guarantee you. Mm, mm. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set this aside. Because it's just, you can't do another thing to it. Except eat it, I'm not gonna do that right now. Uh oh, let me put just a little bit of cayenne pepper in there, you don't mind? This is cayenne pepper hot sauce. And this is a mild one, it's not very hot. Too hot to drink for lemonade, but it's not uh, <laughs> too hot otherwise, that's for true. Put that back over there where it be, be long and stir one more once. I gotta check this here mop shoe too and see what it's doing. Got me a tasting spoon now. <laughs> now, set you over here out of the way. Out of my way, that is. And let me check on this mock shoe and see what it's doing. It's doing right. That I know. Yeah, just about to boil. Mmm, isn't that pretty? I guarantee. And it tastes more better than it looks, I'm telling you, too. I need any more water. I put most a cup of water there. That was enough. Ah. Put that back on there and I'm gonna turn that fire down again. Put it on low and let it cook. Now I'm going over here. I'm gonna put me some mock shoe that I got cooked already. Ha, ha, ha. Put a little mock shoe in this plate. That look good too, huh? I guarantee you. Ooh, man. Now, Judson, you don't want to take it all, just a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more. You don't need anything but this. It makes a complete meal. You got everything in there you would need. Let me close this up right here like that. And put this over here. And I'm gonna tell you all a story. Before I sit down, I don't like to tell a story when I'm sitting down. This is a true story that what happened to an offshore worker in the oil field years ago. And he came in Vermillion Bay and went to Abbeville. He'd been on, excuse me, got Hey, people, he had to go see a barber because he looked like he, he needed a hair's cut, and he did. All his hairs was long, all of them, not just one, though. And he went to the barber shop, and he sat in the chair, and he told the barber, I want, to, I want everything to do. I want you to cut my hairs, wash it, and I want to shave, a nice, pretty shave. Barber said, okay, sit yourself down. He sat himself down. And he looked over there, and there was the cutest girl, oh boy, you ever see before again in your life, a manicurist. He said, baby, would you please manicure my nail for me? Oh, yes, sir. And she sat down there and was holding his hand, working on his hand, starting to. He said, baby, you're cute, I guarantee. She said, thank you, sir, I depreciate that. Uh, let's me and you, uh, could, could you like to have a date with me tonight? I'll stay over. Well, he just kept on. He said, you did not hear me. I know a place out there on, on, on Vermillion Bay. It's a beautiful place. We can go out there and sit around, even court a little bit if you would like to do that. Oh, man, she didn't say the word. He said, lady, you don't hear what I'm talking about. 
You don't ask me, would you like to do that? She said, how come you don't ask my husband? He's shaving you right now. <laughs> you know, it's fun to eat stuff that you cook, that you like to cook, and I like to make sauces. And this is crawfish that's been cooked. We boiled them. I'm going to put that down in there like that. Come over here to my mouth. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Oh, boy. That's good stuff. It's a nice, clean napkin. Put that here like this so it won't fall on the floor. I might just as well try another one of these little crawfish. There's three of them here. Oh, come here, come here, come here, boy. Don't want to spill anything on that neck. It's too pretty. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Got to chew that good and swallow it. Oh boy, I, this would be good on a cracker. <laughs> oh man, that, that is fine, I guarantee. Mm. You know, we don't have time to eat more of that, but it don't have. I want to tell you, now this is mock shoe. You can eat it with a fork, or you can eat it with a spoon, which of you prefer both. I'm going to try out a little of this both ways just to be sure I do. You know, come on here, come on. Mmm. Mmm. That spoon ought to make that even more better, I guarantee. Oh, you kid. Mmm. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I didn't eat any breakfast. Oh, look at here, a little wine. What do you know about that? Just a taste or so. Ah. You can tell he's poured wine before, you know that, huh? <laughs> mm, man. Shaft. For more information and a complete line of fine Justin Wilson products, visit www.justinwilson.com or you may call 228-207-5379. Mes Shaft, that's the Justin Wilson fine products. Justinwilson.com That is good. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee. Nothing in there, hmm. That's good. I'm gonna stew some corn and green onion for y'all today and make some hominy, lye hominy, and chili. When I was a kid, my mother used to, used to make the lye hominy with lye, you know? But I never did like to, to watch it, so I, I've forgotten how to do it, but I bet I could if I had to. I don't, uh, I don't want to do it if I didn't help it. But this says right in here, a quarter of a cup of olive oil. I might just as well get started on this right now. That's olive oil. 
is one fourth cup. I'm pretty good at pouring one fourth cup at one fourth cup at a time. You watch. Now that ain't a fourth per cup, no. That's not either. Fast getting there. Ooh, I heard all that. That's just about a fourth of a cup of olive oil, and I'm gonna put all this stuff in it. I got to got to do it, you know. Got to have it. Put this olive oil right back. I may need some more if it doesn't come out right, you know. Now into this, I got to put four cups of chopped green onion. That's four good cup right there. So I'm gonna turn the fire. I like to have it, have it, have it sealed on me. See if I get the right one. No. Never do. <laughs> Got that one. We're gonna put that on a medium heat. That's my tasting spoon. It's warm already, I tell you that, but it'll warm up real fast. Come on, there. my hands are clean. You gonna cook in there. Gotcha. Take this spoon and stir that in there real good. Mm. Mm. You know I smell that smelling good already? You all don't smell that? <laughs> that full cup of green onion. Now I'm gonna put eight cup of sweet corn, cut off the cob. Man, I'll tell you, you, isn't that pretty? It is pretty. I'm gonna put this in here right now so we can get it to cooking. Oh, well, you thought I was gonna drop that. I did too. <laughs> Wanna get all that out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Got it. And stir that in. Any time you cook, any occasion will tell you this. When you're cooking, every time you add anything, you got to stir. Eight cup of corn, green, fresh corn off the cob. Got to be good. Got to be good. Whew. All right. Now into that, I got to add something else here. One cup. Of Good dry white wine that you'd love to drink if I'd let you, but I'm not, I'm gonna put it in you. It's a Chablis. That's a full cup. I can hear that cooking. Go ahead on there, baby. Stir. That wine takes all, you know, people ask me, say, why do you always cook with wine? Well, sometimes I cook with beer. If I boil shrimp, I put beer in it. But uh, the reason I cook with wine, I know it'll take the bitterness out of anything. You know, now, green onion got a certain bitterness to it. If you cook it with celery, celery's got bitterness. Parsley's got a little bitterness. Any, any other kind of onion got, got bitterness, too, got the bitterness. So you got, you got to take it out, and wine takes it out and enhances the flavor. There are two things at the same time. What are you going to do? But you can't miss that. Then I'm going to put a cup of spicy onion, that is a rotel. I'm gonna put a cup of water after I put the rotel in there and stir it in. That's rotel. Stir it, man, just stir it, you stand. That's what you got to do. And hold that thing so it won't splash anymore out there on the stove and have to pick it back up. It ain't good, no. That shows that I'm not a chef, I'm just a cook, that's all. And in the country, you can splash things on the stove. That's all right. I'm a country cook, and I love to cook. And now I'm going to put a cup of water. Oh, I'm going to take a sip of that water, too. Got a frog in my throat. I wish I'd had it in there when I had that wine in my head, I'll tell you. <laughs> Cup of water and stir. I got him then, that frog in my throat. Get the cooking there, baby. You're looking pretty. That's a pretty dish. 
and it's pretty enough to eat. Now into that I gotta put some good chopped garlic. Two, two, I'm talking about two teaspoons full of chopped minced garlic. Got to get all of it there, baby. I don't wanna leave any of that in there. I love garlic. Garlic is good for you if that people are just, just finding that out. I've been knowing that all my life. Stir it in there good, spread it around. Oh boy, let's get with it. Yeah, that's smelling good. Can y'all smell that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was doing a stage show once in a big city. I was cooking on there. I got a, a, when I started to cook, just as I started, I'd fry some bacon and put a fan behind and let that blow out in the audience. <laughs> And it worked, it helped. Let me get this moved up a little bit out of my way. I'm gonna put this over here so I can have room to do something else I got to do shortly. Here you go, you stand, put them right there. That'll work. And put this over there to help it. Stay there, all right? Now, I got to salt this. It says salt the taste. My taste. And we're gonna put about, let's see, I got a bunch of stuff in there. Eight cup of sweet corn cut off the cob, four cup of green oil. I got to put about, uh, well, that's a teaspoon. You all don't believe it? I'm gonna show you. That's a teaspoon full of salt. That's one teaspoon right there. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? And still, I'm gonna put some more salt. There's not enough salt. I'm gonna take two teaspoons to do to do this right. Let's put another teaspoon. Another. Well, well just a little bit over. We'll let that's a heaping teaspoon. That's a heaping teaspoon. Not a heap too much. No, no. Put that salt back right there where I may need it later. And I got to stir this. It says stir the ingredients in a big large pot and cook over medium fire for about 45 minutes. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. Mm -hmm. Now I've got to cut that fire down to make it more medium than it is right now because that's hot. That fire is hot. Come on back down here now. Now that's a nice medium flame. Put the lid on it like this. Stirred it, moved this uh, recipe. I got to use my recipe because who's gonna remember all the recipes I dream of? I ain't. <laughs> I don't try. Now, I'm gonna put this out of the way. Right now, I'm going to make you a nice, nice hominy and chili casserole. <laughs> it is, I guarantee it's gonna be good. Put this there right there. And I got to put olive oil in the bottom of that thing. It says, uh, it's got this all mixed up. It says, tablespoon full of olive oil. That's all I need. Huh. A tablespoon full of olive oil. There you go, baby. That ain't quite a tablespoon full. Believe it or not, it's not. But that's a tablespoon full. Not heaping, just a tablespoon full. And then, we're gonna turn the fire on there and kind of move that around a little bit. If I can did that, I'll be just right. Now see if I get the right one this time. Yes, I did. <laughs> I put that on a, a medium low fire, run it around where it gets all over the bottom of that skillet, frying pan, whatever you want to call it, pot. Pan, there's something to put this in. Got it. Now, this recipe say one sixteen ounce of hominy. Drain it. You got to drain all the water off of it there. We got that. But it don't go in there first, no. What we're gonna do right now is put the green onion in there and let them kind of sizzle around a little bit. Get in there. Green onion. 
I got it all the first time. That is bad. And I got some bell pepper. I got to put in there to help them green onion out. You know how that is. Put some bell pepper on that. <coughs> got all that too. I'm getting good at that. You know it. Put that to the side so I can get to that little bit of that garlic powder. I'm gonna let that. I have to stir that around a little bit so it'll get to cooking. And it'll cook. I mean, I never forgot that down in, in Crowley where I used to live, Crowley, Louisiana, in southwest Louisiana. There's a fella had a, a kind of a butcher and a fish market there. And it, he put a fella to work for him, and he was good. He worked hard. He really did. And uh, after he'd been there about a month and proved he could work, the man that hired him See, I want to tell you something, boy. It's all right with me, but you either got to get you a longer apron in the front or stop stealing such long fish, steal shorter fish, you him? <laughs> Green onion, you got, this is dry parsley. Dry parsley is good. I want that to kind of get a little more juice in it before I put that in there. It's doing all right, it's getting juice. This is a cup. Actually, it's a, oh, I'd say this was a half a cup of dried parsley. Now that's equivalent to a cup and a half. Now I think that's a half a cup. So I'm gonna quit putting that dry parsley in there. And I got some, some dried mint I'm gonna put in, but let me stir that dried parsley down into this thing that we got here. Mm-hmm. Smell that? I smell it. Make all the noise you want to go in to do it. Now into that I'm gonna put some dried mint. And then I'm gonna put a, about a half a teaspoon full of garlic powder. Now this is what you call easy cooking. You can do all this without having to cut up some of the stuff. When you chop parsley, you're in good shape. I can tell you that, but most people don't know how to chop parsley. And I don't throw the stems away, I use the whole damn thing. Never get it all there. You ought not to beat those beautiful pots. I say I got to get that stuff off the spoon. Now into this, I'm going to put uh, some rooster sauce, and Worcestershire right here. That's what this is, Worcestershire sauce. Put it in there. And I also, too, I got to put some uh, good wine in in just a few minutes. As soon as I get this wet, mm, I can smell that real good. Get it all off that spoon. Now, I'm gonna put a cup of nice dry wine. I didn't see that wine. I had a sip of that instead of that water, I guarantee. <laughs> now that's a cup of dry white wine. Stir that around in there real good. And I got a 16 ounce can of hominy that's been drained real good. I have to put that in there in a few minutes. I want this to come to a boil first. Let's boil, baby. I'll turn you up a little bit to be sure. Now, I can hear it picking up. I'll tell you that the truth. Now, we're going to put the this nice dry harmony in there, like this. Get out of there. Got it all. Got every bit of it. Didn't get all that wood to sauce on <laughs> Got it now. And I stir this into that. And good. That began to look pretty, believe it or not. I love hominy. Hominy and chili are two good things that go together, and I'm putting these together right now in just a few minutes. And I got salt and pepper to taste. It says, here's the pepper. Cayenne pepper is what I use. 
One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> that's plenty. We don't need any more of that. Now, that's not much. That's about a quarter of a teaspoonful. Of what that is. Now, into this. Let me see what I can put into this. Wine, garlic powder. Got it all in there. And wine in a medium-sized pot and cook over medium fire. Stir it until the onion and peppers are tender. You see, now I got to put some salt in this too. And I know about how much goes in there. About a, a, a two teaspoons. Not quite two teaspoons. And this is a slow teaspoon. They ain't a full teaspoon. And neither is this one. That's enough salt in there. Put that over there. And stir. Mm-hmm. Now, what I'm going to do we did. I got to cook that a little while till it gets better, but it's nearly ready right now. Put this underneath here, or over here where I can see it in case I need to look again. You know how it is. I'm not all that smart. So most of that juice is gone, see? Then I'm going to stir in some chili and pour it into a casserole right over there. And I better put a little olive oil in that casserole or somebody will give me the devil for not thinking about that. But you got to grease that to keep it from sticking to the bottom. It'll do it if you don't look hard. That's less than a tablespoon full. Got to put this garlic pot in there. I nearly forgot you used such a small bit of nothing in the world but about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Who ever heard of using a half a teaspoon full of garlic powder? Let's get out of there. Now you're going. I'm gonna get you out of there. I have to scrape the bottom of this thing now. I got it. That looks about like a half a teaspoon I've got in there. Yep, it is. It better be. Now we're going good. Now, now into this. I ain't true putting stuff in there. I'm gonna put some, stir some chili. See that chili? Cooked chili. I'm going to put some chili in there and stir it in there real good. And I'm going to put that in that uh, butamous uh, casserole dish. Now let's go in here and just stir it in good, boy. Oh, man. Y'all smell that? I do. Ooh, wee. That's a 16-ounce can of uh, chili I'm putting in there. Look out there, that's hot. Stir it in real good. All right, now let's get in there, put it in good like you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. Ah. I got to move this out of my way. Move this over there and kind of stir this olive oil around in there just a little bit to be sure it covers everything and it's doing it. Oh, yeah. Now, into this, I'm going to pour this. And I'm going to cut this far. No, I can't cut this. But yeah, I can't uncut that far off in just a minute or two when you get all that stuff over the side. Now, got it? Cut the fire off. And we'll pour this in there. Go ahead and splash on everything, it's all right. Mm. Make a noise, but it's a pretty noise to me, I tell you. Now, now what I got to do is put some cheddar cheese grated in there. And Trying to see what this is. I've got to see what in the world this is. Oh, that's cheese, too. I put it all in there. This is cheese, too. Three kinds of cheese. Muscarella, parmesan, and American cheddar. All of it grated into a shred or something. Put it in and stir it around. And let's put it right there, Judson. Let's put that parmesan in there first. Here we go. Stir you in there, pretty good and boy. Look at that. (laughs) 
This is the mozzarella. Mozzarella, la la la. There we go. Now into this, I'm gonna put that good old American cheese. I'm gonna have to put that in with my hand to be sure I spread it good. Now you go in, boy. Mm-hmm. Put that down there. Put this over here like that. Mix it up. But I got one more thing I think I got to put in there. Yep. Breadcrumb, ain't that something? And then I'll put it in the oven. Or I may wait and let that kind of soak up a little bit. Looking good. Looking just right. Breadcrumb. I'll put them on there any way I want to. I'd, if I were an artist, I'd paint a picture. But I'm not an artist. So I'm going to just spread it on there real good. That's what it takes an artist to do that, too, I guarantee. <laughs> so I'll get on there. I'm going to have to put this in a 300 and, I think it's a 325 or 350 degree oven. And I'll look and see how long it's supposed to cook. And I'm going to sit down there and eat some of it. I got fixed for myself already. Hmm. I got to cook that in 350 degrees, what the man said. And I got it set at 350. Put your side right there. Bring this over here and put it in that oven and let it brown the old bread from at 350 degrees. That's, ooh, wee, that smells good. Ay, ay, ay. Got to push you aside, don't mean to hurt you. Got to open the oven, all right? 350 degrees, hominy and chili baked in a 350 degree oven. Now, if that's not all right, now, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to sit down over here. And if y'all don't mind, whether you mind or not, I'm going to sit down over here and, and taste some of this to be sure that it, that it tastes right. It would be a hell of a fix if it didn't. I'll tell you that. Come here, chair. Up close. Closer. All right. Put this out of my way where I can see everybody. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Oh, boy. Like a little gentleman put my napkin so I won't spill things on the floor. That is warm. Yes, sir. That's that chili and hominy. And that's the green, the nice corn. Got it off the cob. And I'm going to use my spoon and my fork to eat this. But before I do, I'm going to pour myself just a swiller of wine. That's a half swallow. <laughs> That's a swiller. That's another swiller. That makes a swallow. <laughs> and this tastes so good. Let me see how it tastes. That's the chili and, and hominy. Let me see. All right. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh boy, let me see. Just this, some of this. Mm. 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 Oh man, that is fine. I can taste everything in the corn, the rotel, the green onion. Now for a sip of wine. That's all it needed was just a half a swallow. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. 
for getting a part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee you. I talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee, and I'm gonna cook something that you will like today, I guarantee you that too. Some wild rice, and I'm gonna make a seven steak etouffee after that. And that seven steak etouffee, it's so good, I think I'll eat all of it myself, too. Right now I'm gonna cook some wild rice, most people, don't know how to fix my wild rice, and I didn't. It took several experiments for me to realize I cooked it just like the other rice, only a little longer, because it, it's a little tougher. Got a different flavor, thank goodness. I'm gonna put all this stuff in there, too. Got a spoon to stir it around. Now, in this wild rice, I got two cups of uncooked wild rice. And this makes so Oh, the recipe says four to six servings. It'll make more than that, actually. I take two teaspoons full of salt, put that in there, and I'm gonna do this. Uh, this is how I measure a teaspoonful, actually. Now, that's a teaspoonful. Y'all so don't believe it. But I'm gonna get this teaspoon and prove it to you after I pour this next teaspoonful in my hand. Just about a teaspoon, boo. Come here, spoon. Over the rice, let's be sure we put it in the spoon. You see there, nothing to it like eating lettuce, see? But I always like to put a little extra. Now, make it taste more better. Then I'm gonna put some, uh, about a, a teaspoon, a, a quarter of a teaspoon full of cayenne pepper. It is right here. And it's about a quarter of a teaspoon full I'm gonna put in there. It's a quarter, my bad. Quarter teaspoon full of cayenne pepper. One half, one half teaspoon of garlic powder. Open up there. One half, I use that because I, I want to be sure I don't miss it. That's a quarter. I don't mind having a little bit too much cayenne pepper with too much garlic wouldn't be good. No. It's a half a teaspoonful of garlic powder we're gonna put on there. Maybe a little bit more no. Get over there. Now. Now that's got it. That's a little bit more than a teaspoon, half a teaspoon. Won't hurt. I like garlic. Put that back over here. Onion powder, I got to put that on there. I put about a one and a half teaspoon full of onion powder. And we'll measure that carefully. <laughs> That's one and a half teaspoon, I'll guarantee it right now. A teaspoon of dried mint. Now I use mint, I don't use bay leaf to cook with hardly at all. I have, and I love bay leaf, but it, uh, I'm gonna put a whole teaspoon full of, of dried mint in there. Because it's got a good flavor, but it doesn't kill the flavor of the other things that I've put in there. That's the mainest thing. Now, I'm going to stir that up. Then I'm gonna put some, some water on it and some olive oil. And I use olive oil to keep it from boiling over. It'll do it too. I am putting this fire under this yet because it didn't need it. I uh, will put fire under it, don't worry. Now we put a little water. See, the way I cook this is the way I cook my regular rice. Now if I had a pot this big, and I'd fill it nearly full of rice, I wouldn't be able to measure the water until I had it in that pot. And that's the way it is with this too. I don't know, this is four cups of water. 
but I don't think it's, it may take all of that. It may take a little more. Let's see. Yep, that's not going to do it. Get out in there. My hands are clean. I washed them. Now, what I'm doing, that's my, was my mother's lay the law down finger. <laughs> the index finger, the way you can touch the rice. And everybody, if they're normal, everybody's index finger first joint is the same length. Check with your neighbor then, see if I'm not telling you the truth. I think that'll be enough. It didn't even take the whole thing. Just a little bit left over. And I stir. Now I stir. And I'm going to check and see if it's doing right, which I think it will. Exactly right. Now, into this, I'm going to put some olive oil, say like a couple of tablespoons full. That's to keep it, keep it from boiling over. It, it helps the flavor, though. It helps the flavor. Here, let's go. At two tablespoons full, that's what it says. And I'll bet that two tablespoons full when I get through. There it is. Two tablespoons full of olive oil. Put that down right there where it belongs. Now, don't stir that now. I'm going to stir it in a few minutes, but right now, I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to put it on a medium, put it high to start with, because I want it to cook fast. Then you'll see that uh, when I get it to where most all the water is gone, I'm going to put this lid on it and put it on simmer and let it simmer, 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 simmer. See? And that's the way it works. In this part, I'm going to make a seven steak, etouffee. Now, etouffee means smothered. When I get all of the stuff in there, all the, the stuff that has to be, I'll put that lid on it. It's got little rims that way. I can smother it, smother it down. Now, into this, I've got to put, i got to move this um, wildlife recipe. I, I will look at my recipes because Anybody that's a creative cook can't remember the recipes. They got to have them where they see them, you know. And I'm a creative cook and love doing what I do. Now, into this, I'm going to put two tablespoons, tablespoons full of olive oil, maybe a little more, maybe just a little more than two tablespoons full. No question about that. But I've got to put the seven steaks in here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's about two tablespoons full. No, not nowadays. I <laughs> guarantee you that. Now, I'm going to turn the fire on. I got to put the fire on a medium heat, medium hot heat. Let's go here, fire. That's on medium. I want to get. First, you put the, the seven steak that we got chopped up a little bit. Then I put all the rest of this stuff in there. And I'm going to show you all something while I'm thinking about it. While that's hotting up, I've got some shiitake mushrooms that's going to go in there. And I'm going to take one of these and take this ulu knife and chop it up. To show you how ulu knife is used and also how easy they are to use. You know, we've got to go all the way over here to this little bowl and chop this up. You see, nothing to it. You don't know, chop with this. I've seen the Indians in, in Alaska where I got this knife, skin a whole deal, or filet a fish. You see how easy that was? Nothing to it. And clean it off a little bit and put the Hulu knife back. Because it's sharp, I guarantee you that for true. That's for true, it is sharp. Go down in there. Now you're cooking good. Now I can put that, some of them seven steak in there and brown them all. And brown them all off. Come on here. Now we're going. You didn't think I knew that was hot, did you? Sure I did. Mm. Mm. That seven steak is a shoulder steak. 
Now this has had the bone taken out. The reason they call it a seven steak is it has a perfect seven the bone makes. And it tastes good and it's a good piece of meat. And very few people realize that what a good piece of meat it is. Now I know I've got to put all this in there, which I'm gonna do. Oh boy, that smells good. Oh, Whew. man. I'm putting that in there, I can't help but think of a, a Cajun story. But this is beef, beef meat. And uh, you think about that, that Cajun, if the, the police one in, in Baton Rouge stop, that cut this fire down a little bit. Put him on medium, medium. He stopped him and he walked up to his car and you could smell it from here to 10 feet away. He said, uh, are you drunk? Oh, hell no, I'm not drunk, me. <laughs> he said, man, don't tell me, I can smell it. I don't care how you smell me. You see that fence over there? He said, yeah. He said, I guarantee I can jump that fence. He said, you can jump that fence? Oh, hell yeah, I can. He said, all right, get out of the car and jump that fence. He jumped out of that fence and there was a big bull in there. And that bull ran him down and really worked him over. He came back though and he jumped the fence back. And the policeman saw all that was going on in there. And he said, uh, you jumped the fence all right. What in the world happened in there? He said, some damn fool in a bicycle tried to run over me. I've <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got all this in there. I'm going to wipe my hands on my night loop that I carry there. That's handy to the pocket on the shirt. And I'm going to move this out of my way. Just put it right over here, out of my way. And put, I got a lot of stuff I got to put in there, but I got to stir that stuff. You see, it can't brown on there like that, but it can brown the way I do it. <laughs> that, that is for a crew. To get up off the bottom. Turn it over. Mm -mm. And I'll tell you right now, that is, that is good meat. I'm gonna eat some of it. I can tell you that's for true. Etouffee, I etouffee most everything. I etouffee crab meat, etouffee crawfish, etouffee all kind of stuff, you know, because it's easy to cook. And this is easy cooking. Boil that rice. Got to cut you down a little bit too. Now, that's gonna cook just right. It's gonna get right. You see, I'm gradually browning all that meat. Ha! Didn't think I could do it, but I can. Doesn't have to be cooked because it has to cook Oh, about three hours. It got to simmer for about three hours. Now into this, I'm gonna put a lot of good things, including shiitake mushrooms, but I just cut up one of those to show you what it was. And they, they to me, are the best mushrooms, and I love them. And I'm lucky, I got a friend named Junior Monteleon that raises them for me and gives them to me. Boy, I'm glad to have a friend like that. Hmm. Those things are expensive. All right, let's turn it over there and brown a little bit. Now into this, into this A2 fave, I've got to put a lot of stuff, like I'm gonna put, that there's four pounds of, 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 of meat in here, seven steak, and I got the salt to taste. I'm gonna put some salt in here right now. With this much meat, I've got to put two cups of onion, a cup of chopped bell pepper, two cup of chopped mushroom that I got chopped right there. I'm gonna put this salt in here though and as I put this stuff over that, that's a teaspoon. And that's a teaspoon and a quarter. And this is about another half a teaspoon. <laughs> and it'll come out all right. Now I'm gonna put two cup of chopped onion and I'm gonna stir this. Anytime you add anything, you got to stir. You always got to stir. Anytime you add anything. Any good Cajun cook will tell you that. And I'm just telling you the truth, that's all. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
Now, bell pepper. About a half a cup of bell pepper. That's not a full cup, it's about a half a cup. That's what I'm gonna put in there right now. I got to get it all. And I did. Mix it around and then stir. Oh, that onion just dropped on the floor. I'm gonna leave it down there though. I'm not gonna put it in here, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh boy. Come on here now, let's get together. Ha. Get down in. Now I'm gonna put into this two cup, two cup of shiitake mushrooms that I chopped up myself. I chopped them up. My hands are clean. Washed them yesterday. <laughs> and I stir some more. Mm-hmm. It's smelling better all the time. Now I got to put some more stuff in there though. I got uh, olive, pimento stuff olive, and I got white wine. I see it. And I'm gonna put it in there right now. Now that's all the juice I'm gonna put in there. Put that in there. I got some celery powder. Here it is right here. I got the stir. I got the stir. Woo hoo hoo. Now this is gonna be so good. I don't believe I understood it. A two fair. I don't know what Cajun invented that, but he was smart. This is this is celery powder. We didn't chop any celery and put in there, we used the powder. And it's good. I like to use dried dried uh, vegetables. I really do. They're good. And they have the same flavor if you do what it says so on the direction what read on the box that you get it in. Or if you dry it yourself, you teach yourself what, what how, when to put the water and all that stuff. Now into this, I got the mushroom, dry white wine. Now, stuffed pimento olive. Oh boy. Let's get the rest of that in there. Got it? And I'm gonna stir. Mm-hmm. Oh, a left of olive, I'll just eat that, two of them. <laughs> mm hmm that's good. And it is, I got to put some dried parsley. And this is dried parsley, not fresh parsley. It's one half a cup of dried parsley. And when it's swelled up, it'll be better than a cup. Stir it up just damn. That wild rice is acting just about right. Now, I've got you some dried mint. As I say, I cook with it rather than cook with the... Stir it up, get all that water on it. Mm-hmm. Garlic. Now, this is a tablespoon full of chopped garlic. Get every bit of it in there because garlic's good for you. Tastes good. Caused people to invent twin beds, I admit that, but it's awful good. I love it. Oh, you kid. That's looking better all the time. Now I got to put a little steak sauce in that. And a little bit of hot sauce. Shake it up. Got it. I got to put a tablespoon full of, two tablespoons full of steak sauce. And I love good steak sauce. And this is good steak sauce. Oh, I, now just a, just a tablespoon full, John. Just a tablespoon full. All right, that's one tablespoon full. Two <laughs> tablespoons full. And a little bit more. That don't hurt a thing. And I got to put a little bit of hot sauce. In that. Mm. It says 
two teaspoons, all right? I'll put two teaspoons. I don't have to measure it. I know two teaspoons from the bottom, see? That's two teaspoons. Exactly. <laughs> two teaspoons. And I stir this. Sit down there like you know what you're doing. Stir it good. Get everything stirred up good because we want all the seasoning to get mixed up into the whole thing. I'm going to put a lid that's, that's tight, and I'm going to let that simmer. This is going to simmer about three hours, two to three hours. So three hours is just about what I'm talking about. So put that on there like that. Oh, man. That tastes good, it smells, it's gonna be awful good. Let me just let y'all smell a little more of that one. <laughs> now I'm gonna put the lid on this. I've got everything in. I always like to check that. Hot sauce, steak sauce, dried meat, celery powder, dried parsley, chopped garlic, pimento stuffed olive, cup of dry white wine, one cup of bell pepper, two cup of mushroom, salt to taste, two cup of chopped onion, four pound of meat. Now let's just put this on. And we're going to lower this fire to a simmer, just a gentle little simmer. Where you at there? There you are, right here. And you know, they put it on that simmer, and it'll go good there, I guarantee you. Come on down, come on down, fire. That's what I like about gas cooking. You can see what you're doing with your heat. Got that. Now rice, I'm gonna have to stir you whether you want to be stirred or not, because you're getting close to the point where most of the water is gone, but it's not quite gone. You're doing good though, you're doing awful good. Now, I got a friend, Cajun, who was a zoologist in one of the universities. And he was in a zoology class one time, and he had a, a flea that he was working on. He got that flea with the microscope and all that stuff so he could see. He got that, looked through there, and he reached and got that flea with a little pair of tweezers, held it up, and pulled one leg off of that. Now, what I got to do with that? He pulled one leg, then he looked at the, through that mic some more at that flea, reached and got him, put another leg, and put him down, and the flea jumped. He put him back under there, he pulled another leg off, take the flea out, put him down, and the flea jumped. Looked through that mic some more, reached and got that flea, pull off one more leg, put the flea down, pick him up, <coughs> and the flea jumped. He had one leg left. He reached in, got that one leg for that flea after picking him up, pulled it off, put it down. The flea didn't do anything. And he wrote in his report, he was writing all the time. He said, when you pull all the leg from a flea, he can't jump. <laughs> and that's true, he just can't jump. I got to put this on simmer, simmer, put the lid on it, put that right there. That's a heat diffuser, and I couldn't cook without it. I really couldn't. Diffuse that heat, got that done. Now, I've got to get me some of that uh, etouffee that I snuck up on people and prepared earlier. Mm-hmm. Get off of that. Yeah. Yeah, just, uh, just I don't want much. Just, uh, just a little steak or something like that, but I'm going to put some of that juice on some wild rice. Oh, you kid. That looks good. That looks good. Get a little wild rice that I had cooked earlier. Put it right here. Mm-hmm. Put that lid back on there. Go we'll sit myself down. Pour myself a little wine and show you exactly how this tastes. And I want you to know, I guarantee it's got to be good. I've got a little juice right here. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me get a piece of that etouffee meat. For more information and a complete line of fine Justin Wilson products, visit www.justinwilson.com or you may call 228-207-5379. Mesha, that's the Justin Wilson Fine Products, justinwilson.com. That is good. I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee. I talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. And today, we're gonna cook a pork loin and pork backbone with turnips. Man, you talk about good. Do you think about that? It makes me want to start eating it right now without putting anything on it, but I got to put something on it. What I'm gonna put on here is some garlic powder, some salt, and cayenne pepper, and then I'm gonna pour just about a half a cup of wine and a half a cup of water around there, water around there. First of all, go to a little garlic powder, just a little. We kind of, we sprinkle it on there very lightly, you know. Let's get on there right. And we're gonna bake this. We start it off at 350, put it in the oven with an oven at 350 degrees, preheated oven. And then, I got to pat that on there. You, know? yeah, you ain't gonna do like that. That's that side. Then I put salt. Just sprinkle salt on it. Not too much, but enough. And we'll pat that too. Now we'll put some cayenne red pepper on that. It looks like a lot, but it's not. Just enough, really and truly. Now I got to pat that on there. And I got to turn these over and do the same thing again on the other side, see that? With the fat side up, that's the way I like to cook them anyhow, with the fat side up. You know what? I got to rinse my hand. Thank goodness I got that little pot of water handy. <laughs> with that red pepper, it can get awful hot on your hands, particularly if you reach up to your eyes. Now, put that right there. Do the same thing some more. Garlic powder, just lightly, you know. And that good fine garlic powder. Salt. See, I'm not going to pat this on this side. I'm 
I know how much I'm putting on this. Worry not about that. Cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper is good for you. You know, black pepper, nothing but wood. Did you know that? Huh. Nothing but wood. But I like the taste of it. I don't cook with it, though. It doesn't cook good. Now, into here now, not on it, but on that side, and down here on this side, we pour the mixture of water. I got to dry my hand and get that, be sure I don't have that red pepper on there. Put that over here out of my way. And put the lid on this. And that's all it goes on. This is what you call easy cooking. I'm gonna put this in this oven. It's preheated at 350 degrees, and then I'm gonna lower it to 325 or 320, whatever I want. Depending on how long I want it to cook. And it cooks quickly. Cooks easy. Here, let's go. All right, now, partners, go in that oven without any, without any arguing or anything like that. And it generally minds me pretty good. Get in there and go to cooking. And in just a little while, I'll lower that. I got to put this out of my way because it's in my way. And what I'm going to do is just put it over here. Put you over there. There you go. I don't think I'll need this either. Put these over there. If I need you, I know where you are. I can find you. No worry not. Now I'm going to fix backbone and turnips. A wonderful dish, believe me. I know a man that I could call him right now. No matter where he was, what he do? doing? He'd quit his job to come eat backbone and turnips. I've got that here now. I've got about, uh, let's see, in this pot, I've got to get all that in there, and I'm going to, I'm going to put two tablespoons full of olive oil in there to be sure nothing burns. That's how you do it. Two tablespoons full. I've got my recipe right here. I'll keep it so I'll, I'll be doggone. You've got to act like that. Now nah, you got you. See, I'm ambidextrous, ambiguous. Got it. It said two tablespoons, didn't it? Sure did. Exactly two tablespoons. Be willing to bet. Got to put a fire under that now. Got to be sure I get the right one. Let's see. Never do get the right fire. I want to put that on a medium fire, like that. You know, that's so you even, now you even. Now into this, I'm going to put three cups of, of chopped onion. Good, sweet onion. I love onion. I make an onion sandwich every time I get a chance. And two cups of chopped green onion. Like them on your Let me put this out of my way so that I can stir this properly. Now you go in there, sing a song. Mm. Then I put about a cup of bell pepper, not quite a cup. I don't think it's a, it's a cup and a half, it seems. It looks like a cup and a half, all right. Huh? Let's get out of there now. Let's don't mess up. My hands are clean. Except for a little red pepper. Then I put some celery. A cup of celery, chopped celery. And I stir. You hear that pot, don't you? I hear it. I guarantee I hear it. Stay still there. Now you stay still. And that's the very thing, dangerous thing I did. I very rarely do it. I generally have a pot holder, and I got one handy right here, right now, in case I need it. But I, you could catch that damn dish towel on 
on fire very easily with these fires, you know that. Now I'll put a full cup of, I think that's a cup and a half, a cup chopped. It's a cup of parsley. Just, that's a good cup though, I'll guarantee. Oh yeah. And I stir. Come here, boy. Oh, we. I got a story to tell you, but I, I, got, I can't uh, do two things at once. I can walk and chew gum, but I got to always be sure I got all this stuff in here. Now, that I put in there with the parsley. I'm going to put uh, two tables, two teaspoons. Now, those are big teaspoons. Mm-hmm, that's garlic. Two teaspoons full of garlic powder. Stir, man. Don't mess it around. Stir that garlic powder into that real good. Now, it looks like a lot of trouble, but it's not. Because this cooks a long time, and it can, it can make a meal by itself. And the backbone, I love it. Now, into that, I got to put some peanut butter melted in two cups of boiling water. That's what this is. See that right there? That's peanut butter melted in boiling water, and it tastes good. I love peanut butter in there. Oh, man. Whew. Let's stir that in there as you stand, because that's going to help improve the taste of anything, I guarantee. Can y'all smell this? I can. Now into this, I got to put, I'm going to put a cup of, or no, I'm not, I'm gonna put a cup and a half of Sun Sweet Lighter Bake, and it's delicious stuff. It's sweet and nice, but not too sweet. This won't be like a, a jelly roll. It's gonna be good pork meat, cooked with all these delicious vegetables, and with this sun sweet lighter bake, it helps make a good gravy. I'll tell you that for true. And I got to stir that in there too. Man, this thing's gonna be done before I'm ready to eat it, you know what? Better hurry up then. Oh, wee. See that thing nearly caught on fire? It wasn't, thought it was. Now into that, I'm gonna put a cup of dry white wine. People worry about me forgetting about my wine. I don't ever worry about that. I'll get it in there every time I cook. I cook with wine for just one reason, believe it or not, two reasons. I think it enhances the flavor, but better than that, it takes all the bitterness out of onion, bell pepper, sweet onion, anything like that, it takes the bitterness out of it, and that helps. Anything I can't stand is bitter, bitter food. Oh, man. Y'all looking good and smelling good. <laughs> now, I'll taste it. I got a tasting spoon here. I'll taste it in a little bit. Now, into that, I'm going to put some mushrooms, sliced mushrooms. Chopped mushrooms, rather. They sliced it and they chopped them a little bit. About, uh, well, I would say there's two cups of chopped mushrooms here. And I, I use all kind of mushrooms, but I particularly like to use the shiitake mushroom, but these are not shiitake. These are regular mushrooms where any store would have them. In the store where I got this stuff, they had them, and there they are in there right now. Stir that in there too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I got to put some, all I'm gonna do is put some hot sauce, just a little. I'm not gonna put much. This recipe called for two tablespoons of little and hot sauce. I'm not gonna put that much in there. I'm just gonna put uh, about a tablespoon, just about. I shook it first. You notice that? Yeah. 
exactly a table to go. <laughs> it's good, yeah. Stir it, man. Got to stir that. That's smelling good to me. <laughs> now into this, I'm gonna put some chopped. First of all, put a little salt. You got to put some salt in there. It says about uh, a tablespoonful of salt, or as much as you like. Now, a tablespoon is going to be just about enough of this. Of course, there's a lot of meat there and a lot of tons. So I may put a tablespoonful and a Justin Wilson measure of a tablespoon. Now, that's a tablespoon. And that's the rest of Justin Wilson measure right there. <laughs> but there, and it always comes out. I don't know why, but it does. It comes out good. Mm-hmm. Now the turnips come in. We're going to put the turnips in there. Six cups of peeled and chopped turnips. Aren't they pretty? You know, turnips are so good. A soup isn't worth a damn of vegetable soup unless you got turnips in it. Like I say, my hands are clean. I want to get every bit of that in there. Got it. Put this over here and put the rest of these little old things in it, like, like this one. Get in there. And this one. Come here to me, you backbone. Ooh, I love backbone. That is the country way of making a pork chops, you know. That's all it is. Stir it old turn up in there. She's nice and thick. You don't need rice with it. All you do is you eat it by itself. It, it, well, I, I may have a little pork or loin with it when I sit down there to eat now. E -I -I. Come here, you beautiful pork loin. Isn't that beautiful pork loin? It really is. Let's get in there like a little gentleman. And you did too, bless your heart. Stir it in there. Now, I'm going to bring you to a burl or a boil, whatever you want to call that. And then I'm going to put it on a low fire and cook it about two hours. I think that's about the best, best way to put that. And it tastes better when you cook it slow. That's true. Let me see. There's two pages to this uh, recipe. Wait a minute. Two hours. I remember that much about it, didn't I? Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring that to a boil, but I got to cut this oven down on that, on those uh, pork loin I got in there. I'm gonna cut that down to about 325 or 320. Actually, 300 is what I'm gonna put it on. And let that cook, and it'll cook just as pretty and nice as anything you ever saw. Got to bring this to a boil, then cut that fire down a little bit. It's about to boil right now. Go and boil, baby. You see a watch pot never boil. I'm watching hell out of that and it's boiling right now. Mmm. Mmm. You know, my mother used to make this backbone and toast, but she didn't have a lot of the things that I put in there today because they didn't have them around at that time. They are. Uh, like, for instance, this, uh, this Sun Sweet Light Baker. That's wonderful. It really is. And it helps, it helps the flavor, too. And you need a little juice in there, and I put a little juice in. Come on, boil that baby wing for me. I appreciate it. You know, the fire out, maybe it'll work. It does. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Come on, baby. That's on medium low. I'm gonna put it up on medium. Bring that thing to a boil. I'm gonna put it on simmer, 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 simmer. Let it simmer, simmer, simmer all it wants to. It'll boil in just a minute, and I'm gonna sit back down over there and eat and tell you all a few stories. Because I got three or two I want to tell you. The old ones that I've told before. 
but I haven't heard them in a long time myself, and I'll get to where I want to hear them again, you know? Cajun stories, and I'm half Cajun and proud of it, very proud of that. My mama was Louisiana French Cajun, wonderful cook, a creative cook that I inherited her creativity, I think, and that's why I create different dishes most people wouldn't even dream of, and I wonder where they come from with me, too. Now, that's beginning to boil. So I'm going to put the lid on that and lower that fire to a simmer, 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 and let that rascal cook and cook and cook until it gets tired of cooking. Come on down there, fire. Come on down. Be nice. Not too far. There you go, simmering around in my stomach's ground. You already hear that. It tastes, it smells that, and it's, it's doggone good stuff. Before I take a bite of anything, I'm going to tell you a story, a Cajun story. That I'm... Very few people know this about me, but I'm a safety engineer by profession. I'm a professional member of the American Society of Safety Engineers and have been for too many years. And this happened because uh, I used to train men and women to become safety engineers and safety work. They got all kind of fun, and they just safety people. And I, a big oil company in South Louisiana brought two Cajuns to me and said, look, we want you to train these men to be good safety people. So I'll do my best. Do you know how I train them, huh? They say no, but we always know that they never I've seen one come out that was bad. I said, yeah, one or two, but they didn't stay in safety. I got them out of it. They got to be with me for six months, five days a week, five working days a week for six months. They got to go everywhere with me. You got to pay all the expenses of me and them, whether I'm making a talk, or if I'm cooking somewhere, or if I'm talking about safety to someone, or, or setting up a safety program. These two men got to go all the time. He said, that's what they said, that's all right. Now let me tell you something about the Cajun people. They'll bet you on anything in this world. I've got to, got to remind you that, that, that that comes into this story after a while. They, they just, they can't help but bet on anything, I guarantee. Well, these two men, I said, look, I want you to go to Chicago to the National Safety Conference. When you get up there, I want you to go to every class that you possibly can and learn all you possibly can about safety. And when you brought yourself back down here, you can talk with me, and I'll talk with you, and maybe you can tell me some stuff I don't know, and maybe you'll tell me some stuff that I can help you with. But don't miss those meetings. You go to those. Okay, as you stand, that's my name in front. So they went to Chicago, and they went to all the meetings. They didn't miss any meeting. They went to every damn one of them. But on the last night, they had a big banquet at 8 o'clock in the big boarding house where they were staying, quote, a big hotel. And they met in the lobby at 7 o'clock. And one of them said, do you know this fellow was going to make this spoke tonight, huh? I said, no, I don't know him. He said, no, I don't know him. He said, I wonder if you stand on him. I don't care if you stand on him or not. I don't know him. And I'm so tired. I've got so much in my head I'm trying to remember so I can talk to you stand about it. I don't know what they did. Let's don't go. The other one said, okay, let's don't go. Let's go up to one of our rooms, drink a few beers, and watch television. So they went upstairs, and they were watching television. And the television come on there, and there was a good-looking female girl, lady women, sitting on a ledge on the 22th floor of one of them tall buildings in Chicago. And you could hear the television people talk with them, because your television people, they're sneaky. They talk to you, and you can talk to them, too, you know? Somebody on television say, don't, please don't jump. She said, I'm going to jump. Please don't jump. Think about you, Papa. I ain't got no Papa. Me, I'm going to jump. One of them Cajuns said, I'll bet you $50 you don't jump. He said, you got to bet, my friend. Please don't jump. Think about you, mama. I ain't got no mama. I'm going to jump. Think about you cheering. I ain't got no cheering. I'm going to jump. Choom, she jumped. That Cajun said, here's your $50. See, I can't took that. How come the reason you can't took that, huh? Because you bet, and I bet with you. Nope, can't took it. How come you can't took it? Well, you know, I was watching the 6 o'clock news, and I saw the same thing, and I knew she was going to jump. <laughs> that other case, I was watching it too, and I didn't think she'd do it the second time. 
Let me pour myself a little wine. A little red wine goes good with pork, goes good with anything. Somebody said, what kind of wine should I have with this? What kind of wine you got? That's all the kind. That's what you have to do. We'll take a little sip to see if this is going to taste good or not. Tastes good enough. Let me put a little bit of this pork backbone on my plate. Oh, that look good. I believe it's going to taste good, too. I'm going to see about it right now. Y'all don't mind, I'm sure. Just take a little taste of this good, tender pork loin. Let's see about this backbone and turnip. I love backbone and turnip. That all good, I guarantee. So good, I got to take another little taste of soap. You know how it is. Ooh wee. Mm, 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 mm. Oh man, oh man. Mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. Oh boy. Mm. Mm. Wipe your mouth, Justin. All right. Take a sip. Sip of wine, all right? Sip of wine. Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, boy. Ah. Oh, man, come here, backbone. See if you taste as good as that rose. Tastes even better. If possible, it does, I guarantee. <laughs>
Ooh. And yeah. They're pretty, yeah. Now, ordinarily, we would have to rinse that duck with water. And we want to dry him real good because we're going to season him. You know, kids like to hunt duck, but I got them out of the refrigerator. <laughs> what a toy, though. Know. They didn't get there by themselves, no. <laughs> That's for sure. You know, every time I see a duck, I think about that old Cajun guide friend with me. He took a certain big shoot from Mississippi, hunting every year, and he had a problem, a drinking problem. He wasn't an alcoholic, he was a drunkard. Yeah. <laughs> and this fellow that went with him every year knew about that, but he missed one year. He just missed one year. And in that year, he forgot about them problems. So when he brought himself down to South Louisiana to hunt with his favorite Cajun guide, he brought along with him a fifth of Old Master whiskey and took it with him. And they got out in that P-Rogue boat, and that Cajun couldn't keep his eye off of them whiskey what he had. He said, give me a taste of that. He still forgot about that. And he got that bottle, shoo, he took a taste of it right now, and he kept the bottle. And it was hot that day, and it was not many duck fly. He didn't get none up close, so he hauled off there and drank that whole fifth of whiskey and get drunk. Whoo! <laughs> and that's why one duck came by. And man, he called him up. He wasn't too drunk to call him. <laughs> but they moved in the boat, and that duck come close, and that fella from Mississippi, he got up and bloom, 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 emptied his gun, did not move a feather, not one. <laughs> and this old drunk Cajun guy, he jumped up there and point that gun up in the air and bloom! That duck fall down. He must have been a hundred feet in the air. He fall down and that fellow from Mississippi say, whoo, that was a good shoot, I guarantee. That guy say, man, with a bunch like that, I should have got 12 or 11, I guarantee. <laughs> <Hoo-wee>. <laughs> now we're gonna stuff these ducks and fix them in this bag, this brown and serve bag. We're gonna cut an onion, onion to you, in uh, four quarter, and an apple in four quarter. We're not gonna leave one quarter there. And we're gonna stuff them duck with a clove of garlic. A piece of apple and a piece of onion. Clove of garlic, piece of onion, piece of apple. It don't make some different what rotates you get them on, just so you get them all on there. You know? Yeah. I got one uh, little thing of garlic left over. I'll put that in the gravy. Don't worry, I'm not gonna waste that. Then we take them, we're gonna salt and pepper these duck, a little red pepper. Mmm, mmm, <laughs> man. I'll put a little black pepper on that too. Man, somebody enlarged the hole on that, I'll guarantee. <laughs> and a little salt. And we're gonna rub a little olive oil on there. Mm-hmm. That olive oil is going to make it brown pretty and give it a good flavor too. It help out. All that help. And I'm going to put them on this bag right here. Now, you know, we like to bag our duck. That's true. But we got a new way here. It's brand new. I got to get that open. Yeah, there she go. We're going to put that duck on now. Mm. Put in the bag down in there real good. Uh, 
Oh, it smells good. That onion done opened my sciences up. <clears throat> yeah. Don't want to lose any onion. Now, I got that in there like that, and I'm just going to get a little onion and not going to cut this in little bitty pieces. Just going to cut it up to give a little flavor to the gravy. And we put that all in there, too, and I might just as well put that little clove of garlic. I don't want to waste anything. Put it in there like that. Mmm. 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 That smells good, too. Then we put a little Worcestershire sauce. We spread that on there like that. Measure that real careful. Mmm. Then we don't want to forget the most important thing. One cup of sauternes wine. Get them duck drunk so they'll taste Oh, yeah. Put that on there like that. And then we close this bag up and seat it with a little thing what come with it. Put that on there and shut her up tight. And get this out of my way right here, too. Now, you see this fork? It's a two-pronged fork. I'm gonna punch at least six holes in this bag. I say at least. Sometime I punch more. I'm gonna put seven just for good measure. You do that so that your bag will not explode in the oven. Your temperature, 350. We're gonna put that duck right in there. And you don't want your temperature to ever be over 350 when you're cooking in these brown and serve bags. Now, that's going all right. Mm. You know, putting them duck away like that. Let me put this down here. It reminds me of a story I got to tell you. I'm just dying to tell you this story. Years ago, I got a couple of friends, and one of them was told this story on the self. He said, we go over to False Rivers, that's about 35 miles from Baton Rouge. We go over to False Rivers to hunt them duck, me and Jean Baptiste. And we go get one of them cabins, what they got there for a dollar and a half. You know, that's a long time ago, I guarantee. <laughs> and we get in them cabin, at dusk dark, and we put ourselves in bed because we want to be sure we get up when dawn make its first little crack, so we can go out there and look on them lake and see if there's some duck out there. Well, we get up when dawn make its first little crack and we go out there and look on that lake and she's black with duck, whoo, I guarantee all over them lake. We rush back in the house and I get my twice barrel carabine and John Bautista get his automatic shoot gun. That's a once hole gun, would shoot three times hand running from the same hole if the game wasn't there. And if he ain't there, it'll shoot five times right from the same place. <laughs> We go outside there and we get on our belly like a alligator and we crawl to this little patch of grass and make like we eat and that little patch of grass and hide there real good, you know. And we get close, close, close on them duck. And I'm raised that twice barrel Caribbean gun and get at least a hundred the first shoot. They sit so quiet. And zoom, the sky get black with duck. Not even my pool do is left out there. Man, that put me hot. And John Baptiste, he lost his temper plum. I said, don't lose your temper. He said, I done lost it. I said, don't you see them cow eat them water lily on the edge of them lake down there? Them duck ain't scared for that. He said, but I ain't no cow. I said, you're going to be one, I guarantee. He said, how I'm going to do that? I said, we're going to Baton Rouge to the slaughtering house and we're going to get this a cow hide for 50 cents. Four bit and we're going to brought ourselves back and we're going to get them same cabin and get on them cow hide tomorrow and we're going to get them duck. He said, let's go. We go to Baton Rouge, we get the cow hide, we brought ourselves back. We get them same cabin for another dollar and a half. We put ourselves in bed when it looked like it's gonna get dust dark because we want to be sure we get up before dawn make its first little bitty crack. And we get up and we go out there and we look on that lake and she's black with duck some more. Ah, we are guaranteed. We go back in the house and I get my twice barrel carabine. Jean Baptiste get his automatic shoot gun. We get them cow hide. We go out front and we get on the cow hide. Me, I'm the front, John Baptiste, he's the behind. We go to this little patch of grass and make like we eat, and that little patch of grass and make like, look just like a cow, I guarantee. <laughs> this little patch and that little patch, and we get close, 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 close on them, duck. And man, I'm raised my gun, 
going to get at least 200 the first shoot. They sit so quiet out there. And just as I do that, John Baptiste beat me on the back. Bloom, bloom, bloom. I say, man, raise your gun and shoot. Do not you see them duck out there on that lake, huh? He said, forget about them duck. Here comes the bull. <laughs> Well, that's about enough bull, and we got to go on with some cooking here. And I'm, forget about them duck too, like my friend. So what I'm gonna do right now is cook a goose. A goose is, we got a good recipe how to fix a goose. And I'm gonna get one right now. You know, this looks like this show is for the birds, huh? <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I'm gonna get a goose. I got one of them gooses in here. We got to show you how to fix that. Boy. That goose looks clean, he's fine, but we're gonna marinate him. And one part of vinegar, vinegar to you, and three part of water. Now you know what us Cajuns say, we put him in that vinegar and let him sleep all night, if he's a wild goose. If he ain't a wild geese, he's one that's just wild in the backyard, you got to run him down. <laughs> About, uh, well, one to three hours. That's about all it took to do that. Now, put them goose on here. I've got about a, a pint of vinegar here. We're going to pour them on there real good. Pour them all over them gooses. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is some water that we've measured. Now, you don't have to be exact in your measurements about that. It, uh, you can, uh, you want to cover them gooses. That's what you want to did. You want to cover him with that marination. Cold water. We're going to put that on him. <clears throat> and that's about right. We're going to let him sleep in that all night long. He's a wild goose. We couldn't call him at all. So we can let him sleep all night. Put this out of my way, too. Now, now, I got a new goose is what I got hid right here. He been marinate him. Now this is a tame, tame geese. He's been cleaned and washed. and marinate it. Now, after you marinate them on a goose or a duck, if you're gonna marinate them, you wanna be sure you wash them real good and wash all of that uh, marinade off of them. Now, I got a few little ingredients that got to go with him. Mm-hmm. That onion on open my sciences already. <laughs> First, I'm gonna salt and pepper this goose with a little red pepper. Stand up there. And he did. A little black pepper. Not much. I use red pepper because I like the flavor better and it's digestible. <laughs> black pepper's not. It's a root, wood, and red pepper is a vegetable. Get, to, get a little of that salt and pepper inside that goose. Be sure and do that. If you don't do that, you're missing something. Put this out of my way now. Now, I'm gonna put a, a whole turnip in them gooses. There you are. Now that turnip, that helps the flavor and take the wild taste out of a, a goose or a duck. Believe it or not, it sure will do it, too, I guarantee. Now, over here, I've got a rule. First, you make a rule. And this rule, we cook this ahead of time, and it's just the right color right now. Now, we make that rule with about a cup of flour and about one half to three quarters of a cup of olive oil. And we use olive oil because, number one, we like olive oil. Number two, it's good for you. And it's low in that real fatty stuff. I don't know how you call that cholesterol, you know. 
Now, I'm going to put in here two large onions that have been chopped up. And about a half a cup of parsley. Now, let me tell you something right now. Parsley is a wonderful seasoning. Most people don't realize that. They use it for garnishments. But it's a wonderful seasoning. That's for sure. I'm going to stir this for about two or three minutes. I'm going to put that fire down so it won't burn, too. You got to watch them roux. You burn the roux, you got to start all over, and that's bad. Whoo, I guarantee that's bad. You know, this reminds me of all these gooses and ducks, what I got chipped. I never will forget this old Cajun who said he gonna took his son for his first hunt. You know, oh, Papa, I don't care whether they're Cajuns or any other kind. They like to, for their son to talk that they're the very best. And this, this old Cajun ain't no different. And he took his son, he said, son, look, it's time we learn how to hunt. You tell you, you want to go? He said, oh, yeah, Papa. He said, okay, tomorrow morning we're gonna go out and get them gooses. He said, okay. So the next day, they go out and they get in the pirogue boat and they get in the blind and Papa will stick both in out in case somebody shoots straight up, you know. And if you don't, shoo, she gonna turn over. He said, okay, son, when them gooses come, we'll show you how that did. You got to get the very best and arm that. The very best shoot, too, and arm that. I'm gonna show you just how that's did. He said, okay, Papa. Not long, here come two gooses in a bunch all by themselves. And shoo, he called them up and they'd light right down in front, right there. He raised up with that automatic shoot gun. Bloom, 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 bloom. The game warden ain't there. And them goose just flap their wing and fly right off. He says, son, you don't know you how proud me I am that you brought yourself with me today. I guarantee. Most people live all their life and never get to see what you a little bitty boy see here today. In fact, some people live to be 110 and don't get to see a miracle like you a little bitty boy, 10 year old, see here today. The little boy say, what miracles you talk about, huh, Papa? He say, what miracles I'm talking about? I'm talking about the miracles that them two dead gooses get up and fly like that. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly burned my roof too, told that story. <coughs> now, I got to put some water on that. Three cup of water I got measured in this little picture, yeah? And I put that on them roof and stir it up a little bit more. They kind of blend it in together, you know? That's what you got to do. Got to blend that up together. Now I'm gonna put some garlic. You know, always remember never to put your garlic in anything, any kind of gravy until you got some juice on that. Because if you put it in there, when there ain't no juice, it's gonna get hard, Whew, and it don't taste good. And you wonder what that is, that rock. What that rock is you done got in your mouth when you go to chew. And garlic will get hard like a rock. Now, it just, it just gets hot. That rule will join together with everything and be just as pretty and come out a real nice brown gravy. Put that a little more high. Now, I'm gonna put just three cup of sauternes wine on that. Mmm, <laughs> that smell good. I guarantee. <laughs> now, you know a goose, them gooses, they're very dry. And you want to use something to be sure to hold the moisture, so I use cream of mushroom soup. And it came out of that good, yeah. <laughs> we stir that around in there. And I'll put the juice of a lemon in that after I get this stirred just a little, little bit. The juice of one lemon to help take the while. Mm. And about a tablespoonful of Worcestershire. It'll make anything taste good. When it's cooked, one tablespoon. Got that right now. 
And we stir that just the least little bit. See if we can get it blended together. And it do. Now I got a, a bay leaf over here. And then uh, that bay leaf has got a teeth pick stuck through that. And the reason we got them teeth picked through that, we don't want to lost that bay leaf. <laughs> We're gonna stick that bay leaf on them gooses. So we don't lose him, see that? Put him on there. Then we're gonna put them goose. Right here, in this right here. Man, that's nice and warm, I put my hand on it. <laughs> and that bay leaf is put there because we're gonna took that bay leaf out <coughs> in about an hour, just about an hour. And we're gonna took that out. Now, I got an oven here yeah, at 375 degree. Now, I got to put something in here that I forgot to do, but that ain't nothing unusual. We do that every now and then. A rack underneath them gooses. And the reason we do that is we don't want them gooses to burn. Now, whoo, that's a lot better, yeah. Hmm, that smells good. And we're gonna cook them for two hours, but we gonna baste him every 20 minutes. And I'm gonna stop right here and show you what I mean by baste. We mean do like that, and it don't take long. About three sweeps with a good basting spoon or ladle, and you got it made. We gonna put him in here and I'm gonna get me a hot pad and show you something that most people don't realize. We're gonna show you how to baste one in an oven so you won't took him out and get your temperature all bad. You wanna keep that temperature up just as much as you can. Just baste him one time like that, maybe two. Put him lid back on now. Put him in that oven like that, and let him go. Now, the way you told how he's done is the joint. You move a joint with a fork or a knife, and that joint moves real easy, he's done. Some people like to stick a fork in there, but when they do that, man, when they do that, well, they ruin all the juices. Now, I want to show you how you took a duck. We got them ducks with cooking there, but I got one that's already dead. I'm gonna take it out of them bag. You slit that bag with a knife. Ooh, wee. And you reach in there with a fork because them duck is hot, yeah. And you get one out of there with that fork. I'm gonna put one on this plate. I'm gonna go to the table and eat that too. Won't that pretty? Oh, man. <laughs> now, I want to, first of all, I'm going to cut them gooses. Carve just the least little bit off of there for me to eat. And it's juicy. You notice that? It's as juicy as it can be. And tender, tender, tender. Whoo. Oh, man. Let me get a little gravu. How you call gravy on that? Now, there's some hot slaw if I would like that. A little wine we put on that. Mmm. Sit myself down.
How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me a guarantee. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee you. Talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. And we've got a beautiful roast we're gonna cook for you today. And we're gonna make a picnic potato salad after I finally get this roast in that oven there. And the, this is a barbecued roast. The way we're gonna cook this, we started off at 350 degrees for one hour. And then we turn it off and turn it down to 200 degrees for eight hours. It's, Cook it overnight if you want to. Cook it until this afternoon, but eight hours, and it comes out just like it's barbecued, and I'll show you why in just a few minutes. I, I first got to stuff that devil with garlic. <laughs> and garlic is so good, and I love it. I make a garlic sandwich every now and then. It's pretty good. <laughs> we'll stuff it with garlic, green onion, and cayenne peppers. And I want you to know it never gets too hot, it cooks all that hot out. None of it's in there left in there. It, first of all, I take this knife and make a little hole right here. Enough for me to hold, for that hole to hold. One little old clove of garlic. Put that down in there real good. A green onion. Put it in there like that. Come here to me, knife. Cut it off right there. Then stuff this other side where the garlic is with this pepper. Go down in there. Now you going, boy. <clears throat> Man, that smells good already. I'll, get, I'll guarantee. Let me put another one right in here. Come here, you nice clove of garlic. The garlic smells good, you know it? We put the rest of this green onion down in there. Get this garlic out of the way. Get out of the way, boy. Now you going. Trim this off the way it looked pretty. Come over there. Now to put this rest of this, this hot pepper right down in here with them. It'll be close to where his brother is on this other one there. Get on in there. Oh, now you're going. We just cut the top off. It's all the wood in here. Toughest pepper I ever saw. <laughs> Put another one right here. Nice deep hole with this nice smelly. Smell like garlic, it is garlic, it better smell like. <laughs> Green onion. You didn't have to go all the way down there, you know. There's other people got things to do here too. Not a pepper. Oh, that pepper, he thought I'm not gonna put it in here, and I'm not. There you go. Oh, Papa, I'll tell you that for true. Another old writer, and this is a 20 pound roast, my friend. When I say 20 pound, I mean just exactly 20 pound. I had to argue with that butcher over a half a pound there once. <laughs> Come on, garlic. You might just well give up, I'm gonna put you down in there. You're kind of small, so I put two. Get down in there, mm-hmm. Green onion, right by the side of that garlic. Cut it off, make it look pretty. Come here. You thought you were gonna be lost, but you're not, no. 
get on in there now. Uh, right shell. Let's cut it this way this time. Mm hmm. Ah, garlic. Put it down in there, yeah. <laughs> Green onion. Down in there on the side. Get down in there and quit arguing. Go in there. Hot pepper. What it says put in here, hot pepper. Save you for the last hole I'm gonna put in this little old roast. It's just 20 pounds. Now, put that there like that. Come here, garlic. Kind of small, so I'll put two in there just to be sure I didn't, didn't miss anything. Now, on your own, go down in there. All the way. Put this little old garlic, this old hot pepper down in there. Make him feel good. Cause it got down in there real good. Now, got that done. Put this up here like this. Wipe my hand on my little dish towel that I carry in my dangarees. Now in here, you either put peanut oil or olive oil. I, I like olive oil, and I know it's good for you. And I'm going to put olive oil in there, just enough to keep it from burning. And it, it doesn't take a great deal. You don't measure this. You just put down here until you've got enough sense to stop. <laughs> in other words, you cover the bottom of your pot with either olive oil or peanut oil. That actually is about, I would say, two tablespoons full of, full of olive oil. <laughs> that's about all, I hear you laugh, but that's true, yeah. <laughs> now, on the dish, I got to put some salt and red pepper. We know how to do that. Salt. I'm measuring that very carefully with my eyeball. <laughs> I'm pretty good at that part. Now, I don't rub that in, I pat it. Pat a cake, pat a cake, because man, yeah. <laughs> that should be enough, enough oil, enough of salt for that. And then cayenne pepper. I'm gonna pat that too. And I hope my eyes don't itch. And that looks like a lot of cayenne pepper. Yeah. It is, but it's not too much, believe me. Good stuff. Now, cayenne pepper, is good for you. Black pepper is wood, believe. Did you know that? That's true, wood. And I don't use black pepper to cook with. I love the taste of it. I just don't use it to cook with because I know that it's indigestible. Now, I've got to wipe that off, and I hate to put it on here, but I'm not gonna put it on this dish towel right here. So I won't be having it on my towel and forget to put that up on my eyeballs. And that's bad. <laughs> Come over there. Gotcha. Most of you anyhow. Now, I'm going to put this in here so that I won't be bothered with it being in my way. I've got two little forks that I use for things like this. Little fellas, you know. Go down in there. And what we want to do is just pick you up real easy. Easy to do with my hand, but I don't want to be insanitary, you know. You know, no such word as, as unsanitary. What are you doing in there, boy? In the wrong place? Now, what? now let's us just go in this pot like a little gentleman. You know that's heavy? Ooh, ah, come out of that. <clears throat> now, thank you. I'm going to put these right here on this deal because I'm going to move. What I'm going to do, though, I'm not going to throw this garlic away. I'm just going to put it down in there 
We'll put a little juice in there. Make it taste a little more better, you know? No question about that. Get these peppers out of my way. These onions out of my way. And this thing right here, I'm gonna put it over somewhere out of my way, I got to. The man in the world, I'd hate like the devil to drop that with something on it, you know? Particularly on my feet, my poor old feet, you know? Go over here. Got it. Now, I'm gonna mix a little something in here. This is two cups of dry white wine, tasty. White wine, I'll tell you that. Don't ever cook with a wine that you won't drink. And this is liquid smoke. This is hickory. Hickory smoke. I'm gonna put a teaspoonful in this. Don't wanna put any more than that because look, this stuff is strong. Strong, strong. Whoo, boy. Get this out of my way. I got to move this so I can read and be sure I got everything. Got them? Pounder? Yep, yep, yep. Now, everything's in there except this, and I'm gonna stir that with my tasting spoon. I'm not gonna pour it on that roast, no. I'm gonna pour it around it. Use that tasting spoon to taste that a little later myself. It's gonna be good. Get all this out of my way. Put this little knife over here where I won't cut myself. But I'm gonna put this in a 350 degree oven for one hour. Now this is, e this is easy cooking, easy barbecuing. It's a lot cooler in here than it is outside, I can tell you that. Let me see how much you weigh. You don't weigh too much. I'm gonna put you in that oven right now. Here we go. That oven 350 degrees. I'll tell you that for true. Come on here, boy. Let's just go over here and put this in that oven like you know what you're doing, whether you do or not. Now, cook good there, boy, because you look so nice. Now I'm going to make a potato salad with all this stuff here. I've got to get my pot that I can put that in. Right here. Oh, yeah. Put this over here out of my way. Put these things over here out of my way. Got to keep my measuring spoon. I may need them to measure some salt, something like that, you know. Put these over here out of my way along with that. I don't need this uh, recipe anymore today. I'm through messing with that meat. I tell you, I'm barbecuing it inside where it's nice and cool. Go down there. Now, this is picnic potato salad. I got five pounds of boiled potatoes there, kind of chopped up. I'm gonna put that in this pot to mix all this other stuff with that, except that. And I'm going to uh, beat that up and make a dressing out of it. It's five pounds of taters, Irish taters. Get in there, don't want to waste any of that. Now, put that right down and stir. Somebody missed that potato. Me, most probably, trying to chop them up. Not uh, going. Don't want to chop them too fine. I like to have a whole mouthful while I reach and get good potato salad. Mm -hmm. That spoon does a good job. Whew. That's good enough, look good enough to me, and I'm the one I got to please, and that's what's good. Mmm. 
into this, I'm going to put four, I'm going to put six hard-boiled eggs. I decide I like egg and salad. There it goes. And then I mix it. Mix it up and stir. You stay out of my way. Stir this. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the secret of cooking. Every time you add something, stir. It keeps the flavor. You spread the flavor more evenly like that. Believe me. And after I put that, I put a cup of chopped celery. Come in. One cup of chopped celery. Right there. That's good. Put that right back there. Mm. Ooh, boy. Mix up. Going in. into that, right after that, I put one and a quarter cup of chopped onion. Tell you how they was down without onion to me, I'll tell you the truth. Not that I like onion, but make it taste more better. It really does. Mix. I'm going to tell a story, but I'll wait. I ain't ready yet. Got to chop these tails right. Got them. And mix. Into this, I put a, a cup of chopped dill pickles. I chopped these dill pickles. Now, it's not dill relish. These are dill pickles with the juice. Come on, my hands are clean. Put that in there and stir. So just a little. Just, just to know you're mixing. I'm gonna put uh, one quarter cup of, of chopped sweet pickle. Well, this is sweet relish we use it, and it's good stuff. Good enough for me to use it, I guarantee. Whew. Come on now, I don't need to mix you any better. Then I'm gonna put a, uh, a cup of pimento stuffed olives chopped. Come on out there. Got it. Stir that around a little bit there. And I'm gonna put a cup of chopped black olives. All this adds to the flavor, believe me it does. Now I think I've got everything in there and forced into it. I'm gonna mix it a little bit. And I'm gonna make a dressing for this. And the dressing is doggone good. You can eat it on cereal even, it tastes so good. Now, push this aside and get my other little bowl I got over here to do a little mixing with. Don't look so little to me. Whew, come here to me, boy. Now, we're going. Don't knock any of that off as you stay. I'm not about to knock it off, partner. Okay. See, I answered myself. This is mayonnaise. And this recipe called, let me move that damn thing. So, oh, two, the mayonnaise is two cups of mayonnaise. And we use olive oil in this too. And I'll show you what I do with it. First of all, I want to get all this in here. All of the two cup. Put you down there out of my way and then I can get to really dip in this. I'm using a spatula, a rubber spatula, get it out of here. As much of it as I possibly can. And that's nearly all of it. Some people like for me to leave a little, like when my mama used to make cakes, I'd eat the, the dough that she had left over, you know, always. Ah. That looks good enough to me, so I'm gonna put this back over here. And into this, I have two tablespoons full of uh, horseradish sauce. It goes good in this, believe it or not, and you'll find it out when you taste it. Two tablespoons full of horseradish sauce. Now, not horseradish, no, horseradish sauce. Put you right there. I gotta get all that off of there because it's needed and I'm gonna beat the daylights out of it in just a minute. <laughs> it mixes right here with a little olive oil. 
And we do that to make it taste more better. A little olive oil. Here let's go. Measure it very carefully, a tablespoon. <laughs> Just about a tablespoon. And we take this whiskey and we can get with it and beat this so it comes right back to the consistency of that mayonnaise as it was, a mayonnaise, mayonnaise, whatever you want to call it down. I call it both. A lot of other bad words too when I spill some on me. Now into this, I'm gonna put a little salt. You got to have a little salt. I'll put about a teaspoonful of salt, and that's a teaspoonful, better. And uh, that's a half a teaspoon. <laughs> and I'm gonna stir that in there good too with this whisk that I've got here in my hand. Got to get the motion with it. And this is mild picante sauce. And this is easy cooking. It's easy cooking. You got to taste that. It's mild enough. Mm -hmm. Mix it good. And I'm going to pour it over this tater salad. If you ain't got the motion, you ain't got the swing, I'll tell you that, that's the sure thing. Uh -huh. That looks good. We've got to see how it tastes now. That's all there is to it. Put it on this, and let it sit on top while I go sit down and eat myself some of this. I got a friend that was a guy that had a bad habit of drinking too much, and he went to he got a man out in the in the in to, to hunt some duck in Southwest Louisiana. And he got drunk, ooh, man, man. He got drunk, drunk, drunk. I'm gonna leave this here like that. Close my olive oil up. I'm gonna go sit down, cause I got some stuff I snuck on y'all. I cooked it ahead of time and fixed it. And I'm gonna go taste it, see what it tastes like, see if it's fit to eat. If it is, y'all all get a taste. And my nose is just athletic. Running all the time. <laughs> Sit myself down here like I know what I'm doing. Broke my chair. But not where it needed, it needed where I sat. And I've got some potato salad. It's already made, and I'm gonna finish telling you that story too. I've got to taste this so it looks good. It looks good. Mmm, mmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they went out in that, and they got in the blind. And that, that guide found that the man he took out there to hunt them duck, had some good Cajun whiskey made up in Tennessee, how you call it, shop down the hill. And he grabbed that bottle and tipped it, and he got drunk and drunk. He had a single barrel shotgun. <clears throat> Let me pour a little wine there. It's always so good to have a little wine when you want to eat this good food. That's just, that's just a swallow. That's a half a swallow. <laughs> Might just take a little sip of that while I'm thinking about it. Mm, mm. And then these ducks kept coming over. That wine tastes good enough for another swallow. And uh, that man was just wearing out his shotgun, shooting at him. And he told his God after him, he'd been shooting him and shooting him and shooting him. How come you ain't shot? He said, I'm waiting to get a good shoot, me. And after a while, here come one single mallet of flapping his wings and passing by there. And that, that uh, drunk Cajun raised up. Boom! Kill that duck dead. And he fell. The fellow he took hunting said, that was a damn good shot, I guarantee it. That guard says, 
I don't think it was so good. I should have got 12 and 11. 12 and 11 of them out of that bunch that flew over. <laughs> I guarantee Let me taste this roast. This roast has got to be good. Looks good. Mmm. Mmm. It is good, I guarantee you that. Ha! Mm, I'll just try some more. In a little of that potato salad. I love potato salad. I love to make it. I love to make it even without potatoes. And I do that too. Tastes good, I guarantee. Come here. Get out of there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee. Talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. We've got some lamb we're going to fix for you today. A lamb and potato casserole and lamb patties. I'm first going to work on the, the uh, casserole, lamb and potato casserole. And it's going to be good. The potatoes have been mashed, the lamb has been fixed to mix with that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with it, too, and put it in a nice little casserole dish there and get with it. Listen to that bloom, bloom. Let that fool can't say flounder. <laughs> yeah, my goodness sakes alive. What I have here now is this, this, uh, this lamb. I, I bought it and cooked it for about 10 minutes so that it would be when in seasoned water. So we'll have a little more flavor than just raw lamb. And um, I'm going to mix that with mashed potatoes. Might just well get to mixing and quit talking about it. But I am. But in this right now, come here, potatoes. In here, I'm going to put the lamb and mix it well. That's good enough anywhere I want to put it. I'll mix it real well. Got to. So it'll be pretty. All right, lamb. Be nice. Don't bite. Let's just get this done right. And after I fix these lamb patties, this this lamb and uh, potato casserole, I'm gonna make some lamb patties and just fry the devil out of them and eat them as I go along. Too, I love lamb. I really love it. American lamb, lamb that hadn't been frozen. And I have a friend who raises lambs out, out in California. And when I go out there, we eat a whole damn lamb, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> he knows how I love lamb. Get this mixed up. I see I got to put all I got to put in here now. That's got three cups of lamb. It's been parboiled a little bit. Four cups of mashed potatoes. And they've been cooked and really tender. Seasoned with water, with minced garlic and salt and drained. And I'm gonna put two tablespoonful of sharp cheddar cheese. I'm gonna wait until I get that lamb in that little deal over there before I do that, because I'm gonna sprinkle that on there. And then I'm gonna cover the top of it with, with cheddar cheese. Good yellow cheddar cheese. I got that mixed about as good as I'm gonna get it, I think. Wearing myself out. Let me move this out of my way. And I'm gonna take this over there and put it in there real pretty light. Cover it with cheese and put it in the oven where it's got to go. It uh 350 degrees, but just and you got to watch it. You don't want it to get too hot, but you can't keep it from getting too hot, but you can take it out if it gets too hot. Okay. Well, oh, let's get in there real nice. That's a nice looking casserole dish. Let's get that in there, spread it out. 
Helped me mix it better, too. Now you're going. Looking better every minute. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. That's looking good. See if I can't get all that in there right quick, like. Not quick, like, but easy, like. Did it. Nearly all of it. Gonna get it all. Place you right there and spread you out good and put them cheese on top of you. What I'm gonna do, put this right here. I don't need it this moment, but I do need put you in there. Now you come over here where I got the cheese. Put that cheese on there. Isn't that pretty cheese? Good American cheddar cheese. I'm gonna cover the top with that after I sprinkle this uh, good uh, parmesan cheese in there and it'll sink down in it, don't worry. This is about uh, two tablespoons full of grated parmesan cheese, grated real fine. Mm. Just a little spreading with my hand. Now we put this good cheese on top of that. Just spread it on it good and you eat what's left over, you know. <laughs> I'm not gonna leave much over though, I'll tell you the truth. I'm pretty good at fixing this stuff where I come out even. Come on here, now you're going. And this is not sliced thin. We, we cut this cheese ourselves. We didn't uh, buy it sliced like this. We wanted to cut it like this, but it comes out good. You see that? This is gonna be pretty, 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 pretty. Ooh, yeah. Get on there, don't be acting like you don't want to do that, because I know you do. And they told me this tear out of that cheese, they wouldn't have enough. <laughs> and I love it. Let's get in there, we cover every, every, every corner we can with that cheese. I'm gonna do it. Come here to me, you, you I'm talking to. Now we got it. Just need to cover in there. It needs some right there. I see a little hole sticking itself out of me, and I'm gonna cover it good. Yeah. And that's all I'm gonna do. I don't care what anybody said. Now I'm gonna put this in the oven and let it bake until the cheese is melted real good. And it tastes so good, it really does. Put this over here and set it down while I open that hot oven. You know how that is. Oven hotter than 20 yards of where the devil has his mansion. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? All right, let's go in here like a nice little boy now. Now cook, damn you, cook. <laughs> now what I got to do, I'm gonna have to mix this, this patty material here with my hands, and they're clean. Believe me, they're clean and I'll just wipe them one more time now. But these are clean, these are clean hands, washed them yesterday. <laughs> and in this, get, I got my recipe here. I, I, I don't want to forget anything. When you, when you create cooking as I try to do and do, do quite frequently, as my mama used to tell me, don't try to remember them, write them down and I do this. I, I got a little bit better than two pounds of lamb in here. It's ground. I'm gonna put a half a cup of dried parsley in there. But first of all, I'm gonna see if this is it's just right for me to start putting stuff in there. And I gotta clean this towel, wipe my hand as often as I would like to. This is a half a cup of dried parsley. That's a half a cup. It'll look like a cup to me, so I'm not gonna put any more right now until I get this in there good. Now, all right, let's go. Let's get with, stay on the, stay on the table now. Talk to the, to the pan. You know, dried parsley has a good flavor. It tastes just like fresh parsley. If you don't tell anybody, they never know the difference. Believe me. 
Let's get in there good. Now we're good. You see why I got to mix this with my hands? I don't know any mix that I know of can get this like I'm getting with my hand right now. I'll tell you that for true. This making me think of a story. I'll tell you after a while, I'm busy now. Now let's put a little more of that parsley in there. And, and knead it is what you call kneading. You knead it. I'm gonna put a tablespoon full of onion powder in here in just a minute. Mm-hmm. If I can just get this mixed like I like it, hold still. I'll go this way if you want to go like that. I'm going to make you pat it right. If everybody in this place says no, they're wrong. I'm going to mix it right. I guarantee you. Onion powder. That looks like onion powder. That's garlic powder. Come here, onion powder. That's onion powder. I'm going to put it right in here right now. It says about a tablespoonful of onion powder. That's a tablespoonful, I can tell. Now we got the mixture in there real good. I'm making patties and I'm gonna fry and I'm gonna taste them and I'm gonna eat one just sure that I'm an inch high. Bet your last dollar on that. I need one of those heavy crocs to, bring, to mix this so it stay on here with me. But I'm doing all right. I'm getting it mixed up and that's all I want to do. Now into this, into this I'm gonna put a tablespoon full of white creme de menthe. Cream de menthe to most people. Ain't nothing in there, shucks. Here it is. Yeah, that's cream de mint. A tablespoonful. Actually, I think it ought to have more with somebody argued with me, so I said, let's do it all. We just put it in like you say. All right. Oh, boy, you coming along fine. Now, into this, I put some garlic powder. One teaspoon, no more. It looks like a pretty good teaspoon, don't it? I'm gonna put it in there anyhow with the one. Yeah, it'll taste the garlic good for you, and I love to eat it. If they say it's healthy, you look at the healthiest man in the world because I eat it every day of my life. We eat some garlic. You notice that that uh, professional way I have of mashing this meat up? Getting that stuff in all over it. Come on here, garlic. Gotcha. Now, into this, I have some uh, mild picante sauce. We got to put that in there. Spread it around just enough. I think it's a tablespoonful. That's what it is of picante sauce. Oh, that's smelling good. Even before I even start cooking it. Got to get it through it, and I'm getting it through and through, I guarantee. Hoo wee. Mm -hmm. I got one egg. I'm gonna mix that egg up real good with that little, little old spreading thing I got. But right now, Get it off my hands for just a little bit so I won't throw that thing out on the floor. Come here, eggs. And I just beat this till it's terrible. Beat it both ways. Get on that. Now that'll hold that together when we're frying. You know, that's why we put that egg in there. Actually, that's about the only reason to put the egg in there. But I got to mix egg and all. Whether you like to put your hand in the eggs or not, you got to do certain things you don't like every now and then in your life. Oh, you're looking good. Now, patties, get ready to go in that frying skillet over there. As soon as I put a little olive oil in it, Mm-hmm. If that egg don't hold out together, I'm gonna be one mad Cajun, I guarantee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're gonna put you right over here. 
going to move you from right here. Going to wipe your hands one more once until you get the way you got to pick up that thing. This is a clean dish towel we put out here just for this purpose. And it does a good job. Now what I want to do is put this frying skillet right here. Put a little olive oil in it. I use olive oil to cook with more than any other oil. But number one, it's supposed to be healthy. That's about two or three tablespoons. No, that's three. Three tablespoons full in there. It's supposed to be healthy. And I like to be healthy. Now it says salt and pepper to taste. I didn't put anything in here, so I'm gonna put a little pepper. It's cayenne pepper. And a little salt. I'm gonna turn that fire on and mix that one more once. See, this is the right one. Yep. What you know about that? I got the right fire. Whew. I'm gonna sit down here and be where well. I can see it. I'm gonna put it on a medium fire. Come on out here now. Just because my hand are greedy, don't act silly like that. Now, what I'm gonna do is mix this one more once to get all that salt and pepper out of one place and all the way through this. And it's getting all the way through it too, I guarantee. Mm. Mm. Come on here. I see this remind me of that story I've been trying to think of today. And I know what the story is, but as soon as I get one frying, I'm gonna tell you this story. This Cajun story is supposed to be true, and I don't doubt it. Why doubt it? Nobody believes it anyhow. Mm. Come on here now. Now he's doing fine. And I'm gonna make a nice pretty patty. Make a nice pretty patty here. It's gonna hold together. Bet you. It's better. And this is a patty, not a burger. Come on. And that oil is hot enough for me to put one in there, I'd bet money. Don't come apart now, you'll embarrass me if you do. I hear it frying. It's a little larger patty. All right, patties. Don't stick to the bottom of that thing. It's got oil in it. You're not supposed to stick. So nice, did they? Man, that's smelling good. Mm -hmm. And ain't all it tastes good. I could eat it raw right now. It's smelling so good. Don't smell that? Mm hmm. I got to dry my hands good enough to hold that spatula, to turn them over. So when I turn them here pretty soon, I can tell, I can look at that and tell. But the Lord, that fire a little. And I did. I want to tell you that story. There was a, a Cajun scientist. He was always scientific in something, you know. And he, he wanted to find a big stone, big rock. Well, he lived down in the swamp in the, in the marsh and there ain't no big rocks down there. So he went up north, way up north, around Shreveport, <laughs> right near a little town called Shongaloo. And he went on top of a deep hill, he went on top up there, and he found a great big round stone, and that's what he was looking for. So he got that round stone, he took a, 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 a sludge hammer, and all kinds of stuff to get it loose from what it was stuck to. And he got it loose from it. And man, he pushed it to where it rolled down that hill. And there was a little small town down there. That stone rolled through. 
the blacksmith, the barbering shop, the beauty shop, the library, and then it went right through a bank and ran, finally ran into a church where they had a fire going in the fireplace. And that said, you know that part? And what he did then, he, he went down there and people were just screaming and hollering. He's in there around the fire. He said, don't worry, this is scientific research going on here. Don't worry about that. And he got that rock and he started rubbing it all over with his hand. And he hugged that rock. Come on, turn, turn, turn. There we go. He hugged that rock real good and finally just went all over it. He stood up. That's true. No more. The rolling stone don't gather no more. <laughs> oh, you're going pretty good there. I got to let this fry just a little. And I'm going to mix a couple more and put it here, though. I can't let this get by with that because I need one myself. Like this one right here. <laughs> Let's go to old Justin Flake to be sure you got one to tell the people whether they're good or not. I can tell you they're good. Right now, I can tell by the way they smell that they're good. This little piece here might just well go in my plate, too. I don't want to miss this thing. Not at my age. Uh-uh. Yes, sir. There I go. Come on, cook, cook, cook. I generally cook these a, a medium, not too well done, because lamb is so tender and good that you don't want to just overcook it. Nine. Nine. Don't those look pretty? They are pretty. They are pretty now, I'll tell you right now. Ooh, wee. I've got to put another batch in there, though, if I can. And I think I can. I'm going to try. I've got to turn that fire down some more. That is hot fire. And that grease is hot in there, too. You hear? I know what I'm talking about. Scars me up. Mm-hmm. Patty. Not a burger, no. Patty. It's some of the state fairs up north in North Shreveport, way up north. You go get a, a, a lamb burger. And they're delicious. And I love to make a meatloaf with lamb and ham. And it tastes good as well as looks good. Come on, boy, you're doing pretty good, I can tell you that. It's red now. Need a little more of that. Mm-hmm. You look done to me, I don't know about you, but I'll tell you in just a few seconds whether they've done enough or not. They've not done enough, we'll turn the fire up a little bit. One more in here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna sit down over there as soon as I dry my hands good enough to pick up my fork at night. And I'm gonna check this stuff out. Lamb Patty, I'm telling you right now. I know some girls named Patty, but they, they're a lot prettier than these lamb patties, too. I go on too, I do. Now, put this right here. Go sit yourself down real quiet like, like a gentleman, Justin. And uh, let's check this lamb fatty out. Looks good to me. Maybe I ought to turn those first, but I'm not going to do it. They cook it on slow fire, low fire. Stand still, chair. Just put my napkin like I'm supposed to do that too, you know, be a gentleman. <laughs> going to do it too. Stuff that down in my belt so it won't drop on the floor. Now this is the lamb and potato casserole. I think I'll just put that right on here where I can get at it. Come on, come on. You think you're gonna stay in there? You're just wrong as hell. Now I got you. I wanna taste that and the patty about the same time. Mmm. That good Melican cheese. Let's see what the patty tastes like. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, nice. Giddy, 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 giddy. Ah. That maybe could cook a little bit more for most people, but it's fine for me. What kind of wine you drink with that? The kind of wine you like is what you do. That's the only thing I know to tell you about wine. I like a good red wine, or and a cheap one too. <laughs> mm. That casserole is delicious. You hear? Mm-hmm. Mm Oh, wait a minute. You know I forgot the most important thing? Yeah. Oh, it's looking good. I guarantee that's a fine one. Oh, boy. Hello there. I'm Justin Wilson. Back before I had a cooking show on television, or had written my first cookbook, I told stories while I was giving talks as a safety engineer, which I was then and still am now. People seem to like my Cajun stories, which please me no end because I have always admired and respected the Cajun people I've known all my life. I'm one half Cajun myself. I made several albums of humorous Cajun stories. I believe I had as much fun making the album covers. On one, I rode a rocket. On another, I lassoed an alligator. You might have noticed that I like to tell stories while I'm cooking. Everybody needs to laugh at least once a day. It's good for the heart and probably the digestion too, I guarantee. The show you're about to see was made for Mississippi Educational TV 25 years ago. It's all about cooking a roast pig, and I guess you can tell from my hat that it's a Christmas show. That don't matter. You can cook this pig for some other special occasion, too. Kayola! A joyeux Noel. That means a Merry Christmas with you. It's Christmas time, and it takes a lot of good food to feed them Cajuns. I guarantee. So I invited this fellow here to kind of help out. Now, when you want to cook a pig like this, it's not all that hard, but you got to be sure you, you pick the right kind of pig. Get one that the butcher will clean up real good for you, like this one. And also, to uh, get a white pig or a red pig. Uh, try not to get a black one, because you look like you need a shave all the time if you don't look out. <laughs> now, this one right here weighs between 10 and 12 pounds. And he'll feed just about that many people, maybe a little bit more, depending on who it is. Us Cajun, you know, we eat a lot more than that. And you know, we'd love to do things like this down where I live. And I never will forgot last Christmas, I got a friend who had a boy cheering that he sent to LUS. <laughs> and uh, he, he done mortgaged the farm and everything else to get him there. And when he sent him off there, he said, look, you can't brought yourself home because we ain't got no money. What you got to did, he just stay there until you get through with school. He said, okay, Papa. Well, he stayed there until the Christmas holiday brought himself, and he sent a card home, said, cost me more money to stay here than if I brought myself home. So his Papa said, well, it's okay with me. He wrote him back, they get somebody who wrote fun, because he don't know how to wrote nothing. <laughs> well, everybody read that postcard in the whole neighborhood, you know, the whole community. And when Christmas time comes, Papa had told them all, and they roast a couple of great big hogs. Not like this, a great big not a P.I.G. hog, a great big hog. <laughs> and everybody there. And then Papa greeted him, kissed him on both cheeks. Whoo, 
I'm glad for you to see me and all them kind of thing. He says, son, I know you're so smart. You've been to LUS. What you learn? Oh, he said, Papa, don't talk like that. He been there just long enough to get embarrassed, you know? He said, look, son, what you been studying there? He said, well, I study algebra. He said, well, said something in algebra. <laughs> he said, Papa, there ain't no way to said something in algebra. He said, you better said something in algebra because if you don't, you ain't gonna be able to go to LUS or someplace else, I guarantee. He said, okay, pi R square. His Papa said, look at that, been gone four months, don't know nothing yet. Everybody know pi R round, cornbread R square. <laughs> now what I got to did right here, you know, you, you dress a pig by undressing him. And that's what I done did, done undress him, I'm gonna clean him all good, this little, Pig is just as clean, he's just in real good shape. Now, we're gonna, we've sewed this pig up part of the way, and we're gonna sew him up some more of the way. Let me show you how we did that. We're gonna sew him up some more, just as soon as I put some dressing in there. But first of all, before I did that, I'm gonna put a little garlic on him. Ooh, boy, got it right here. This is the cause of twin beds, this garlic. <laughs> Put a little clove under that arm. <laughs> Put another little clove under that one right there. <laughs> Getting this ham back here. Put that clove down in there. Put the clove over there. And I'm gonna drop a clove in the cavity, body cavity, way up that way, and one way back this way, and that six clove of garlic is big enough for that little fella. Let me wipe him off again. I don't want him to look like that. <laughs> now, we're gonna get back to him in just a minute. But what I got to did is make recipe for about this, uh, a recipe for them uh, dressing, how you call, for about a 10 or 12 pound pig like that. Now, in this little pan I got right here, that's some cornbread I made and I done put in there. And underneath that, I got some light bread that I done put in the oven just to get hard enough for me to crumble real good. All that's all ready to go. Now I got a few little things I got to put on that. Mm hmm. Like two cup of chopped onion, we put that on there. One cup of sari, chop up pretty good fine. Then we got uh, some green onion, we put that on there. That's a cup of green onion. And one uh, pretty good sized bell pepper, we chop him up real good too. Then we got some of them sage. You got to be careful with this now, I guarantee. <laughs> Don't you messing around and put too much sage because all you taste is sage. So I'm gonna put about three quarters of a teaspoon. That's a little bit over half a teaspoon. Put that on there. And I got to kind of mix that around a little bit. I got some parsley I'm gonna put on that. Then because this is pork that we're cooking, we're gonna put some garlic in this dressing. <laughs> pork without garlic, I'd just soon not have, I guarantee. <laughs> now I'm gonna put a little salt on that. I'm gonna put three teaspoons of salt. <laughs> oh, that's a teaspoon, where that teaspoon measure is. I'm gonna show you that that's a teaspoon right there. A teaspoon full of salt. And one, two, three teaspoons full of salt. <laughs> I'm make that around it. Now, I got some stock what I made over here. And, and what I made from this stock, I made this stock from that is there. I got a pound, about a pound of, of pork and cut it up real good, lean pork. And I put a half a stalk of celery on that. And then I hauled off there and put just a little bit of garlic on that, and that's all. And I'm gonna put this over here where I can mix it a little bit better. Move this part back here like this. Now I'm gonna put this 
This hot, yeah. Turn that off and put this stock right in there. Now, I cook this about an hour. Just about an hour. Come out of there. See that good cooked pork? Whoo, boy. That's fine. I guarantee. Now, that makes this able for me to mix this a little bit more. I guarantee. Now, I'm gonna go back over to this other table here because I got to put some more stuff on that. Just happened to have a little sauteing wine. <laughs> and a little lean. What the how you call that? Worcestershire? Put that on there, parin. One tablespoon, you just turn it for Turn it up just at least a little bit. Put that there. Put that on there, get out of my way. And I pour that on there too. Now, if this still is not enough juice, I'm gonna haul off there and put some hot water. But I think this is gonna be just about right because I've got to add some egg on there. Yep, it'll be just about right when I get the egg. I don't want that, I don't I want it kind of stiff because I got to put it on them PIG hog there, you know? Move this out of my way and see if I can't get these eggs going right. Now, four eggs I'm gonna put on there. If I beat the daylight out of them. <laughs> no shell in the egg. Go and did that, I'll guarantee you. Anything I hate worse than that, I don't know, is crunch down on the shell. We got to beat it up a little bit. You know, when you make eggnog, you beat them egg like that too. Only you took the white out of that. Woo wee. Beat that. Put that on there so nice. Mm-hmm. Them onion opened my sciences up. I'll get on people. Mm. Stir that into that good old dressing. You don't need to add any more water to this because it's, you want to keep it stiff enough to put on them PRG hog. I guarantee, whoo -wee. I think I just eat this like it is. You know, a lot of people do, they like that. Now, come here, little fella. You're such a nice little boy. I got to put them salt and pepper on there too. But right now, I'm gonna put some of that I'm gonna stuff this P.I.G. hole. Ooh wee, that look good. You got to shove a little bit up in that chest cavity. Get that up in there like that. Oh man. I'm gonna lay this pig up real quick. Now, I'm gonna tell you a story while I'm doing this. In World War Twice, I got a friend that lived down South Louisiana. He's Cajun. And he lived down South Louisiana. And somebody tell him, if you enlist in the Coast Guard, they're liable to send you close to home. <laughs> he said, I'm gonna did that. So he enlists in the Coast Guard. And they sent him to Groton, Connecticut. Way up north, north of Shreveport, I guarantee you. <laughs> Man. He go up there, Grotonk, in Grotonk, Connecticut, and he get his boot training, how they call that stuff. And he get through it just at Christmas time, just before Christmas, and they send him back to Biloxi, Mississippi. Whew. Man, that close to home, 92 miles from where he lived. You see right there? That's a skewer. That's what that is. Just a little old skewer. They send him to Biloxi, Mississippi, and he's happy because he knew when he got off the train, he got a three-day pass coming to him, he can go to his house for Christmas. But when he get off, one of them chief petty officers is wait right there. He say, you true with your boot train? He say, you doggone rat. <laughs> he say, you just think you're true with your boot training. 
You got some more stuff you got to do. He said, well, let's do it, because I got to go to the house. <laughs> he said, okay, you met me tonight at 10 o'clock out that big searching light where we look for them submarine out there in Mississippi Sound in the Gulf of Mexico. And you go ahead and finish your boot train tonight and you'll get you past tomorrow. He said, I'll be there. What time? 10 o'clock? He said, that's right, 10 o'clock. <laughs> he said, I'm going to be there. 10 o'clock, he was there. And that chief petty officer was there too, I guarantee. He looked over that big searchlight, that thing must have been 10 feet across both ways. <laughs> he say, he turned that switch on, he said, you see them light? He said, there ain't no way to miss that. <laughs> he said, okay, I want you to climb up on them light and walk out there about the mile, then turn yourself around and brought yourself back. The little kid said, I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> he said, how come you ain't gonna do it? He said, I just ain't gonna do it. He turned the light off, he said, I don't wanna got some argue with you. But you better walk out, if you don't, you're gonna get cold moisture. He turned back on, he said, now, walk out there on them light. He said, I ain't gonna do it. He said, walk out there and turn yourself around when you get about halfway back. Come on, come on back here. He said, I ain't gonna do it. He said, how come you ain't gonna do it? He said, I'll walk out there about halfway and you'll turn that doggone thing off. That's how come I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> you notice how I got them skewer through there? So pretty. Now what I got to do is lace it just like a boot. If I can get this string tied. Now I got it. You see that right there? Come down just like a boot. Them old hooking eyes. You don't need that eye. There you go. <laughs> you need the hook, and the eye, the hook, and the eye. Then you go back. What you do, you pull them tight. Went right in my eye then. <laughs> you pull them real tight there, so you don't lose that dress, and you don't want to lose that. No. Ooh, ooh wee. It's a good surgical job. <laughs> hook and eye. All the way plumb. Come on, boy. Hold still now. <laughs> Got you. Get every one of them there just right, because if you don't, she won't hold, and you got to hold. You don't want to lose that dressing. All right, now, this is just what I'm looking for. This last one, right there. Then I cut them string off, leave enough there for me to work with. And I tie it off, right here, just like this. Put two knot on that. Then I take this little P.I.G. hog, get him straight again, and I put him on a baking pan, what I got fixed right here. Ooh. Get this stuff out of my way. Put him on this baking pan, real nice. I put that in his mouth there so I can put an apple in when he's done. And I slide him over here. And I got a couple little things I got to put on him. If I can just get him over this hump. Now. He ain't for all this, you can tell that, you know it. And I got right here. You guessed it. A couple of cups of onion chopped up. Don't be turned over on your side on me like that, pig. Now, now you got it, now you're going, boy. A couple of cups of onion chopped. Not too fine, but fine enough. Two cups of salt turn wine. <laughs> and four cups of water. Now you put that pig, after you put a little uh, Worcestershire, 
what you want to put in there is about a tablespoonful, something like that. <laughs> and you salt and pepper that rascal, too. Put a little salt all over here, pat it in. Put a little salt in that juice because you get him that way. And, uh, of course, red pepper. You want to be careful with this. Just use as much as you want. <laughs> And then, you wipe that off your hands. Best thing to do is kind of rinse it off, at least a little bit. And then dry your hand, putting this out of your way. And you cook that pig in an oven about 325, 350 degrees for about 20 minutes to the pound. Just about 20 minutes to the pound. And this little rascal, I'd cook him about four, four and a half hours. That's how long I'd cook it. Now, I'm just gonna move this pig way over here, out of my way. And I'm gonna show you something else. We're gonna garnish this pig with some sweet potato, yam, what we fix. And I'm gonna show you how we fix the, the shell to put them in. This is the easy way. Of course, if you don't have a hangover, you can do them like this. <laughs> but that ain't the easy way. The easy way is just to trim that shell, make those notches on there like that, and then we stuff them. Get out of there. We stuff that with sweet potatoes or yams, whatever you want to call them. We put marshmallow on top of that, and we're gonna put that around this PIG hog. Let me get this stuff out of my way. Now. Now I'm gonna go over here and show you a pig that's already fixed. Mm hmm. We're gonna haul off there and decorate him. These are raw carrots. Most of them make things look pretty. You could cook them if you would like to. It wouldn't make any difference if you wanted to cook them. Turn them over so they look prettier. Parsley, green and pretty. Put them parsley around there. Put, that there. Put this apple on his mouth. Open your mouth there, boy. There, the apple in his mouth. Got it all did right there. <laughs> now we're gonna put some, uh, you see, see them orange, what we got right there? Put them around here. And what you do, you run these orange stuff with, with that uh, good old Louisiana yam. You run them in the oven until the, 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 the because you got the yam already cooked. You run them in the oven until the marshmallow melt real good on there. Then of course we got to put these cherry around here because they're so pretty. Tastes good too. With the green and so pretty at Christmas time, I guarantee. And he might just as well. Uh, While I'm at it, I'm gonna give him my eyeball. Get in there. Put another one on this side so we can see both ways. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so pretty. Oh, guarantee. <laughs> Man, if them Cajuns inside of Louisiana could see me right now, they'd come in here and take this away from me, you know that? Oh, and that's pretty. I got a couple of these left over. I just don't want to, I think I got them arranged just right. I don't want to mess with them. Now, I'm going to take this over here. I'm stopping right here. That's eggnog I got fixed right there. I may just get a little sip of that before I have my dinner. Let me put this wine over here. 
Well, we are on the way. We sure get them PRG hog on the table real good. <laughs> I declare that look. Now, to carve this pig, I'm not gonna did that right now, because it just looks so pretty, I don't want to disturb it. You carve them any way you would like, right here on the, the hog jowls. That's wonderful, you can start there. You can take a shoulder, cut that off, start sliding that up any way you would like. That's wonderful there. Come back here and get a, a hind quarter ham. That's wonderful. You need that too. Right here in the back is the loin, or what we call the backbone too, you know, that's the loin. And that is really good. I guarantee. Mmm. Might just as well get a little sip of this eggnog. You know that's pretty. Put this down here. Yeah, I got something I want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, boy. <laughs> you know, I got a friend that was away from home at Christmas time, and I don't even know how he find this place, uh, Atlantic, Georgia. <laughs> but he was there, and he wanted to go home for Christmas and quick because he, he felt bad about being that far away from home. So he went to the airport there in uh, Atlantic, Georgia, and he saw a man behind a desk, and there wasn't many people around there. It wasn't busy yet. So he walked up to him, and he said, uh, my friend, you got some plane from Atlantic to New Orleans, huh? Whoo, he said, of course, we got all kind of plane. He said, what time the next one left Atlantic? He said, 925. He said, and uh, get to New Orleans? He said 926, and he don't tell him about that hour different in time, you know. He, <laughs> he said, thank you very much, and he turned around and walked off. <laughs> and he wait till the new man get back there, what he ain't never see before again, you know. And he walk up to him. He said, my friend, you got some plane from Atlantic to New Orleans, I guarantee. Oh, he said, of course we got all kind of planes. <laughs> he said, what time the next one left Atlantic? He said 925. And he said, and get to New Orleans? He said, 926. He don't say a word. He just wheel and walk. <laughs> he wait until he get real bent. And man, he just got to get to New Orleans. He pick out a man what he ain't talked with before, though. And he walk up and say, my friend, I know y'all got plane for New Orleans from Atlantic High. Oh, the fella said, hey, you know right, I guarantee we got that. He said, OK, what time the next one left here? For New Orleans. Well, he said, it left Atlantic. He, let me see. And he thumbed through the book. He don't know nothing. He's brand new on the job. He said, it left here at 9.25. He said, what time did it get to New Orleans, my friend? He said, 9.26. He said, whoo, man. This ticket agent said, you want a ticket? He said, no, I don't want no ticket. But I'm going to stood right here and watch that son of a gun take off. I guarantee <laughs> How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee. Talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. Hi, y'all are. I'm glad for you to see me. Who said that? <laughs> I'm glad for you to see me. I guarantee you this for Nothing in there. Hmm. That's good. I'm going to stew some corn and green onion for you all today and make some hominy, lye hominy and chili. 
When I was a kid, my mother used to, used to make the lie harmony. would lie, you know. But I never did like to, to watch it, so I, I've forgotten how to do it. But I bet I could if I had to. I don't, uh, I don't want to do it if I didn't help it. But this says right in here, a quarter of a cup of olive oil. I might just as well get started on this right now. That's olive oil. It says one-fourth cup. I'm pretty good at pouring one-fourth cup, one cup at a time. You watch. Now, that ain't a fourth per cup, no. That's not either. Fast getting there. Ooh, I heard all that. That's just about a fourth of a cup of olive oil, and I'm going to put all this stuff in it. I've got to, got to do it, you know. got to have it. Put this olive oil right back. I may need some more if it doesn't come out right, you know. Now, into this, I've got to put four cups of chopped green onion. That's four good cups right there. So I'm going to turn the fire on. I like to have it, have, it, have it sizzle on me, see if I get the right one. No, never do. <laughs> Got that one. We're going to put that on a medium heat. That's my tasting spoon. It's warm already, I tell you that. But it'll warm up real fast. Come out of there. My hands are clean. You go cook in there. Gotcha. Take this spoon and stir that in there real good. Mm. Mm. You know how to smell that smelling good already? You all don't smell that? <laughs> That full cup of green onion. Now I'm gonna put eight cup of sweet corn, cut off the cob. Man, I'll tell you, you, isn't that pretty? It is pretty. I'm gonna put this in here right now so we can get it to cooking. Oh, you thought I was gonna drop that? I did too. <laughs> I wanna get all that out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Got it. And stir that in. Anytime you cook, any occasion will take you this. When you're cooking, every time you add anything, you got to stir. Eight cup of corn, green, fresh corn off the cob. Got to be good. Got to be good. Whew. All right, now into that, I've got to add something else here. One cup of good dry white wine that you'd love to drink if I'd let you, but I'm not, I'm gonna put it in you. It's a Chablis. That's a full cup. I can hear that cooking. Go ahead on there, baby. Let's stir. That wine. Takes all, you know, people ask me, say, why do you always cook with wine? Well, sometimes I cook with beer. If I boil shrimp, I put beer in there. But uh, the reason I cook with wine, I know it'll take the bitterness out of anything. You know, now, green onion's got a certain bitterness to it. If you cook it with celery, celery's got bitterness. Parsley's got a little bitterness. Any, any other kind of onion got, got bitterness, too, got the bitterness. So you got, you got to take it out, and wine takes it out and enhances the flavor. There are two things at the same time. What are you going to do? But you can't miss that. Then I'm going to put a cup of spicy onion. That is a rotel. I'm going to put a cup of water after I put the rotel in there and stir it in. That's rotel. Stir it, man. Just stir it. You stand. That's what you got to do. And hold that thing so it won't splash any more out there on the stove and have to pick it back up. It ain't good, no. That shows that I'm not a chef. I'm just a cook, that's all. And in the country, you can splash things on the stove. That's all right. I'm a country cook, and I love to cook. And now I'm going to put a cup of water. Oh, I'm going to take a sip of that water, too. Got a frog in my throat. 
I wish I'd had it in there when I had that wine in my hand, I'll tell you. <laughs> Cup of water and stir. I got him then, that frog in my throat. Get the cooking there, baby. You're looking pretty. That's a pretty dish. And it's pretty enough to eat. Now, into that, I got to put some good chopped garlic. Two, two, I'm talking about two teaspoons full of chopped minced garlic. Got to get all of it there, baby. I don't want to leave any of that in there. I love garlic. Garlic is good for you if that people are just, just finding that out. I've been knowing that all my life. Stir it in there good. Spread it around. Oh, boy. Let's get with it. Yeah. That's smelling good. Can y'all smell that? <laughs> when I was doing a stage show once in a big city, I was cooking on there. I got a, a, when I started to cook, just as I started, I'd fry some bacon and put a fan behind and let that blow out in the orders. <laughs> And it worked, it helped. Let me get this moved up a little bit out of my way. I'm gonna put this over here so I can have room to do something else I got to do shortly. Here you go, you stand, put them right there. That'll work. And put this over there to help it. Stay there, all right? Now, I got to salt this. It says salt the taste. My taste. <laughs> and we're gonna put about, let's see, uh, I got a bunch of stuff in there. Eight cup of sweet corn cut off the cob, four cup of green oil. Huh? I got to put about, uh, well, that's a teaspoon. Y'all don't believe it? I'm gonna show you. That's a teaspoon full of salt. That's one teaspoon right there. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? <laughs> And stir I'm gonna put some more salt. There's not enough salt. It's gonna take two teaspoons to do to do this right. Let's put another teaspoon. Another well, well just a little bit over. We'll let that's a heaping teaspoon. That's a heaping teaspoon. Not in heap too much, so no. Put that salt back right there where I may need it later. And I got to stir this. It says stir the ingredients in a big large pot and cook over a medium fire for about 45 minutes. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. Mm -hmm. Now I got to cut that fire down to make it more medium than it is right now because that's hot, that fire is hot. Come on back down here now. Now that's a nice medium flame. Put the lid on it like this. Stirred it, move this uh, recipe. I got to use my recipe because who's gonna remember all the recipes I dream of? Now, I ain't. <laughs> I don't try. Now I'm gonna put this out of the way. Right now I'm going to make you a nice, nice hominy and chili casserole. <laughs> it is, I guarantee it's gonna be good. Put this there right there. And I got to put olive oil in the bottom of that thing. It says, uh, it's got this all mixed up. It says, tablespoon full of olive oil. That's all I need. <laughs> A tablespoon full of olive oil. There you go, baby. That ain't quite a tablespoon full. Believe it or not, it's not. But that's a tablespoon full. Not heaping, just a tablespoon full. And then, we're gonna turn the fire on there and kind of move that around a little bit. If I can did that, I'll be just right. Now see if I get the right one this time. Yes, I did. I <laughs> put that on a, a medium low fire, run it around where it gets all over the bottom of that skillet, frying pan, whatever you want to call it, pot. Pan, there's something to put this in. Got it. Now, 
this recipe say one sixteen ounce of hominy. Drain it. You got to drain all the water off of it there. We got that. But it don't go in there first, no. What we're going to do right now is put the green onion in there and let them kind of sizzle around a little bit. Get in there. Green onion. Got it all the first time. That ain't bad. And I got some bell pepper. I got to put in there to help them green onion out. You know how that is. Put some bell pepper on that. <laughs> got all that too. I'm getting good at that, you know it. Put that to the side so I can get to that little bit of that garlic powder. I'm gonna let that, I have to stir that around a little bit so it'll get to cooking. And it'll cook, I mean. I never ever got that down in, in Crowley where I used to live, Crowley, Louisiana, Southwest Louisiana. There's a fella had a, a kind of a butcher and a fish market there. And it, he put a fella to work for him, and he was good. He worked hard. He really did. And uh, after he'd been there about a month and proved he could work, the man that hired him said, I want to tell you something, boy. It's all right with me, but you either got to get you a longer apron in the front or stop stealing such long fish, steal shorter fish, you him? <laughs> Green onion. Got, this is dry parsley. Dry parsley is good. I want that to kind of get a little more juice in it before I put that in there. It's doing all right. It's getting juice. This is a cup. Actually, it's a, oh, I'd say this is a half a cup of dried parsley. Now that's equivalent to a cup and a half. Now I think that's a half a cup. So I'm gonna quit putting that dry parsley in there. And I got some, some dried mint I'm gonna put in, but let me stir that dried parsley down into this thing that we got here. Mm-hmm. Smell that? I smell it. Make all the noise you want to go in to do it. Now into that I'm gonna put some dried mint. And then I'm gonna put a, about a half a teaspoon full of garlic powder. Now this is what you call easy cooking. You can do all this without having to cut up some of the stuff. When you chop parsley, you're in good shape. I can tell you that, but most people don't know how to chop parsley. And I don't throw the stems away, I use the whole damn thing. Never get it all there. You say, you ought not to beat those beautiful pots. I say, I got to get that stuff off the spoon. Now into this, I'm going to put uh, some rooster sauce, Worcestershire right here. That's what this is, Worcestershire sauce. Put it in there. And I also, too, I got to put some uh, good wine in just a few minutes. As soon as I get this wet, mm, I can smell that real good. Hoo-wee. Get it all off that spoon. Now, I'm gonna put a cup of nice dry wine. I didn't see that wine. I had a sip of that instead of that water, I guarantee. <laughs> now, that's a cup of dry white wine. Stir that around in there real good. And I got a 16 ounce can of hominy that's been drained real good. I have to put that in there in a few minutes. I want this to come to a boil first. Let's boil, baby. I'll turn you up a little bit to be sure. Now, I can hear it picking up. I'll tell you that for truth. Now, we're going to put the this nice dry hominy in there, like this. Get out of there. Cut it all. Cut every bit of it. Didn't get all that wood to sauce, but mm, 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 got it now. And I stir this into that. And good.
They're beginning to look pretty, believe it or not. I love hummus. How many and chili are two good things that go together, and I'm putting these together right now in just a few minutes. And I got salt and pepper to taste. It says, here's the pepper. Cayenne pepper is what I use. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> that's plenty. We don't need any more of that. Now, that's not much. That's about a quarter of a teaspoon for what that is. Now, into this. Let me see what I can put into this. Wine, garlic powder, got it all in there. And wine in a medium-sized pot and cook over medium fire, stir it until the onion and peppers are tender. You see, now I got to put some salt in this too. And I know about how much goes in there, about a, a, two teaspoons, not quite two teaspoons. And this is a slow teaspoon, it ain't a full teaspoon. And neither is this one. That's enough salt in there. Put that over there. And stir. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm going to do with that, I got to cook that a little while to get better, but it's nearly ready right now. Put this underneath here, over here where I can see it in case I need to look again. You know how it is. I'm not all that smart. So most of that juice is gone, see? Then I'm going to stir in some chili and pour it into a casserole right over there. And I better put a little olive oil in that casserole or somebody will give me the devil for not thinking about that. Because you got to grease that to keep it from sticking to the bottom. It'll do it if you don't look hard. That's less than a tablespoon full. Got to put this garlic pot in there. I nearly forgot you used such a small bit and nothing in the world but about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Who ever heard of using a half a teaspoon full of garlic powder? Let's get out of there. Now you're going. I'm going to get you out of there if I have to scrape the bottom of this thing. Now I got it. That looks about like a half a teaspoon I've got in there. Yep. It is. You better be. Now we're going good. Now, now into this. I ain't true putting stuff in there. I'm going to put some, stir some chili. See that chili? Cooked chili. I'm going to put some chili in there and stir it in there real good. And I'm going to put that in that uh, butamous uh, casserole dish. Now let's go in here and just stir it in good, boy. Oh, man. Y'all smell that? I do. Ooh, wee. That's a 16 ounce can of uh, chili I'm putting in there. Look out there, that's hot. Stir it in real good. All right, now let's get in there, put it in good like you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. Ah. I'd like to move this out of my way, move this over there, and kind of stir this olive oil around in there just a little bit to be sure it covers everything, and it's doing it. Oh, yeah. Now, into this, I'm going to pour this. And I'm going to cut this far. No, I can't cut this. But yeah, I can't uncut that far off in just a minute or two. When you get all that stuff over the side. And I got it. Cut the fire off. And I'm going to pour this in there. Okay. Go ahead and splash on everything. It's all right. Mmm. Make a noise, but it's a pretty noise to me, I tell you. Now, now what I got to do is put some cheddar cheese, grated in there, and I'm trying to see what this is. I've got to see what in the world this is. Oh, that's cheese, too. I put it all in there. This is cheese, too. Three kinds of cheese, mozzarella, parmesan, and American cheddar. All of it grated in the shred or something. Put it in there and stir it around, and 
Let's put it right there, Judson. Let's put that palm in there first. Here we go. Still, you in there, pretty girl and boy. Look at that. <laughs> This is a mozzarella. Mozzarella, la la la. Here we go. Now into this, I'm gonna put that good old American cheese. I don't have to put it in with my hand to be sure I spread it good. Now you go in, boy. Mm hmm. Put that down there. Put this over here like that. Mix it up. But I got one more thing I think I got to put in there. Yep. Breadcrumb, ain't that something? And then I'll put it in the oven. Or I may wait and let that kind of soak up a little bit. Looking good. Looking just right. Breadcrumb. I'll put them on there any way I want to. I'd, if I were an artist, I'd paint a picture. But I'm not an artist. So I'm going to just spread it on there real good. That's an, takes an artist to do that, too, I guarantee <laughs> Oh, I'll get on there. I'm going to have to put this in a 300 and, I think it's a 325 or 350 degree oven. And I'll look and see how long it's supposed to cook. And I'm going to sit down there and eat some of it. I got fixed for myself already. Hmm. I got to cook that in 350 degrees, what the man said. Now, got it set at 350. Put your side right there. Bring this over here and put it in that oven and let it brown the old bread from at 350 degrees. That's, ooh, wee, that smells good. Ay, ay, ay. Got to push your side, don't mean to hurt you. Got to open the oven, all right? 350 degrees hominy and chili baked in a 350 degree oven. Now, if that's not all right, now, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to sit down over here, and if y'all don't mind, whether you mind or not, I'm going to sit down over here and, and taste some of this to be sure that it, that it tastes right. It would be a hell of a fix if it didn't. I'll tell you that. Come here, champ, up close. Closer. All right. Put this out of my way where I can see everybody. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Oh boy. Like a little gentleman, put my napkin so I won't spill things on the floor. That is warm. Yes, sir. That's that chili and hominy. And that's the green, the nice corn. Got it off the cob. And I'm going to use my spoon and my fork to eat this. But before I do, I'm going to pour myself just a swiller of wine. That's a half swallow. <laughs> that's a swiller. That's another swiller. That makes a swallow. <laughs> and this tastes so good. Let me see how it tastes. That's the chili and, and hominy. Let me see. All right. Mm-hmm, 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 mm -hmm. Oh, boy, let me see. Just this, some of this. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, man, that is fine. I can taste everything in the corn, the rotel, the green onion. Now for a sip of wine. That's all it needed was just a half a swallow. <laughs> Thank you.
How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me again on tea. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I'll guarantee you. Talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. And today we're gonna cook corned beef and cabbage and some anasasa beans that we get out of Colorado. And they're very good. And I've got to turn the fire on under the, this juice we got to put on it. I think that's the one. Yeah. Turn it on a medium so it'll get the hot. And we'll put the beans right in there, and they'll cook before this shows over, I guarantee. First of all, Lord, we're gonna cook cabbage. I love cabbage. I love corned beef. I love food. There ain't no two ways about that. <laughs> and you can look at me and tell, I've lost 175, 185 pounds and pounds in my lifetime going up and down. <laughs> and it's been a lot of fun to do it. But I still like all good food that's cooked well. I'm gonna turn this fire on too. Got the right one. I'm so proud of me for doing that. You'd be surprised. In here, I have corned beef stock. I cooked corned beef that I'm gonna put in this cabbage. The, cabbage. the corned beef is already cooked. In this cabbage, we let it cook until I like the way I like it. I don't like, I don't like cabbage that's, that's half cooked, you know, like that the Chinese do, just stir it around a little bit. I like it like those Cajun cook it, cook the hell out of it. That's the way I like it. <laughs> and it tastes better to me like that. I got, I have more flavor in it. And I'm gonna stir this around to be sure it's got, if we have more salt, I'll put it in there. Right? It doesn't need any right now. I smell enough salt in there. Now this is cabbage, we cube it. We cube this cabbage. And I cooked the, the, when I cooked the corned beef, what I did, I put four cups of white wine, good Chablis, it's suitable to drink as well as cook, but never cook with a wine that you won't drink. I put five pounds of, of, of corned beef, four cups of dry white wine, two tablespoonful of, of soy sauce, two teaspoonful of Louisiana hot sauce, or a quarter of a teaspoonful of cayenne pepper. And I have two heads of cabbage here, not large heads. Not like one I cooked on a show in, in, uh, in Alaska. The cabbage weighed 65 pounds. Man, I couldn't believe it, but it was one cabbage. And I got two large onions that I, we quartered that in, into, uh, cut that into quarters. The cabbage had been cut into quarters and then put it on in bite-sized pieces. And the salt, of course, when you're cooking corned beef, you got to watch, you may not need any salt at all, and you may need some. And I'm gonna put this tasting spoon down here and see if this needs any. Because if it does, I'm gonna put it in there. Yeah. <laughs> I think a teaspoonful of salt wouldn't hurt at all because I got a lot of cabbage there. And uh, I think I'd measure a teaspoon in my hand like my mother showed me how to do when I was eight years old. Now that's a teaspoon full of salt. Let me get two more grains. I got it. <laughs> Put that teaspoon full of salt in there to be sure I got just enough salt. Look at that. Now how do I do that? <laughs> practice. <laughs> that's just practice, that's all. And you can do it, anybody can. You have just got to have confidence in yourself. I'm gonna put this cabbage in there because the water's getting warm. My hands are clean, I washed them yesterday. <laughs> I'll dump that in there when I get enough to where it won't splash. That ca I love cabbage, I eat it raw, eat it cooked, and I will eat it half cooked if it, somebody didn't know to cook it enough. 
And uh, I love corned beef. I love corned beef sandwiches. I love corned beef just by itself in cabbage or cooked with beans. Any, anything I have to cook it in, I love it. And corned beef's good for you, they tell me. I found that out after I've been eating it all my life. But, um, I, I believe in them. I swear I do. Now, let's get in there, cabbage, and I've got to stir you down. This is going into corned beef stock that I cooked that corned beef in. And uh, I already told you what I put in there. Put that wine and take all the bitterness out of anything that you have that's bitter. Just take that out of it, and it'll do it. Put that out of my way and stir this into this stock. If I need any more water, I'll put it in here. May need a little more water, I can tell. Come here, onion. Let's put those onion in there. These are good onion, they're good sweet. I love to make onion sandwiches, you know. You ever eat an onion sandwich with mayonnaise? Good for you, too, they tell me. So I was listening today about garlic on the television. Shucks, I should be the healthiest man in the world, I'll tell you the truth. I love that garlic. My father said to read me what invented twin beds was garlic. And I can believe that. Got to put a little more water in this. No two ways about that. Let me see how much of that. Uh, that's for the beans. We're going to put them in there in a few minutes. Got to cover this with water. We don't want it to go uncovered. Exactly right. <clears throat> Let me get one of these pot holders there in case I want to hold that old pot still while I stir. These are sure handy little deals. They'll keep you from burning yourself. And I don't like to burn myself in it. Now, I'm going to put that corned beef in there in a little bit, but not quite yet. I've got to get this all down in here like it's supposed to be, stirred up. Get some of the onion on the bottom in the middle and leave some on the top. I love boiled onions. I really do. <laughs> and boiled onion. Whew. And that's healthy food. And I'm a healthy man, thank goodness. A little piece of cabbage there. Raw. I love it. All right, cabbage, let's get to cooking. Mm-hmm. Come here, corn beef. Now we slice this. It makes it easier to serve people. That ain't all easier to cook, too. It cooks better when it's sliced like this. And I like for it to cook well. I feel a story coming on I'll have to tell in a few minutes. But I want to get this on first before I start messing around and lose my train of thought. Ain't got but one train on this track, you know. <laughs> I guarantee that's true. Now, you know, I've got to stir you all down in there, don't you? Yeah, let's go ahead. Stir it down in there. Separate it the best you can. That looks good enough to eat right there, you know. It's done enough. That's for true. Let's stir that a little bit down into that so it'll cook. You know, this, believe it or not, now this just water just covers this. But by the time this is cooked, water will be about a half an inch deep on the top of it. I don't know where it comes from, but it does it. <coughs> now, we're getting right. Now I want y'all to cook real nice. Because I'm going to. Put that out where the baby can smell it. I'm gonna put the lid on that. See you there. I got to wipe that every now and then because I don't want it to boil over. Now here are those Anastasia beans. We get those out of California. I just barely soaked those in water for just a little bit because they cook real quick. But I said I felt a story coming on, and I do. Now in these beans, I'm not gonna put a thing in this world except maybe a little, little of salt because they're going into corned beef stock is what they're going into. And the beans, I put other things into it. 
this corned beef stock, it, what we did, we, we took a five pound, five pound uh, corned beef, tablespoonful of onion powder, two teaspoonful of garlic powder, two tablespoonful of Uchis sauce, and cayenne pepper to taste, my taste. <laughs> it, I don't like food that's too hot, though, no. Put that over there out of my way. This corned beef stock we got right here. And I got some beans at, I put the wrong one over there. And what I got to do is put some uh, little stuff in that corned beef stock I got. Cooking in there, getting hot, nice and hot. Now, what I'm gonna put in that corned beef stock is a little, uh, how many corned beef stock? Tablespoonful of onion powder. There it is, a nice tablespoonful, you watch. I'd measure that devil tablespoonful. Tablespoon. Not anymore, that's a tablespoonful. And we're gonna put two teaspoons full of garlic powder. And I'm not gonna measure that in my hand. I'm just gonna put it in there, and I can tell you where I've got two teaspoons. There I go. I better measure that and not mess around with it. Two teaspoons of garlic powder. I got to cut that fire down too. One teaspoon. That's a little bit over a teaspoon, but it's not much enough over to make any difference. It'll taste good, that I know. And that's the main idea when you're cooking, to be sure it'll taste good. And I got to turn this fire down to low. There you go. And I'm gonna stir it. Still got a little stuff to put in there now. Don't, don't worry, I'm gonna put two tablespoons full of Worcestershire sauce. Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons? That's right. Two tablespoons of <laughs> Now, just put that little bit in, no extra, that's two tablespoonful. And some cayenne pepper to taste. Now, I'm gonna use a Louisiana hot sauce made from cayenne pepper, and it's not too hot, it's very, very good. It really is. And I'm there, I, I, I can't, can't go that real hot, hot, hot sauce. I like the flavor. How much it says to my taste, to my taste. That'll be just about right. That's a teaspoonful. <laughs> about all it is. Now I've got these beans. I think I'll tell that story first. I, I, I knew an old man in, in uh, Lafayette had a big bakery over there in uh, Lafayette. And they had the Bustani built a store right across the road from him in Lafayette. The road was a straight road in Lafayette, it's hard to find. And uh, his name was Yuval. And Mr. Yuval owned a bakery and was a fine caged gentleman. And I never will forget, I was standing there and they had a, 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 a policeman named, named Guidry. I knew him real well. And uh, they put a, a, a traffic light up there. Mr. Yuval backed out of his bakery in his Cadillac automobile and just ran that red light like, like he didn't even know it was there. And, and of course, Guidry blew his whistle and stopped him, and he knew him, he walked up and said, Mr. Uval, did not you see that red light up there, huh? He said, yeah, but I did not see you, no. <laughs> now this, this is uh, two cups of these wonderful beans, Anastasio beans. And they, you see how they got color? And they cook a little bit quicker than, than most beans that size. Get in there, boy, don't be messing around. Two of them trying to dodge the draft. Got them. <laughs> and we stir them. Now that I put them in there, I got to bring them to a boil again because I want them to boil real good and cook cook quick. I'll check that for salt later. I will most probably have to put a little salt in those beans. You know how beans are. 
Got to wait till they get most done before you put any salt in there. Now, cabbage. Let's do some cooking. Let's turn that fire up a little bit too. Let's get with it here now. Yep. That's as high as I want it to. That's good enough. Taste this for salt now, but I'm not gonna put any right now. This is my tasting spoon. I used that already, can't use it again. That's bad, huh? I'm gonna go ahead and do it in there. <laughs> That's not gonna need any salt. <clears throat> Just right with everything. Cook, boys. That's just the cooking. See what I got in here. Oh, I know what I got in there. Ha <laughs> ha. I feel like I want to tell you another story. I'm going to tell you this story. It happened down in Kaplan, Louisiana. At a meeting that they were having. Some kids were having a meeting there. Put it in nice size meeting. And and we're doing World War twice. And, uh, excuse me, I've got hay fever. At the meeting, somebody said, you know, them German done overran Abbeville. One of them jumped up and said, well, oh no, not Abbeville, Louisiana, no. Abbeville, France, they done overrun it, took it. It has fallen to the Germans. That is a shame. And then five or four more said, I feel so bad about that. One of them said, not me. How come you don't feel bad about that? He said, I don't care about them Frenchmen over there. They never should have left Louisiana and gone over there in the first place. <laughs> now, beans are cooking. I'm fixing to go sit down and eat very shortly, too, I hope. And I've got one story I want to tell you. I very rarely tell this story. It was told to me when I was in the hospital, and I cast from my head down, and I didn't feel like laughing, but I laughed so much I had to give me an extra shot of dope. That's how much I thought about it. <laughs> it's about a little boy who was about seven or six years old, and he'd been to school, and he had to walk to school back there in those days. When he got home, his mama was not out in the backyard, over the old black uh, wash pots that we had back there in those days. So he went into the house and he said, Mama, calling for his mama all the time. Oh, Mama, where you at, Mama? She said, Henri, his name was Henri Henry. Brought yourself in here. She said, Mama, you in the bed, you sick? Oh, no, Henri. I just had a fine baby, baby boy. And he's going to be a fine young man like you. Come look at him. And he walked over there. And she turned the cover back and said, you see, that's, that's your little brother, Henri. Ooh, where'd you get him, Mama, huh? Oh, she said, I found him out there in the woods in a hollow stump. In the woods in a hollow stump, Mama, that's right. In the woods in a hollow stump. Mama, you reckon if I went out there in them woods and looked around a little bit, I might find me a baby in one of them hollow stumps? She, she said, I, I reckon you would. Go ahead, Henri. She wanted to get rid of him anyhow. So out in them woods, he went. He looked in every hollow stump that he came to. He looked in this and never, all of them, but he didn't find no baby. He was just about to give up and he saw one more hollow stump and he went over there and looked and there was a great big, fat, white albino possum. He said, I done found me a baby, I guarantee. He reached down and got that possum, put it up to his chest, and started to run back home, petting it, loving it. And that possum, that baby he's got. You'll find baby. Everybody gonna be jealous of me to have a baby like this. I guarantee. Ooh, my mama baby ain't as cute as you. Oh man, wait till she sees you. She, she gonna be mad, yeah. But he got home, did not get home yet. He was just running along. And he met a man. And just as he met that man, that possum grabbed hold of him in his chest. And I mean that possum held on to his chest. And he was crying. He got a man. And the man says, Henri, what you got? He says, you know, you don't need a you don't need a half eye to tell what I got. I got a, a baby. Are you like my baby? Oh, it's a fine baby. 
ਕਿ ਉਸੇ ਦਾ ਸਭੇ ਬੇ ਐਡ ਮਾ ਫਾਸ ਬੇ ਬੇ ਆ ਗਿਆ ਹੁਣ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਉਹ ਜੀ ਤੋਂ ਡੂ ਵੀ ਰੇ ਮੋਰੀ ਹੀ ਸੇ ਆਮ ਗੋ ਵੀਨ ਮੀ ਵੀ ਐਵਰ ਟਰਨ ਲੂਸ ਨਾ ਯੂ ਸੀ ਦੈਟ ਵਾਟਰ ਕਮ ਇਨ ਲਾਈਕ ਦੈਟ ਡੂ ਡੂ ਕੁਕਿੰਗ ਗੁੱਡ ਹੂੰ ਸੋ ਦੇਮ ਬੀਨ ਡੂ they cook in good they don't need a thing except to finish cooking and i'm gonna eat and i'm gonna tell you that for true i love you know a man sent me some of those just as a gift once and we've been ordering them ever since we like them very much like them very very much and i'll eat them every chance i get now let me see what this is in here now i'll let you see mm mm say magnifique magnifique i guarantee I'm going to go over and sit down. And if I think of another story, I may tell you that. I'm going to pour me a little wine in that glass. That's what it's there for. And I don't want to make anybody mad. You put it there. So I'll pour me a little bit in there. I, I love a good red wine. Now, with this, what I'm eating here, they said practically darn near a veg- vegetarian dinner. You use any kind of wine, white or red, purple or blue, don't make a difference. The chicken and, and fish supposed to use white. I just don't like white wine as much as I do red wine. I'm pour just a little swiller. That's a half a swallow. Oh, that's a swallow. Got it. <laughs> Put this to... That's to keep the airs out of there. Now, I tell you, this story I haven't told in a long time, but I love this story because I know it didn't happen. It's not a true story like I usually tell. This story is about a a rebel soldier in the war between the states and he was in prison and he was a talkative man he couldn't help but talk what anything he could do about it he just had to talk about something all the time so he all over and he talked and talked and talked and every time he got a chance he'd tell him yankee guards us rebels beat the hell out of you Yankees at Chickamauga, I guarantee. He didn't tell them that once a day. He told them that at least a hundred times a day. Man, us rebels beat the hell out of you Yankees at Chickamauga, I guarantee. And they, they got to where they, they put him in solitary. As soon as he came out, he'd say, I guarantee us rebels beat the hell out of you Yankees at Chickamauga. Ooh, boy. And finally, they just, it was making the morale in the whole camp go down. So they called them into the, the commandant's office. They said, look, we'll give you $5,000 if you quit talking about the rebels beating the Yankees at Chickamauga. Now, I don't want the $5,000. In fact, we'll give you $10,000. I don't want no $10,000. We'll make you a sergeant, too. You make me a sergeant? I always wanted to be a sergeant because he was a private book. Oh, we wanted to be a sergeant, I guarantee. Well, we'll make you a sergeant and give you $10,000 if you quit talking about the rebels beating the Yankees at Chickamauga. I'll take the job and the money. Well, he said, I'll tell you right now, we appreciate that. So he went out there and he did real good for most a week. And something was happening, I don't know what caused him to do this, he was standing around there and all of a sudden he said, you know something? Them rebels showed it beat the hell out of us Yankees at Chickamauga. <laughs> Let me talk about it. Mmm, that's good. That is good, those beans. Mmm, mmm. Beans good. Cooked, that's cooked and that's good. Stock made from corned beef. Take a little sip of that wine to help it go down to everybody. That was a swiller, half a swallow. Come here, cabbage. Don't be trying to get away from me. You're not going to do it. Mm. Now I got you. Mmm, 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 mmm. And corn beef, ooh, 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 boy, man. Mm-hmm. 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 
That's good stuff. Another swivel. I'll tell you right now, I don't know how I do it, except I know my mama taught me. 